J. Osborne. One of the more poignant ones come from assistant coach Ron Brown. When I think of Tom Osborne, I think of uh, three years ago, right after uh, his first national championship win as a head coach. And uh, he goes up to his room, slips away from the media. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. My wife had had some faults, labor pains, and uh, he calls us in our, in our room and um, uh, just wants to know if everything's okay. He, uh, he slipped away from the adoring crowd and wanted to minister to one of his assistant coaches. And that's the, uh, I think that's the, uh, that's vintage Tom Osborne. Two men who share the faith, Ron Brown and Tom Osborne, and two men who aren't afraid to talk about it either. That's right. You know, Rich, this is also a very emotional game for the fans. They are sad that Coach Osborne is leaving, but yet they're really pumped up tonight because they want to send the coach out in style. And a pep rally yesterday helped get it started. The Husker Marching Band got the fans fired up with the Nebraska fight song. Also, former and current Huskers talked to the crowd. Vershawn Jackson almost guaranteed the Huskers would win tonight's game against Tennessee. And the fans I talked with are backing that up. They say the Huskers will not only beat Tennessee, but they will beat them very easily. Of course, pep rallies definitely get you in the mood for the big game. Down here in Miami, it's all Huskers and oranges. But now we're going to take you to a place where it's Huskers and pineapples. These Husker fans are in Hawaii cheering on their favorite team. Now they get together at a sports bar to watch the Nebraska games, sometimes at 6.30 in the morning Hawaii time. Yeah, set the alarm <laughs> clock. Even though they're a long way from Nebraska, these are some faithful fans. And no doubt they're watching this Orange Bowl, which, by the way, is an afternoon game in Honolulu. So sleep in today and, right. then, and then watch the game. And T.O. has said time and time again during his retirement how much he appreciates the fans and their support throughout his career. Oh, yeah. Shows you that Husker fans are all over. This is the best. Definitely. We want to go back to Omaha now where Loretta and Mary are. Ouch, 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> no matter what state you live in, it will not be tough to find Husker fans tonight. Channel 3's Jennifer Windham joins us live again from Harvey's Casino. Now, Jen, you're in the Hawkeye State, but everything there is Husker Red, of course. Well, as you can see, this crowd has had no trouble getting settled in here. These guys are so excited. Anxiously awaiting that kickoff, and everyone's just kind of settling in, getting some food, getting some drinks, and like I said, anxiously awaiting that kickoff. As we know, the Huskers are motivated to send Coach Osborne out a winner, and these fans are just as motivated, and I don't need you to tell me. You don't need me to tell you that. It's quite obvious, right? To you guys. We're excited here. All right. And Jen will be there with those crazy fans throughout the evening, and we will, of course, let you know how they're hanging in. <laughs> Can't wait. We'll be right back. You know, there's a lot of reasons to be proud of the Heartland the strength of its people, the value of a handshake, and, of course, the Corn Huskers. Hi, I'm Bill Fredenberg, and at Professional Automotive, we're proud to be part of the Heartland, and it shows in our work. When you bring your car or truck to Professional Automotive, you can rest assured that your car will be done right and right on time. Whether it's a major accident or even a fender bender, you can count on Professional Automotive. You have my word on that. Last year, the Brian Hart Care team traveled more than one million miles and never left the state. to putting the heart of Nebraska first. The Bryan team has always been second to none. Bryan, the first name in heart care. Haven't I seen you somewhere before? Yes, that's why I don't go there anymore. In the spirit of great comebacks, McDonald's presents the McRib Sandwich. It's back for a limited time and just as good as you remember. Get it in an extra value meal with a large order of fries and a medium Coke for $3.29. Say the word and we'll supersize it for free. Did somebody say McDonald's? Come back in the morning for a McDonald's new Western Omelette McMuffin extra value meal. With hash browns and small coffee for only $1.99. Only at McDonald's. Let Classic Auto Sales open the door to the experience and pleasure of owning a fine automobile. Browse Classic Auto's heated indoor showroom where selection is second to none. Classic Auto Sales is one of Omaha's premier retailer in low mileage, one owner luxury cars. Classic Auto Sales understands that your car is a statement of yourself. 
Whether you're looking for high performance, a touring sedan, or an off-road SUV, Classic Auto Sales can help you make that statement. Don't settle for the ordinary when you can drive the extraordinary. Classic Auto Sales, 109th and Blondo, Omaha. near kickoff, getting closer and closer towards the top of the hour. The marching bands from both Tennessee and Nebraska now on the field. The Huskers still out there as well. The crowd has calmed down. I was just going to say the crowd has calmed down a little bit, John, but they're cranking up again. John Glenn tells me Peyton Manning's having trouble putting uh, a lot of weight on his back knee. Right. Keep an eye out for that. Okay, we'll have to see if he gets the start tonight. We'll right. let all eyes on Peyton Manning tonight. Let's go back to Omaha one more time. Loretta and Mary are there. And guess what, guys? The excitement does not end with the game. We will be here right after the game with the most thorough post-game report. Operation Orange Bowl starting up right after the game. We'll be sidelined with the players, the coaches, of course, all those crazy fans. Keep it here on Channel 3. And uh, guys in Miami, you know we're a little bit jealous of you two. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? We have saved you a couple of seats, so come on come down. Come on down. Get on a flight and get down here and enjoy the game. Hey, as we go now, we want to thank you for being with us. And as we go, John, we want to take a look back at the years which made Tom Osborne a coaching legend. Yeah, a very special night tonight in Miami. Enjoy the game, and go Huskers! Go Big Red! plates ruled, now each of them succumbed, for paradigms doth shift when something wicked in its way comes. Introducing an automobile that outperforms the competition everywhere, including the bottom line, the faster, sleeker, meaner GS. See it now at Lexus of Omaha. First Finance, one of America's foremost mortgage lenders, announces a revolutionary breakthrough. Mortgage by mail. One call to First Finance and your complete mortgage package will be sent directly to your home. Even if you've been turned down or approved somewhere else, First Finance will beat their rate guaranteed in writing. You get it all from your phone to your home within 24 hours. Call 1-800-647-FIRST. Mortgage by mail, only from First Finance. If you own a home, you could be sitting on a fortune. It all started in Mrs. Lance's fifth grade science class when I learned about tornadoes. Now, after years of forecasting, I have the best weather technology in the business at Channel 3. Our SkyTracker 3 with Doppler radar shows what will happen in your neighborhood. We don't sensationalize the weather at Channel 3, but I'll make sure you know about it before it strikes. Craig Copling, your weather's been his concern since the fifth grade, only on Channel 3 qualifications a keen eye an appetite for action 18 years of experience rich robert sports weeknights on channel three loretta carroll and john anderson only on channel three this is cbs welcome home cbs sports home of the 1998 olympic winter games It 
is one of the colors in America's autumn and has been since 1869 when Princeton and Rutgers played in the first game and later when Harvard and Yale started their rivalry. College football has become a part of our lives and its traditions and symbols a part of our culture. From Pop Warner, Alonzo Stagg, and John Heisman, great men were drawn to the game. And as it grew, so did its legends, Newt Rockney, The Bear, Joe Paterno, and Tom Osborne. From out of the dust and soil of its classic conflicts, heroes were born. Jim Thorpe, the galloping ghost Red Grange, the Four Horsemen of Notre Dame, Mr. Inside and Mr. Outside, Blanchard and Davis. And tonight, one legend will leave the game after 25 years and countless compelling moments at Nebraska. Tom Osborne makes his final tribute to the game he loves tonight. And a college football folk hero, Peyton Manning, spirited and strong in body and heart, raised with a passion for the game, will play his last as a volunteer. Tennessee and Nebraska, more college football history tonight. One team hails from the south, the other from America's heartline, a heartland. And tonight they meet in Miami, the Tennessee Volunteers and the Nebraska Cornhuskers in the FedEx Orange Bowl. Tonight is Tom Osborne's final game after a 25-year career as head coach of Nebraska. He's won two national championships. He's averaged an eye-popping 10 wins a season. Nebraska's success rests on Scott Frost, the first quarterback in Husker history to rush and pass for 1,000 yards in a single season. His counterpart on Tennessee is Peyton Manning playing in his final collegiate game, capping a career that is already legendary. His love of the game brought him back to play his senior season. And the man on whom Peyton will rely to share the Volunteers' offensive load is Jamal Lewis, the leading freshman rusher in the country. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim Nance. And welcome to the College Football Today Fourth Division pregame show. I hope you're enjoying the new year. I'm joined once again by my partners, Craig James and Lou Holtz. And gentlemen, despite what you may have heard last night, Michigan has not won the national championship yet. I guarantee they haven't won a national championship yet, and they know it. They had a great year, but you go to bed the night before the voting, and you have no idea how the, the people are going to possibly vote. I said a few days ago that I was going to wait on my vote to cast in. I was going to watch both football games. Michigan's made their statement. Now we're going to see Nebraska in this game. And keep in mind, at least I am right now, that the Big Ten opponents of Michigan are 0-6 in bowl games this year. And the SEC, they're 10-0 over the last two years. No said. Tennessee's a good football team. Hey, the SEC hasn't lost a bowl game since two years ago when Nebraska annihilated Florida. All right, let's put one thing to rest. The Rose Bowl last night, the last second here at the end of the game, spiking the ball, Ryan Leaf. Lou, did Washington State deserve one more play from the 27th of Michigan? If I was a coach, I'd say yes, but the official said no, and that's all that matters. Everything else is irrelevant. Hey, get over it, America. I mean, Michigan won the football game. Great football team, undefeated. Yep, they did their part. Earlier, Craig caught up with Tom Osborne as he arrived at the stadium for some final thoughts before the coach's final game. Everybody in America wants to know, is Nebraska playing for national championship? Well, we hope so, uh, Craig. Uh, you know, some things we can't control. We can't control the voters, how people perceive. We just got to hope we can play better than Tennessee does tonight. But uh, I think we're really ready to play a great football game. We've got a very good team, and so I'm kind of excited about it. Your emotions on the day, knowing this is the last one after so many years as a football coach, what do they feel like? Well, I feel about the same as I always do. You know, you're a little bit, little bit nervous, but more anticipation, and so it's going to be a lot of fun. Did you take note of anything like this is the last bus ride, this is the last time to walk with the players? No, I, didn't, I didn't think about that, but now that you mentioned it, I guess it was. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Coach. Okay.
He never changes. His even emotions, unwavering Tom Osborne. The other story, really for the last four weeks, the condition of Peyton Manning's knee. He says it's as close to 100% as possible. What do you think, Craig, you'll see tonight? And one thing about this thing, from an X and O standpoint, Peyton Manning is the guy that goes back three steps, gets rid of the ball, five steps, gets rid of the ball. But the number one issue he'll do, deal with tonight in this ball game is the weather, the windy conditions out here. This is one of those deals where, look at the wind, gusts up to 32 miles per hour. The big boys up front with the humidity, they're going to sweat. But here's the thing, wide receivers downfield, that ball, the deep ball, will float. They have got to keep their eye on the ball because it's going to move on them, Coach. If Peyton can't play, his backup is T. Martin. We tried to recruit T. Martin. He's a great quarterback. He came to Tennessee because he wanted to play in a game like this. The only thing that might happen, he might play a year earlier than he thought. Yeah, if he has to play, remember, he's only thrown 16 passes in two seasons. And now I'm pleased to introduce the newest member of our CBS family, Armin Kate, and welcome yes, to Jim. CBS. Nice to be here. We've been talking about Peyton. You spent some time with him this week. I did. You know, last year we wondered whether Peyton Manning would even return for his senior year. This year we wonder whether his decision was worth it. Well, that depends on who you talk to. For three years, it was Peyton's place. Home to heroics that left a young man debating the decision of a lifetime last spring. Become the darling of the NFL draft and earn a king's ransom. Or return to school in a community with about as much at stake. I made up my mind. I don't expect to ever look back. I'm going to stay at the University of Tennessee. Yeah! I didn't do it to make a statement. Uh, you know, people ask me why you did it, and I really think I was selfish in my decision. I did what I wanted to do. Those words may prove costly. Despite throwing 36 touchdowns and setting several SEC records this year, Manning is no longer the consensus number one pick. After a crushing loss to Florida and remarkably the Heisman Trophy race, in some eyes, he's not even the best quarterback in the draft. It was a monumental mistake. I couldn't believe that a guy would turn down a guarantee of $25, $30 million to play for Bill Parcells and the New York Jets to be the king of the largest media market in the world. Everybody should want to go to the NFL. That's real healthy. But just to bypass college fast, whether you three or four years to go through it, and just to get out, that's wrong, I think. While you're here, you need to play for the love of the game, play for your university and enjoy it, and then make the next step. Clearly, no one profited more from Manning's step back than the state of Tennessee. According to this study, the football team generated nearly $40 million in local income last year. This season, Manning Mania helped produce millions more in record TV, ticket, and concessions. And that's just on campus. Well, certainly in terms of this year's economic impact from the football season, it was worth a lot more to the business community to have Peyton here in terms of nights in hotels and restaurants and sales and souvenirs than it was to the university. And so the business community had a lot at stake. The, the impact that he had on the store is this is a perfect example right here. This, this would have a whole lot more merchandise on it. It's impossible to ignore his economic impact, as it is to put a price on moments like this, or this. Memories of a season Peyton Manning likely lost millions to remember. A season and young man college football will not soon forget. I wouldn't change one thing about my senior year, about my entire career. I would not change one thing. People, you know, want to take at things, look at things like that. Uh, I did things the way I wanted to this year, and uh, I wouldn't change a thing. The agents I talked to said Peyton's decision to stay in school may have cost him as much as $10 million in contracts, bonus, and endorsement money. They also said if he has a great game tonight, he makes up a whole lot of that money. You know, I think it's amusing. As exasperated as these agents are, they don't understand that's not his motivation. Lou, how would you frame his senior year at Tennessee? He came back for the right reasons, not for money. He came back because he loved Tennessee. He loved the game, wanted to win a conference championship, which he does. Should have won the Heisman. Tennessee's better because he came back. College football is better because he came back. We need more Peyton Manning. I agree with all that. You know, we watched Ryan Lee play on national TV against a good defense. Now it's time to watch Peyton Manning against a big-time team. How's he going to perform? Guarantee NFL scouts out there watching. All right, Craig. Armin, thank you for that report. Jim. Coming up, a look at the life and times of Nebraska head coach Tom Osborne when we continue from the FedEx Orange Bowl after this. Well, if I had money to tell you what to do, I'd go downtown by a Ford truck or two. I'm crazy about a Ford truck. Lord, I'm crazy 
you about a Ford truck. I'm gonna buy me a Ford truck and cruise it up and down the road. I'm gonna buy me a Ford truck and cruise it up and down the road. For the last 50 years, there's only been one truck built Ford Tough. Горбачок, из-за него мы на краю экономической пропасти. Да благодаря ему у нас свобода. Из-за него мы на краю политического хаоса. Благодаря ему мы теперь свободны. И можем дойти до края этой пиццы. The Edge Pizza from Pizza Hut, with no outer crust, so the toppings go all the way to the edge. Да Горбачева! Да Горбачева! Да Горбачева! Almost everyone's been to the edge. Have you? We're back at Erickson Stadium where we're down to the final seconds of the game and it's still time. The kick's high. And... Erickson Mobile Phones. Catch the excitement. Every 10 seconds or so, a stop sign goes up somewhere in America. And every 30 seconds, a traffic light goes up. It's as hard on your car as it is on you. It's stop and go. Stop and go. Stop and go drive. Use Pennzoil. Formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop. Go. Pennzoil. Back to the FedEx Orange Bowl where they're getting set for tonight's showdown. Junior high back Amon Green carries on the Husker tradition of heralded backs. He finished second in the nation in rushing. There will be another head coach on the field tonight. Tennessee's Phil Fulmer. He's 4-1 and one in bowl games. There he is meeting with Tom Osborne. And his success recently was rewarded with a contract extension to the year 2003. 25 years, 25 bowls, 25 seasons with at least nine wins. You might wonder how a record of such sustained excellence was achieved by Coach Tom Osborne. But as Michelle Tafoya discovered, it all becomes clear when you learn about Tom Osborne, the man. the game and uh, it's something that I don't think I'll ever uh, you know get over is, is just my fascination with football. I've been very very fortunate to have been just in one place let alone a place that uh, very important to me uh, you know I like the people here I like the work ethic I like their values it's a state that I'm very comfortable with and, uh, and I've grown to, to really care about. Osborne's character has its roots in Hastings, Nebraska, where his grandfather played on the football team. A man of conviction, he later became a minister. Tom's father, Charles, also played football at Hastings College. After he graduated, he became a traveling salesman, but always carried a football uniform in the trunk of his car, forever in search of a game. Tom developed a sense of responsibility early, when his father's service in World War II kept him away from home for five years. I really didn't know him when he came back. I was 10 years old, and, and uh, he liked athletics, and uh, I, I wanted to please him. And so I think that's really how I first got into athletics, was the, uh, uh, just trying to, to do the things that he, he really enjoyed and, and liked and admired. Tom was named the best athlete in the state of Nebraska his senior year of high school. Turning down scholarship offers from Nebraska, he went on to star in three sports at Hastings College. It's never been easy for Tom Osborne. He tried the ministry, but missed football. He was hired as an assistant coach at Nebraska by the legendary Bob Devaney. He took over for Devaney, and the program flourished. But there was doubt. Tom Osborne's teams couldn't win the big one. Nebraska will go for two. Going for two. that if you were going to win a national championship, you had to go for the win. And I felt probably the players 
would would only respect going for the win. They'd won 12 straight. They thought they were a great team, and so uh, I thought that that's what they would want. Tom Osborne finally won a national championship, two of them in fact. But there was criticism that his success had come at the expense of his program's integrity. There have been some bumps along the road, obviously, but you just do what you think you need to do. I think every, everyone has to, to deal with, uh, with criticism at times and with problems. And we ask players to come 1,500, 2,000 miles away from their home to, to uh, and basically because they trust you. And uh, it's very difficult then when things don't pan out quite the way you'd like for you to then abandon them. And I suspect like a lot of people, you're always not quite sure you measure up. And so I think I, I really uh, spent a lot of my life trying to please my father. And like everybody, uh, or a lot of people, we just go through life in, in some way trying to satisfy uh, something that originated a long time ago. While he does suffer from a mild heart condition, Coach Osborne insists his health was only a contributing factor to his decision, the primary reason being he wanted to spend some more time with his family. The last five years, 59-3, and three, did not lose a home game his last five seasons. Coach, you went against him twice. What's his legacy? Well, he's a great coach, but the thing I remember most about him is his willingness to help other coaches to make them better football coaches. And the coaches may reward him in their voting. Yeah, and the thing that I remember the most about the guy is, you know, when all of this power game was at Nebraska. That's what he had. Big, strong guys that couldn't run a whole lot. He readjusted his recruiting philosophy, brought speed to Nebraska, and competes with everybody in America. Earlier, volunteer quarterback Peyton Manning was honored for his academic achievements at Tennessee, and Craig was there for the occasion. I'm here with Al Berkeley, president of NASDAQ, who has a special presentation for us. On behalf of the NASDAQ stock market, it is with great honor that I present this check for $5,000 to the University of Tennessee on behalf of Peyton Manning, the NASDAQ Scholar Athlete of the Year. By achieving an outstanding academic record, Peyton Manning is preparing for competition in an arena even bigger than football and a more important game, the game of life. Peyton is an example for all of us to follow. We at the NASDAQ salute you, Peyton Manning, as everyone at this game and those watching this game salute you. I'd like to thank NASDAQ for presenting me with the Scholar Athlete of the Year Award. I'm both honored and proud to receive the award on behalf of the University of Tennessee. I've always been taught that you have to balance your time between academics and athletics, but academics have to come first. And I try to do the right things both on and off the field, and it's very nice to be honored with an award such as this. Next, one lucky football fan will get a shot at a million dollars in the Gillette Touchdown Challenge that's coming up live when we continue after this. Think you're getting the best shave? Take the Sensor Excel Challenge. We bet you can't find a closer, safer shave than Sensor Excel. No other razor has Sensor Excel soft micro fins for extra protection and self-adjusting blades for extra closeness. Take the Sensor Excel Challenge. Once you experience the safest way to the closest shave, we bet you won't go back. Gillette Sensor Excel. I will not accept anything less than a perfect quad twisting triple. I will not accept anything less than my personal best. I will not accept anything less than 80 miles per hour. I will not accept anything less than 1 minute 17 seconds. I will not accept any cod but Visa. At the 1998 Olympic Winter Games, only the best is accepted. Visa, worldwide partner of the Nagano Games. It's everywhere you want to be. can't explain how a car that broke all the molds still has enough power to keep blowing away the stereotypes. Ford Taurus SE Sport, now with a 200 horsepower Duratec V6. Have you driven a Ford lately? 
Welcome back to the FedEx Orange Bowl. Tennessee and Nebraska just a few moments away, but right now let's go to our colleague Ed Cunningham who's down on the field for the Gillette Touchdown Challenge. Welcome, Ed. Thanks, Jim. We're here with Terry Pledger who will try a pass from 10 yards for $1 million in the Gillette Touchdown Challenge. His coach of the week has been Bernie Kozar. Bernie, any last words of encouragement? We're excited. We're going to thank Gillette. And let's get him, Terry. Terry, you ready to go? Ready to go. Let's do it. Guys, what? the director of sports marketing to present you Terry with that huge check for one million dollars Jim Terry congratulations on behalf of the Gillette company and all its employees I'm very pleased to present you with a check for one million dollars Jim Nance we have a new millionaire in Florida back to you across the field all right, way to go, Terry Pledger. Maybe it's a night for the passers. I know this, Lou. He made as much money in one pass as you made the whole season doing hey, his job. I'm here because I made it under the salary cap, but I want to say this. I wouldn't trade that million dollars to have the thrill and the excitement I've had over the years of being on the sideline in games like this. Uh, you know, this is a ball game where we can watch. It's pretty much simple for me. If Wistrom and Peter at Nebraska can get to Peyton Manning, the ball game's over with. That offensive line at Tennessee, the biggest burden of the game, left on their shoulders. All right, coming up, the FedEx Orange Bowl, and we'll see you later. But right now, let's send you to the gentleman who will be calling the game, Sean McDonough and Terry Donahue. Take it away. Thank you very much, Jim. Happy New Year, everybody. Certainly a tough act to follow what we just saw from Terry Pledger, but these two teams will try tonight. And obviously, since Michigan's victory in the Rose Bowl yesterday, the big question is, can Nebraska get a piece of the national title? Well, Sean, there's no question. The pollsters have flip-flopped this year. Teams that have been ranked number one, who have won, but not been impressive enough, have been dropped to number two. Michigan had a hard-fought victory against the number seven team in the country, Washington State, yesterday by five points. But Nebraska plays the number three team in the country tonight, Tennessee. If they win big, if they're impressive, some of those pollsters will flip-flop again. And if Nebraska is to win and win impressively, they'll have to deal with one of the top quarterbacks in the nation, Peyton Manning. Well, Peyton Manning has been hurt prior to this game. He's going to play tonight. To me, the key is the offensive line of Tennessee. They have got to do a great job protecting Peyton Manning or that Nebraska defense will knock him out of the game. If they knock him out of the game, Tennessee will go to their backup quarterback, T. Martin. T. Martin is a player who's not played a lot, but he's a versatile athlete. And remember, mobile quarterbacks at times in the past have been effective against the Nebraska defense. And while Tennessee does most of its damage through the air, Nebraska does it on the ground. They're the number one offense in the nation, the number one rushing offense as well, and the key man is their quarterback, Scott Frost. Well, Tennessee, if they expect to win, they must stop Scott Frost. At times, they will have two defenders assigned to him. He is the heart and soul of this Nebraska offense. Scott Frost can beat you throwing the ball or running the ball. He has rushed for over 1,000 yards. He has also thrown for over 1,000 yards. One of only 11 players in the history of the NCAA to do that. We'll be back for the coin toss. It won't be a coin worth a million dollars. We had a throw worth a million dollars from Terry Pledger a moment ago.
Championship. March Madness, only on CBS. Be the life of the party. Be a designated driver. Same friends, same fun, just no alcohol for you. From where I sit, that makes you a good friend. For the Olympic Winter Games, the address is CBS. If you could choose one gift for yourself this year, what would it be? Well, this year, get exactly what you want during the Chevy Make Your Money Count year-end event. How about a full-size Chevy pickup with 2.9 APR financing? Chevy, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Drive away a Chevy CK with 2.9 financing. There's great offers on other 98 Chevy cars and trucks. Finally, a gift you'll want to hang on to. Get 2.9 financing for a limited time at your local Chevy dealer today. Listen up. I have been to the edge and back, and I will tell you what I've learned. What I have learned is you don't need outer crust. Introducing the Edge Pizza from Pizza Hut, a new pizza with no outer crust, so the toppings go right to the edge. I have been to the edge and back. Join me. 16 pieces of pure pulchritudinous toppings. Have you been to the edge? Pizza Hut salutes Coach Tom Osborne for his years of service. Best wishes from Nebraska Pizza Hut restaurants and delivery units. Rich Roberts, only on Channel 3. And the coach, two men of different generations. Tonight, they meet at the crossroads to close out an era of college football. The quarterback, Tennessee's Peyton Manning. As a young boy, he seemed destined to follow in his Hall of Fame father's footsteps, and he did. Spurning the lure of pro football, Manning returned to the balls for his senior season. Though the Heisman Trophy eluded his grasp, he led his team to the SEC Championship and left an indelible mark on the college football landscape. The coach, Nebraska's Tom Osborne, handpicked by his mentor Bob Devaney to continue the Cornhusker tradition. Osborne steered the program to unprecedented heights. He proved to be a man of courage and conviction. In his first national championship game, he played for victory and lost when a tie would have guaranteed the national title. And he stood in support of his most controversial players. The coach and the quarterback. Only one will be victorious, but both leave as champions. is proud to welcome you inside Pro Player Stadium, just north of downtown Miami, Florida, it's the FedEx Orange Bowl, the first ever meeting in football between the Nebraska Cornhuskers and the Tennessee Volunteers. Final game of this college football season, final game of the glorious careers of Peyton Manning and Tom Osborne. Come the Tennessee Volunteers. The balls are 11 and 1. Their only loss at Florida back on September 20th, 33 to 20. And now the Cornhuskers. <laughs> Nebraska 12 and all the Big 12 champions having defeated Texas A&M in the Big 12 championship game in San Antonio on December 6th. 
We have coverage on each sideline. Let's begin with Ed Cunningham. Hey, thanks, Sean. Tennessee, the wind is going to affect them a lot more than it does Nebraska. Peyton Manning especially, his plant leg is his right leg. That's where the injury occurred. As he goes to plant and throw the ball, the ball may flutter a little bit in these high winds. Also, Dwayne Goodrich, a starting cornerback, will not start tonight. In his place, Gerald Griffin, a sophomore, who made two starts on the season, had an interception against UCLA. For a report on Nebraska, let's go over to Michelle Tafoya. Michelle? All right, well, two quick Nebraska injury updates. Jason Peter has a strained lower mat, back muscle. He'll play with a protective device while he's playing tonight. And fullback Joel McAvick has a strained left hamstring and a sore right knee. He'll play with neoprene sleeves on both, and he'll have that knee scope within the week. One final note on the emotions of this Nebraska team. Scott Frost told me we feel privileged to be playing in Tom Osborne's final game because we'll be the last thing he remembers about his coaching career. Back upstairs to Sean and Terry. We'll return for the opening kickoff of the FedEx Orange Bowl from Miami right after this. You don't need binoculars to see why Escort is so popular. It's a value so enticing, it's like getting cake with extra icing. You can get power, lots of power, power galore, to whisk down the windows and unlock the doors, adjust the side mirrors, but wait, there is more. Opscore remote, AC, a smooth automatic, and a CD player for the music fanatic. And if that's not enough, you can get an anti-theft system to protect this good stuff. The buck starts here for Escort Thrills, somewhat higher, loaded to the gills. I believe that if you really go out and do exactly what you want to do, you find happiness. If you can do what you love, that's incredible. Anybody that says that one person can't make a difference is wrong. So Nick and CQ is working for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm doing just fine, Cold Turkey. Oh, well, that's great. Oh, yeah. Hey, Jack. Yeah. Take a break? Oh, nice one. Come on, you know we quit for New Year's. Oh, wait. I'm coming. Jack, no. Just one cigarette. No. Why are you so calm? Because I got help. CQ, a 24-hour stream of medicine that's always with you, even when you first wake up. Helps calm the cravings, my friend. All right. Nicoderm CQ, the power to calm, the power to comfort, the power to help you quit. I can put that spoon down anytime I want. Kellogg's Frosted Flakes, too irresistible for adults. You just don't get as much milk with a fork, that's all. Frosted Flakes have the taste adults have grown to love. They're great! Do I hear 2,000 for a date with supermodel Jennifer? 2,000. Is your dandruff sending the wrong signal? Sold to number 10 for $2,000. Get Selsun Power. Doctors recommend Selsun Blue number one. So don't send the wrong signals. Get Selsun Power. Very pleasant night here in South Florida. It has not been a great week for these two teams in terms of the weather, but comfortable tonight, 70 degrees of kickoff. As Ed Cunningham mentioned, the wind could be a factor, particularly for the Tennessee passing attack, and they'll be going directly into that 14-mile-per-hour breeze to start the game. As Tom Osborne's Huskers will kick off, Tennessee won the toss, and Philip Fulmer elected to receive. Cedric Wilson is back deep for the opening kick. He's a true freshman from Memphis, Tennessee. Ordinarily, they have Dwayne Goodrich back returning kickoffs. But as it was mentioned before the game from Ed Cunningham, he has an injury. A quad muscle pull. Chris Brown kicks off. The junior from South Lake, Texas, put... His foot to the ball, and the final game of this college football season is underway with a touchback. Sixty-year-old Tom Osborne in his final game as Nebraska coach. So many memories from the Orange Bowl. In recent years, they've been sweeter memories. Peyton Manning in his final game. He holds every passing record at the University of Tennessee. Huskers spread the field to start the game. And Manning checking on the first play from scrimmage. 
He throws on target, close to a first down. Marcus Nash. There is a flag on the play from the offensive backfield. Sean, I think we're going to have a holding penalty to start the game with. Terry McCauley is the referee. It's an Atlantic Coast Conference officiating crew. Spencer Riley, number 68, the left guard. He was the culprit. He was working against Jason Peter, number 55. Offensive line of Tennessee had difficulty early in the season, particularly in that loss at Florida. They were manhandled up front. They've been much better since, particularly when they put the true freshman, Kosey Coleman, in the starting lineup at right tackle. And instead of a gain of eight, the ball back on the eight-yard line. First and 22. The quick hitter caught for a short game. Out across the 12 goes Peerless Price, tackled by Irwin Sweeney. The Tennessee backs and receivers. Three wideouts to start the game. Jermaine Copeland, Peerless Price, and Marcus Nash. Their leading receiver, Sean Price, and an excellent pass-catching fullback. And Lewis is the tailback. And up front, from left to right, Clifton Riley, Teague, Hamilton, and Coleman. Teague, an all-conference center. The coaches say the strength of that line, the tackles, Clifton and Coleman. Jamal Lewis to the 14-yard line. The true freshman, leading freshman rusher in the nation this season, averaging 114 yards per game. Tripped up by Tony Ortiz. Great front four on defense for Nebraska. Grant Wistrom won the Lombardi Award. Jason Peter is an All-American. Wilson Rucker the rest of the front. The linebackers are Jay Foreman between Tony Ortiz and Octavius McFarland. The leading tackler on the defense is the rover Mike Brown, Ralph Brown, the right corner, Erwin Sweeney, the true freshman at left corner, and Eric Warfield at free safety. Third down and 16. Shovel pass. Sean Bryson to the 20 and tackled by Jay Foreman. Ten yards short of the first down. The holding penalty really hurt. Well, you really have to wonder, Sean. Tennessee came out, had good protection on the first pass play of the game. The line did protect them. Then all of a sudden, the holding penalty really set them back. Here, they out of the shotgun formation, they run just a little shovel pass underneath. But the speed and the mobility of the Nebraska defense, that's going to be the tough thing on the Tennessee offense tonight, how to counter that speed. Tennessee had to use the timeout. You saw the punter, Chris Hold, signaling timeout. They did not have enough men on the field. Sean Bryson came on late. Nothing goes together quite like the great taste of Tostitos tortilla chips. And Tostitos salsa. Ooh. Tostitos, the perfect chip for the perfect salsa. Now's a good time. I thought quarterbacks were the smart ones. That's right. Ooh, he has a shame. But it hurts. Another foam shaver. Hey, he didn't know about Edge Pro Gel. New Edge, Reg? This is New Edge Pro Gel. And it's a moisturizing formula, so it protects better than the foam. Doesn't hurt. When I let you get hurt. <laughs> and now he is beautiful, just like me. New Edge Pro Gel, the best edge ever. Save your skin. <laughs> Prego Prego is the best. Oh mama, Prego Prego won the test. Oh mama, Prego Prego has success. Prego 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 beat the rest. Big news for mamas. Taste test proven. Families clearly prefer the thick, rich taste of Prego traditional to these other sauces. Give your family the best. Prego 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 tastes the best. new Mazda B-Series truck. A powerful V6 engine, stronger suspension, a shift on the fly at any speed, four-wheel drive workhorse. Five eighths or three quarters? Ten millimeter. My favorite. Right now, get a great lease on low financing on all 98 Mazda B-Series trucks. Mazda, pure truck. 
CBS Sports presentation of the FedEx Orange Bowl is sponsored by Fast Reliable FedEx. It's the way the world works. Budweiser. Mazda. And by Tostitos Tortilla Chips and Sauces. Chris Holt ready to punt now into that 14 mile per hour breeze. It should be excellent field position for Nebraska on its first possession. Oh, what a kick into the breeze. A boomer sends Bobby Newcomb back to the 20. That rolls inside the five, and it looks like it will stop near the two. What a kick by Hogue. By far the longest of his career, 78 yards. His previous long was 52, and that 78-yarder is just four yards shy of the Orange Bowl record. John, in big games, coaches talk to their teams before coming out about turnovers and field position. That kick by Chris Hogue was dramatic in terms of field position. He wasn't even the starting punter at the beginning of the year. He was the backup, but the freshman David Leverton had trouble. Scott Frost hands off. Joel Makavica stopped with very little, perhaps a half yard. Radock Thompson led the surge for the Tennessee defense. The Nebraska quarterback is Scott Frost, the senior from Wood River, Nebraska. Started his career at Stanford after two seasons there. Transferred back to his home state university. And this year he became the 10th quarterback in Division 1A history to pass and rush for more than 1,000 yards in the same season. Chris McCoy of Navy also accomplished that feat this year. Frost. Keeps on the option. Out across the three, and that's all. Torrey Noel, the strong safety. Up to make the play on the Nebraska quarterback. Nebraska backed up here in their own territory. Walks the best player on their team with the ball. That's Scott Frost on the option. But the speed of the Tennessee defense, the quickness and mobility of that defense played the play perfectly. Third and nine, Frost has a man open, it's too high. He was looking for the tight end, Sheldon Jackson. Jonathan Brown applied some pressure on Frost and forced the hasty throw. Well, one thing Nebraska does not like to do is throw when you expect them to throw. That's exactly what happened here. Scott Frost does not want to be in a throwing game tonight. They want to surprise you with the play-action pass. They hate it when they're behind the down and distance. Terry Fair has the same injury as Peyton Manning, a first sack injury. Back to receive the punt from Jesse Cush. And his first punt is a beauty, but he had the aid of the breeze. Fair bobbled it. Retreated all the way back to the 33. And he is stopped at the 37-yard line. A 56-yard punt by Cush, and the punters are the story. Here in the first four minutes. No score. Tennessee back on offense in a moment. Today, some very unlikely people woke up and decided to change the world. A small shop owner set wheels in motion in faraway lands. A young designer made people sit up and take notice oceans away. A publisher stirred imaginations and turned classrooms into kingdoms. And a dressmaker helped brides everywhere become just that much more enchanting. How did such ordinary people come by such extraordinary powers? Believe it or not, all it took was the wave of a wand. The simple touch of a finger that let them open new doors. Create excitement and reach farther than ever before. People didn't always possess such global power. But with FedEx, it's the way the world works. The 
all-new Mazda B-Series truck. A powerful V6 engine, stronger suspension, a shift on the fly at any speed, four-wheel drive workhorse. Five-eighths or three-quarters? Ten millimeter. My favorite. Right now, get a great lease on low financing on all 98 Mazda B-Series trucks. Mazda. Pure truck. In Brooklyn South, unnecessary roughness is sometimes very necessary. Let's take him for a ride. Brooklyn South, CBS Monday. One of the joys of coaching for Tom Osborne, serving as offensive coordinator. He's working in that role at the moment on the Nebraska sideline. That's another one of the reasons he decided to get out of coaching. He felt because of his heart condition that he just didn't have the ability to work the kind of schedule that it takes to be the offensive coordinator and the head coach. Tennessee on offense for the second time. Whistle stopped the play. Sean, I think it's interesting to note that Tennessee tonight... Ball start on the offense. Five yards, still first down is playing for the first time without a lot of pressure on them. They're the underdog tonight, a heavy underdog to Nebraska, and sometimes that allows you to be looser. You play with more of a carefree spirit, if you will, and it'll be interesting to see as this game unfolds if Tennessee can take advantage of that underdog role. Well, one thing the Michigan win did do without question yesterday is eliminate Tennessee from national championship consideration. More than 11,000 yards passing in Manning's career. Only Todd Santos and Ty Detmer have thrown for more in college football. Bryson, as we mentioned, the fullback is an excellent receiver. He's back to the 35-yard line, tackled by Irwin Sweeney. Bryson, a junior from Franklin, North Carolina. And Sweeney's a true freshman who became a starter in the fourth game of the year when he took over for Jerome Peterson. Many analysts believe the one weakness of the Nebraska team is the secondary. Well, you know, they're young. They're, they're, it's not that they're not talented. They're very talented, but they're inexperienced. Freshman, sophomore, they have some younger type players in that secondary. Two sophomores and a true freshman, the starters. Quick pass, and it didn't go anywhere. Peerless Price wrapped up immediately by Octavius McFarland. A lot of people don't give the Nebraska defense credit for their speed. Th that ball was thrown to the outside. David Cutcliffe, the offensive coordinator of Tennessee, wants to make Nebraska defend the entire field. So he bunches receivers here, throws it outside, but watch the closing speed of the red shirts. That is why Nebraska is one of the better defenses in the country. They can run to the football. Third down and 12. Manning's four for four but for only 13 yards. He's under pressure. A short pass. And Derek Edmonds, the reserve fullback, is thrown down immediately. Again, Irwin Sweeney in on the stop for Nebraska. So the penalties have really hurt Tennessee on its first two possessions, and the Volunteers will punt again five minutes in. Well, remember, we said at the beginning of the telecast, the Tennessee offensive line has got to keep Peyton Manning clean. That's not a sack, but it's a little bump, and who knows with that knee of his, they've got to make sure they keep him clean all night long. Well, what can Chris Hogue do again? He can boom another one. High punt taken by Bobby Newcomb, the true freshman. He started at the 12. He's driven back at the 22-yard line. Ball came out, but he was ruled down by contact. A 51-yard punt and a 10-yard return for Newcomb. Chris Hogue, the man of the hour for the Volunteers, still no score. new Mazda B-Series truck. A powerful V6 engine, stronger suspension, a shift on the fly at any speed, four-wheel drive workhorse. Five-eighths or three-quarters? Ten millimeter. My favorite. Right now, get a great lease on low financing on all 98 Mazda B-Series trucks. Mazda. Pure truck. They created their microprocessor in 1971, and the faster their chips have performed, the faster their company has grown. Today, the Intel design is the brain behind the majority 
of the world's PCs. By the 21st century, their chip could execute two billion instructions in one second. Where do you learn about such fast-thinking companies? NASDAQ. Shaping the new world of investing. Every player has a weakness. Tonight, Mr. Grant Hill's weakness takes center court. There's only one place to go for the irresistible taste of America's favorite fries. Did somebody say McDonald's? Now come to McDonald's and vote for your favorite NBA All-Star. This pilot wasn't the only one who died after this crash. So did one of his two mechanics. He shot and killed himself after the Air Force charged him with negligent homicide. 60 Minutes, Sunday. Scoreless here at the Orange Bowl in Miami. Michelle Tafoy with you here on the sidelines. Nebraska fullback Joel McAvicka, after one rushing attempt, re-injured that left hamstring. Trainer Doak Ostergaard told me they think he's strained an even larger portion of the muscle than before. They've, they've given him some medicine. They're warming him up. They'll see how he responds. But, guys, his return to this game is unlikely. Back to you. And, obviously, that's a big blow to Nebraska. McAvicka averages six and a half yards per carry. But Billy Legate moves in at fullback, number 40. He's blocking for Amon Green. Raynock Thompson made the tackle for Tennessee. Amon Green, second leading rusher in the nation this year. Behind Ricky Williams of Texas, McAvicka got the start at fullback. Lance Brown, Jeff Lake, and Tim Carpenter, who is not a pass receiver at tight end. And an outstanding offensive line, Aaron Taylor was the winner of the Elton Trophy this year. Eric Anderson, the tackle, first team, all Big 12. Four 50-year seniors and the junior, Josh Heskew, at center. Second and nine. Cross, chopped down behind the line of scrimmage by Raynock Thompson. Back at the 21-yard line. So Thompson has been active early, the sophomore from New Orleans. Coaches say he's going to be a big-time player. Has great speed and does a great job diagnosing the play early. The defense up front, Jonathan Brown, their leader in sacks with 13 and a half. Duff Green and Terry, the rest of the front. Leonard Little, one of the best defensive players in the nation. First team All-SEC. Thompson and Wilson surround him. In the secondary, Griffin, Noel, Gaines, and Fair. Cross on third down. Hit as he threw. Open the tight end, Sheldon Jackson. He's short of a first down out of the 29. Corey Gaines made the tackle. And it will be another punt. Sean, right now, the speed, mobility, and quickness of the Tennessee defense is affecting the Nebraska offense. There's no question about it. They are matching up very well early in the game. And the more they can put pressure on Scott Frost right there, that's going to help him as the game goes along. Get, get Scott behind the down and distance. Make him a throwing quarterback. Take him out of what he does the best, and that's running. Bear waiting for the punt from Cush. Bush came to Nebraska as a walk-on, and that was not a very good punt. Down at the 37-yard line, a 36-yard punt by Cush. No score midway through the first quarter at the FedEx Orange Bowl. Budweiser has 12 breweries located across the country. The Budweiser that you uh, get from your local brewery is usually the freshest beer available in the marketplace. As a matter of fact, an import in its home country will taste much different uh, than it does by the time it gets here to the United States. An American beer brewed locally is going to be far superior in taste. Our policy is to have beer on the shelf no older than 110 days. Budweiser sells very quickly. The average age of Budweiser on the shelf is about 30 days and compare that to an import which could be upwards of 180 days or 360 days old. Having local breweries across the country in specific geographic locations ensures that your Budweiser is the freshest possible beer it can be by the time you purchase it. Are you going to fix that fence today? Yep. 1948 was the first year for Ford F-Series. 
And after 50 years, there are more tough F-Series trucks still on the road today than any other make. Ford F-Series, built Ford tough for 50 years strong. It's been 50 years, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe it's about time you fix that fence. Nothing. <laughs> the Magnificent Seven, two-hour series premiere CBS Saturday. In the 1995 Orange Bowl, Nebraska was number one, Miami number three. Nebraska trailed by eight in the fourth quarter. Corey Schlesinger led the Cornhuskers back with scoring runs of 15 and 14 yards. Nebraska. A 24-17 victory to bring Tom Osborne his first national championship. Of course, they repeated at the Fiesta Bowl the following year with an annihilation of Florida. Some of the Tennessee players believe the reason they're such a big underdog in this game is that people are thinking about that SEC team, Florida, getting hammered two years ago by Nebraska. Another flag down. Manning trying to stretch the defense. Throws incomplete, looking for Marcus Nash. He was well covered by Ralph Brown, an outstanding cornerback. Consensus first team all Big 12 this season, but we check out the flag of the line. Sean, Sean the, tennis, the Tennessee team offensively wants to keep on the defense, lined up in the neutral zone, five yards, still first down. The Tennessee offense wants to keep the threat of a running game on Nebraska all night, but yet they've run seven offensive plays total, but only one run. Jamal Lewis, the great freshman tailback at Tennessee, has got to get into the game. He's got to become a factor. And the Tennessee offense improved dramatically this season once they did establish the ground game with the emergence of Lewis. Here is Lewis. Fighting for a couple, out to the 43, tackled there by Jason Peter. Lewis rushed for 1,364 yards this season, and you have to remember he started only nine games. He was not the starting tailback at the beginning of the season. In the first three games of the season as a team, Tennessee rushed for 100 yards, just more than 99. Since then, you see what they've done, a dramatic improvement, more than 168 yards per game on the ground. Well, and it took Lewis a little time to learn pass protection, and in this offense, you have to protect Peyton Manning when you're running back. Second down, Lewis trying to get outside. He has a great combination of power and speed, and he's across midfield. Mike Rucker made the tackle. That's a gain of eight. This is, this is what I was referring to. Tennessee, if they become two-dimensional, if they can run and throw the ball, they can attack the Nebraska defensive team effectively. If they are one-dimensional, they're playing into the hands of what Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator of Nebraska, wants them to do. Lewis provided the first first down of this game for either team. Ball at the 49 of Nebraska. Manning with time. As a receiver, first down at the 31-yard line. Andy McCullough tackled by Ralph Brown, the senior from Dayton. On the receiving end of that pass for Manning. And, Sean, you said it correctly. Manning with time. That is the key. Peyton Manning had plenty of time to get back, get planted, and put that ball on the target. That is what will affect this team as much as anything. Give your great player, Peyton Manning, time to throw. Derek Edmonds now in at fullback. Leading the way for Lewis. Good cut back to the inside, and Jason Peter helped drive him back. Jason Wiltz, the other defensive tackle, also at the bottom of the pile. When we chatted with David Cutcliffe, the offensive coordinator for Tennessee, earlier this week. He meant no disrespect toward this Nebraska defense, but he felt that Florida defense, as a group, was better, tougher. Well, there's, there's no question about it. The, ten the Tennessee, the Tennessee uh, coaches certainly have a lot of respect for this defense, but they're not awed by it. When they played Florida, they played one of the better defenses in the country, a fierce pass rush, really no different than Nebraska in the Tennessee coaches' minds. 5.20 remaining. In the first quarter, no score, the fade incomplete. He was looking for David Martin, a true freshman. And the Tennessee coaches think will be a star, but he hasn't played much this year. He's a surprising target. 
in this game, having appeared in just four games during the regular season with just one reception. Well, and Tennessee was trying to get a mismatch here physically. Irwin Sweeney for Nebraska is only 6'1". Martin is 6'5 for Tennessee. They liked the matchup they got there. The ball was about six inches off target. Now third down and seven. Neither team has converted on third down tonight. Manning again with plenty of time, and that's caught for a first down. Sean Bryson, tackled by Irwin Sweeney. Tennessee at the Nebraska 20, first and 10. Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator at Nebraska, has got to be concerned, not because Peyton Manning is completing some passes. He's a great player. He's going to hit some open receivers, but because Peyton Manning is getting time to throw. Wistrom, the great player, is working against Chad Clifton, 67. Clifton won that particular war. The pitch to Lewis. Bryson leading the way. Lewis hit hard and fumbled. And Nebraska has recovered. Ralph Brown knocked it out, and Mike Rucker recovered the fumble at the 21-yard line. What a hit by Brown. Then Rucker pounced on the football. I said earlier that you're always concerned about field position and turnovers. That's what you preach to your team in the locker room before the opening kickoff. Jamal Lewis, a young player, just didn't have the ball put away quite tight enough. And consequently, Ralph Brown gets off the block, makes a great tackle. The ball's loose. Nebraska recovers. Tennessee showing blitz. They're up near the line. Amon Green out across the 25 to the 26. Well, Philip Fulmer said earlier this week his team cannot afford to make many mistakes against this talented Nebraska punch, and he watched the first major miscue of the night. Well, I'm sure Philip felt that they had points on the board there. They were certainly in field goal range as a minimum and probably touchdown range. Second and six, no score. 4-10 remaining in the first quarter. Now one back look from Nebraska. And Green was hit immediately from behind. Excellent penetration by the Volunteers. Buck Buxton. He's been a backup defensive tackle much of this season. Forced into action with the season-ending injury to Billy Ratliff, who went out for the year with a knee injury, suffered against Southern Miss. What the Tennessee defense is doing right now is they're penetrating upfield. Whenever you penetrate against an option team or a counter team, which Nebraska runs a lot of counter plays, it's disruptive to the offense. That is what they're doing effectively. Play action fake to Green. Frost throws. Man open. Punt. First down, Nebraska. Sheldon Jackson across midfield with the first first down of the night for the Huskers. A gain of 25. Sheldon Jackson is the best receiving tight end at Nebraska. He's going to come from this side of the screen, drag across the field. It's a nice counter pass by Nebraska. All of the Tennessee defense flowed one direction. Frost comes away from that flow, finds Sheldon Jackson. Great hand placement and concentration by the big tight end. Joel Makavica back on the field for Nebraska. He got the carry and got two to the 46 of Tennessee where he ran into Raynock Thompson. It's going to be critical to see if McAvick can stay in this game. He's such a wonderful blocker, as well as an outstanding runner. Your fullback's got to lead that tailback all night long. And boy, when you lose a guy like that out of your lineup, it affects your running game. Talking with Joel a couple of days ago, he said, lately teams have been keying on him, taking away those inside runs. And as a result, his stats haven't been as impressive lately. Whistles before the play. No play. Boy, and Tennessee is lucky there were whistles. Nebraska came in an unbalanced line and ran an option to the short side of the field. Tennessee wasn't lined up properly. That play might have gone. Well start on the offense. Five yards, complete second down. That play very well might have gone for a Nebraska touchdown. 
There's only two men over here on this side. Everybody else is over here. Tennessee had to adjust, didn't get quite lined up, and the pitch is wide open with a lead blocker. No one else in the defense out here for Tennessee. Tom Osborne gives the opponent just about every formation, just about every play out of every formation. It's amazing to watch them practice. And Here's Frost throwing on target again. Matt Davison, the true freshman from Tecumseh, Nebraska. Perhaps best known for his diving catch at the end of regulation against Missouri for a touchdown that forced overtime in that game against the Tigers, a game the Huskers went on to win in OT. Well, Tom Osborne's been in a lot of big games, and he knows when you're playing against a fired-up defensive team that's really penetrating and flying to the ball, counter them. Play action pass and counter plays, and that's exactly what that was, a play action counter pass that was effective. Nebraska starting to get in rhythm after the fumble by Lewis. Frost throws, looking deep, and is caught by Newcomb and bodies out of bounds at the 14-yard line, tackled by Torrey Noel. 21 yards on the throw by Frost to Newcomb. This is what makes defending the Nebraska offense so difficult. It's the most effective and difficult offense in the country to stop. It's a play-action pass. They make it look like option. Then Frost jumps back. Newcomb runs it inside post-corner route. He runs to the post and then back outside. The ball is thrown where either he catches it or no one catches it. The option, he had to pitch it. It's Shevin Wiggins inside the five and down near the goal line. Gerald Griffin made the tackle to save the touchdown. Wiggins, a wingback, taking the pitch. And he has Nebraska inside the two, first and goal. This is a three-back play where it's the famous option play for Nebraska. Scott Frost takes the hit, but dishes the ball off just beautifully. Scott Frost, half the time, when you watch him play on the option, he doesn't even look where he's pitching the ball. He just flips it out there, knows his wingman is with him. Amon Green, short of the goal line. He was stopped by Leonard Little. It will be second and goal with a minute and a half remaining in the first quarter. And there was a flag on the play. So it remains first and goal. Amon Green here on the power play. Fights for heavy yardage and then all of a sudden fumbles it, sneaks, tries to sneak it across, but the officials saw it. No touchdown. Sean, it's amazing. Just a few seconds ago, Tennessee's defense was in control of the Nebraska offense. But that is what makes it so difficult to defense Tom Osborne's attack. All of a sudden, they have so many weapons, so many formations, and your defense just can't keep track of all of it. Many of the coaches who talked about Tom Osborne since he announced his retirement talk about his great skill as a game coach. There's many adjustments. Up and over and in for a touchdown. Amon Green makes it 6 nothing Nebraska. Watch the fullback, Billy Legate, number 40. He, he takes the place of Makapika. He's the lead blocker on the play. He's the one that isolated on the linebacker. Right there, number 40. He knocked Leonard Little out of the hole, which enabled Amon Green to score the touchdown. Chris Brown out of the hole to Ted Retzlaff. And it is 7-0 Nebraska. Now this, Orange Bowl memory. This FedEx Orange Bowl memory is sponsored by Nicoderm CQ. The power to calm. The power to comfort. The power to help you quit. The 1984 Orange Bowl matched number one Nebraska, number four Miami. Nebraska trailed by seven with less than a minute to play. On fourth and eight, Jeff Smith scored from 24 yards out. Nebraska went for two in the win, but Turner Gill's pass was knocked out of Jeff Smith's hands. Miami won the national championship for the 31-30 victory over Nebraska. Hey, stranger, where you been? I don't smoke anymore. Sorry, I mean, 
Great. How'd you do it? Nicoderm CQ. CQ? Isn't that the patch with the, uh, three steps? Mm-hmm. I'm doing the steps. Nicoderm CQ has three steps, so you gradually step down your dose the way doctors and pharmacists prefer. Steps, Dad. The way to go. Nicoderm CQ. The power to calm, the power to comfort, the power to help you quit. Nebraska leads 7 to nothing with a minute 10 left in the first quarter. Our overhead shots are from the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes. Goodyear's Blimp Fleet will double this year with three new blimps arriving in international markets. After the fumble by Jamal Lewis at the 22 of Nebraska, the Cornhuskers went 78 yards. It took eight plays. And Frost was three for three on the drive with Tennessee concentrating on stopping the run. He hurt them with the pass. Chris Brown. Bounces it down the field. Nice hop for Cedric Wilson, the true freshman. He's in trouble. And stopped short of the 20-yard line. Knocked down to the 17. Clint Finley in on the stop. Mike Brown also in on the tackle for Nebraska. Click on to CBS Sportsline where you'll find a wrap-up of tonight's game and news on all the college bowl action. Get the latest scores, stats, highlights, exclusive columns, and the latest breaking news in all of sports. Plus, check out the most in-depth Olympic site on the web. Get in on the action at cbs.sportsline.com. Again, confusion in the Tennessee huddle. The player running on late. They'll have to hurry to get this play off. Play clock at three. Mark Levine now the tailback. He's out to the 21. Tackled by Tony Ortiz. Levine was the starting tailback at the beginning of the year before Lewis won the job. You know, you go back. Mark Levine is now in the game for Jamal Lewis. Jamal, Jamal Lewis right here with the ball. He has it in the wrong arm. He should have the ball outside, in the outside arm, away from all those defenders. I'm not sure that that necessarily is what caused the fumble, but you always fundamentally put that ball away from the defense. Antron Peebles, one of three tight ends used regularly by Tennessee, being helped off. The junior from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Started his career at linebacker. Also a defensive end, then moved to tight end in spring practice. Tight end's not a big part of the passing attack. As a matter of fact, UT tight ends have just three catches this year. Mark Levine, the running back, fell Ooh. into his right knee. It was a good block by Peoples, but all of a sudden he got hit from the behind there. Levine again, big hole. Mark Levine breaks free. Good move on Warfield, and he's tackled out of the 48-yard line by Carlos Polk, a backup linebacker. Gain of 27 for Levine. And Polk is slow to get up for Nebraska. Ne Nebraska wants to make sure they eliminate the running game. Tennessee has established early in this game that they are capable of finding some creases in that Nebraska front. So far, Levine found him. So did Jamal Lewis. It's encouraging if you're a Tennessee fan. Jamal Lewis trotting along the Tennessee sideline. Might have been injured on that hit that caused the fumble. Play action fake. A good one by Manning. He throws into coverage, and it's almost intercepted by Mike Brown. He was looking for Marcus Nash. And it was nearly picked off by the sophomore from Scottsdale, Arizona. Well, Mike Brown is the rover back for Nebraska. He read Peyton Manning's eyes. Peyton Manning was looking where he was throwing. Brown made a great break on the ball, very close to an interception that could have gone the distance had he been able to hang on to it. Brown was an outstanding two-way player in high school in Arizona. The Arizona High School Player of the Year as a senior. He won the award as the best running back in the state and also the best defensive back. Manning. That pass deflected and intercepted by Eric Warfield. Warfield. 
at the 30 and tackled from behind at the 25-yard line by Sean Bryson. Manning has seen this before. His receivers had a tough time hanging on in the SEC championship game against Auburn, and as a result, the Volunteers just did squeak out a victory. Well, you have to wonder, Jermaine Copeland, number six, the wide receiver, he is dragging across the formation, but Peyton Manning throws a hot ball here. This ball is an underneath route, and it needs to be a little bit lower and a little softer. It's a little bit hot. I don't say that Jermaine Copeland shouldn't have caught it, but it wasn't an easy catch. Third interception of the season for Warfield, the only senior starter in the secondary for Nebraska. He hails from Texarkana, Arkansas. The end of the first quarter, the score Nebraska 7, Tennessee nothing. We'll return to the FedEx Orange Bowl after this message and a word from your local station. This morning, strange things are happening all over the world. Shops are about to open empty. Part suppliers are partless, and assembly workers have nothing to assemble. Is this any way to run a business? With FedEx it is. Every morning the world gets just what it wants, just when it needs it, without expensive warehousing. Gone today, here again tomorrow. Now that's the way the world works. Lie, counselor. And it's bedtime for money. Now, which battery will last over 30% longer in these palm-top computers? Duracell or Energizer? Energizer. Someday, buddy. The holidays can be stressful, but help is on the way. United Artists invites you to meet the antidote to the holiday season. Lucky for you, I stopped by. Tomorrow never dies. Rated PG-13, now playing. I'm Darman, he's Greg. Our show moves to Monday Leo, night. Leo, what are you doing? Whatever it takes. Watch George and Leo, Monday night CBS. All right, for that. <laughs> for college football action, the address is CBS. Welcome home. You gotta surround yourself with talented people, stay focused, and work hard. Norwest salutes Tom Osborne's 25 years of winning with Tom's Loan Challenge. Take the challenge by applying for any new Norwest loan of $5,000 or more. If you qualify, you'll get a free commemorative jacket or flag. It's nice to know Norwest is as proud as I am to be part of Nebraska. Nebraska can they call the winner. What makes a house a home? There's no one answer. Home Real Estate knows homes are as different as the people who live in them. To some, it's a three-bedroom ranch. To others, it's a classic brick tutor. But it's really special moments. First steps, family traditions, memories to last a lifetime. And to Husker fans, it's 42 consecutive wins in the big house in Lincoln. Woohoo! Go Huskers! Looking to buy, sell, build, or relocate? Talk to Home Real Estate. But wait until after the game. We'll understand. The Skyview 3 Network, only on Channel 3. On the interception that Peyton Manning just threw, Jermaine Copeland, number six, he comes across the formation on a little drag route. The ball certainly should have been caught. I would say, though, I've seen it on practice fields for 29 years. The ball, when it's a little bit high or a little bit hot, wide receivers have oftentimes tipped it up in the air as they did right there. Carlos Polk, who was injured, a couple of plays ago, as his shoulder pads off. And is heading to the locker room for Nebraska. He's a backup linebacker. Frost on first down. Keeps and gets drilled right in the line of scrimmage. What a first half Raynock Thompson is having. Let's get more on the condition of Carlos Polk from Michelle Tafoya. Well, Sean, they took him to the sidelines, as you saw, and he was laying flat the entire time. They think he may have broken his right collarbone, so they're taking him back for x-rays, and we'll have more after that. Back to you. Second and 10, seven nothing Nebraska. They capitalized on the first turnover by Tennessee, a fumble, 178 yards for a score. Now the interception there at the 26, Newcomb in trouble behind the line and thrown for a loss by Jonathan Brown. John. Antron Peebles heading to the dressing room for Tennessee with his right shoe off. 
Jonathan Brown, the left defensive end for Tennessee, plays the reverse play perfectly. It's a little counter play to number 12, Bobby Newcomb, the fastest player at Nebraska. But Jonathan Brown did exactly what his coaches told him to do, play the reverse. Quarterback draw, Frost. Trying to get outside. Two flags thrown at the feet of offensive linemen. Raynock Thompson and Terry Fair made the tackle. And it's against Nebraska. Play would be short of a first down, and it would be fourth down at the 22. Certainly a makeable field goal distance for Chris Brown, one of the best kickers in the country. Tennessee will have to take the penalty, back him up, and mm -hmm. give him another down, but certainly put him out of a field goal range, or at least in more difficult range. On the offense, 10 yards, spot of the foul, repeat third down. Let's get more on the Tennessee injury situation from Ed Cunningham. Hey, Sean, the running back, Jamal Lewis, has a slight sprain in his left ankle. He's going to be able to go back in the game, hopefully run it out. Looks a little bit gimpy on the sidelines. The news is not so good for tight end Antron Peebles. They've taken him in for x-rays. Right now, it's a severely sprained right ankle. He will not return unless something, a miracle, happens before now and the next time they go on offense. Nebraska back at the 39-yard line. Frost setting up a screen to Green. Leonard Little pulls him down from behind. Saw the great speed of Little, who played most of his career, lined up outside as a pass rusher. This year he's made the transition to middle linebacker. And no matter where you put him, he's a terrific player. Now Leonard Little playing in the middle here, runs underneath the block. He's man-to-man -man on the tailback. They tried to block him. He ran underneath the block. He used that athleticism of his to track down Amon Green on the screen. Couldn't be played any better by a guy playing man-to-man -man coverage. Jesse Cush, son of a former Husker. His father, Bill, was a defensive back on their 70 and 71 national championship teams. Jesse hangs it up high. Oh, another fumble! And a touchdown for Nebraska! Lance Brown ran it in, but it was a muff punt, so the ball will come back to the 15-yard line. But it's another key mistake by Tennessee. It'll be first and 10 at the 15-yard line. Terry Fair could not handle the punt. Sean... Right before he dropped this punt, I was about to say what a terrific stop by the Tennessee defense. What a job they did on defense. But the muff punt obviously brings them back into a very difficult position, but they're going to have to rally here. they got to go right back in and say, hey, guys, whatever we do, we can't give up a touchdown. Tighten it down and let's play defense and just suck it up and go. You wonder if Homer will continue with Fair as the punt returner. He's had a tough time hanging on lately. Makaveka breaks tackles. He's inside the 10. Down to the eight-yard line. It'll be second down. Jonathan Brown and Gerald Griffin made the tackle. Tennessee fortunate now to just be down seven to nothing with three turnovers, but it could be 14 shortly. Well, you make a good point about Terry Fair. He had a couple fumbles on punt returns in the SEC championship game, and tonight the win's a factor. There's no question. When that ball gets up there, it's difficult to catch and hard to handle. I think you'll see punt catchers on both sides have some difficulty. Problems with personnel and a flag thrown against Nebraska. Magavica was trying to run off. They had too many men on the field. Huskers were trying to get a timeout, but instead their flag for the illegal substitution. Confusion. He wanted the timeout, but the flag had been thrown. Well, the ball's back at the 13, where it'll be second down and eight. Magavica still out of the game. The fullback is Billy Legate. Cross. Pitches to Green. Green dragged down at the 10-yard line by Torrey Noel. They've done a good job bottling up Green, who's rushed for at least 100 yards in each of the last 11 games. The only game this season in which he failed to reach 100 was the opener against Akron, and he had 99 in that one. Well, so far that Tennessee defense is utilizing what they have 
the most of, and that's that speed and athleticism. They're able to run laterally down with that option play and chase it down. Green second in the nation in rushing this year behind Ricky Williams. Cross pitches. Here's Shevin Wiggins again inside the 10. Touchdown! This is the option play that Nebraska ran at the other end of the field that came up just short of the touchdown. Frost comes, fakes to the fullback, comes outside, and now all of a sudden finds Shevin Wiggins, his wingman, pitches the ball. Tennessee doesn't have enough support in the secondary. He goes into the end zone clean. Chris Brown, still perfect this year in PAT, 64 for 64. Wiggins the touchdown. Philip Fulmer knows his team cannot keep turning the ball over. cars are created. Today's new Intrepid is the world's first car designed, assembled, and proven on computers, enabling a degree of precision never before possible. Welcome to the world of the new Dodge Intrepid. We're changing everything again. From the moment you draw your first breath, you are different. Unique in look and personality. Footprints and DNA. And no one understands that more than the men and women of Fidelity. Who work with 12 million investors. No two of whom are alike. How you work with us is your choice. Because it's your money. And helping you make the most of it is what makes Fidelity different. A punt by Terry Fair gave Nebraska outstanding field position. It led to the second score of the night for the Huskers, Sean McDonough and Terry Donahue. They were able to overcome the turnover problems against Auburn in the SEC championship game where the balls, but they're playing a tougher team. Well, it's going to be much more difficult for Tennessee to overcome those mistakes tonight. Already three turnovers and 14 points off two of the turnovers. And if they continue to do that, it's going to be a long night for Tennessee. Chris Brown to kick off again. Bounces it. The short kick taken by Brian Darden, the backup running back. And quality field position for the Volunteers as Darden brought it out to the 38-yard line. Tomorrow, the legend rides again. The Magnificent Seven, the greatest Western of all time, is now a series. Don't miss the exciting two-hour premiere tomorrow, right here on CBS. 14-0 Nebraska. Born Huskers hoping for a convincing victory to sway voters. Perhaps earn at least a share of the national championship. Voters have been flip-flopping all year. Jamal Lewis back in the game. Two hands around the ball as he dove to the 43-yard line where he was chopped down by Mike Brown. You know, it's funny about turnovers. When we, we talk about turnovers, Tennessee, nine turnovers in the last six quarters. Sometimes 
they just come. You, you coach the same, you emphasize the same fundamentals, you talk to your players about them, but sometimes they just occur. In this particular turnover, the ball needed to be in the outside arm for sure. Maybe it could have been avoided. On second and five, Manning. Flag thrown as Marcus Nash has a first down at the play stands. Erwin Sweeney made the tackle at the 47 of Nebraska. The flag thrown in the secondary. There's a penalty flag on the play. Holding against Nebraska. That will likely be refused. Result of the play, a 10-yard gain and a first down. There's Grant Wistrom, including a brilliant career at Nebraska. For the second year in a row, he's a first-team All-American in football. He's also a first-team academic All-American. Kelly's decline. First down. For the second straight year, the only other Nebraska player to have that Double-double. Dave Remington. Grant Wistrom is a pre-pharmacy major. Very difficult major. He carries a 3.43 grade point average. Well, he was a Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year in 96 and 97. Manning. Take the draw. Throws. Nice catch. His receiver helped him there. Jermaine Copeland, who had the costly deflection that led to the interception earlier. Made a nice sliding catch at the 34-yard line. 13 more for the balls and a first down. Well, Copeland is in the inside slot position. He's just going to run down the field. If you're a Tennessee fan, the thing that you have to be encouraged about is there are some holes in this Nebraska defense, both throwing and running. What you're discouraged about is you got to hang on to the football if you're going to take advantage of those holes. Jamal Lewis, the lone back. Marcus Nash, the motion man, lobbed out to Lewis. And he bounced out of bounds after a short game. Tony Ortiz put the hit on Lewis. Ortiz from Waterbury, Connecticut. Nebraska has players in the program from 26 different states. Ortiz, a state champion in track while he was at Crosby High School in Waterbury, won the 100 meters in Connecticut, the 110 meter hurdles. Nebraska has a lot of former track athletes on this team. In the early 1990s, Tom Osborne changed his philosophy and went to recruiting more speed, and they have plenty of speed on this squad. Lewis down to the 30 yard line. Grant Wistrom and Jay Foreman combined on the stop. Foreman, the son of the former great Minnesota Viking, Chuck Foreman. He switched numbers this year to wear the number worn by his dad. Grant Wistrom here, just on a little stunt to the inside, played it very well. He has a school record, 58 and a half tackles for losses throughout his career at Nebraska. Big third down, six yards to go for a volunteer first down. Tennessee trails 14 to nothing. Manning throws short of a first down. We'll see where the forward progress is spotted. Mike Brown put the hit on Jermaine Copeland. Looks like the ball will be just inside the 27, meaning they're about two full yards short of the first down, so Philip Fulmer sends on the field goal unit. Peyton Manning had to get rid of that ball a little quicker than he wanted to. There was pressure from Nebraska. He had to unload it. I know he's frustrated about that because he knows how critical that first down was. Jeff Hall, the junior from Winchester, Tennessee, will try a 44-yard field goal. Vincent Scott is the holder. That is right down the middle, and Tennessee is on the board with 8.28 remaining in the first half. Jeff Hall, Tennessee's fourth all-time leading scorer, gives the ball their first points tonight. I believe that if you really go out and do exactly what you want to do, you find happiness. If you can do what you love, that's incredible. Anybody that says that one person can't make a difference is wrong.
Today, we have more computing power than the entire industry had when we designed the first Dodge Intrepid. We have the power to digitally blueprint, assemble, and test a car to make sure things fit right and work well. To make a quieter, roomier, quicker car. We have the power to change. The new Dodge Intrepid. We're changing everything again. When one is competing for the eye of the judges, one must keep a firm leash on odor and perspiration. Thus, right guard, clear stick or clear gel. Powerful protection that glides on clear to make sure odor and wetness obey. Okay, boys, we're on. Blue, 22. 64. 38. Hut, hut, hut. Yield. Right guard, clear stick or clear gel. Anything less will be uncivilized. CBS Sports presentation of the FedEx Orange Bowl is sponsored by Fast Reliable FedEx. It's the way the world works. The new Dodge. Right guard clear stick and clear gel. And by Microsoft. Tennessee on the board. It's 14 to 3. Here's Ed Cunningham. Sean Payton Manning came to the sidelines, was not real happy that they didn't go for it on fourth, but then he immediately came over to the office and he said, guys, even though we didn't go for it on fourth, it's our job to get first downs. Don't put it on the coaches to make that decision. Payton looked sharp tonight at 11 of 14 for 70 yards, and he had the one ball deflect off the hands of Copeland that could have been caught. Shevin Wiggins waiting for the kickoff. And Sean Payton Manning responsible for 75% of the Tennessee offensive production this year certainly is on target tonight. Jeff Hall to kick off. Merrill Griffin had to hold the ball. Shevin Wiggins has a seam. Spins out across the 30 and goes down at the 34-yard line. Nice return by the junior from Paul Meadow, Florida, back in his home state. He's out of Manatee High School, the same school that sent Tommy Frazier to Nebraska. Turnovers, the story early. Tennessee has turned it over three times. Nebraska capitalized on two of them for 14 points. Well, and the other statistic right here, if you look at rush yards, Tennessee 49, Nebraska only 35. From the 34, Frost hands it off. Green. Tackled by Raynott Thompson. He managed to break through the tackle for an extra couple of yards. Out to the 41-yard line. Thompson limping a bit after making the tackle. He had a bruised kidney earlier in the season that caused him to miss their big win at UCLA out in Los Angeles. John Joel McAvick and number 45, the fullback. When he's in the game, Nebraska's a different offensive team than when he's on the sideline. He's in the game now, blocking for Green, who squirts across the 45 with a first down for the Cornhuskers. And Corey Gaines made the tackle. 7.40 left in the first half. Nebraska leads by 11. Come on, Tennessee. All right, Tennessee, let's go. Come on, Tennessee. Okay. It's about time for a little play-action pass by Dr. Tom Osborne. This is where he likes to pound you, pound you, and all of a sudden make something look like a run and go up top on you. The option, Frost keeps. Gain of three to the 49. Darwin Walker at the bottom of the pile for Tennessee. Tennessee tonight on defense is going to try to read the path of the fullback to determine whether it's option or power football. That particular time, McAvicka showed him a clear-cut path to the option. As a result, the linebackers were able to flow and get into that play. Frost has two wide receivers to the right. He keeps and gets across midfield. Run down again by Darwin Walker, backup tackle. Corey Gaines also in on the play. 
Boy, Sean, Darwin Walker made a great defensive football play from the inside position. He kept his pads perfect. He went down the line of scrimmage, and he ran like a linebacker to that play. It was impressive. He's a big, strong man, strongest man of the team. Bench 515 pounds in the spring. Well, you could do that, couldn't you? You or me, we could get that the 15 up. part, anyway. Big third down and five. Cross. And spinning into difficulty and then escapes. Now he throws for a first down. Sheldon Jackson. Down to the 34-yard line. 14 yards on the game. Al Wilson made the stop. It was Darwin Walker who put the pressure on Frost, and if you let him escape, you're going to pay the price. Well, I mentioned that play-action passing. That's exactly what this was. Coach Osborne came back with a play-action pass. Darwin Walker with tremendous pressure, but great players make big plays, and that's what Scott Frost did. He got off the hook and found an open receiver for the first down. Just inside the 35. Frost down the middle. Newcomb dropped the ball. And he caught it. It in all likelihood would have been six points. He was behind Torrey Noel, and the pass hit him in stride. But Newcomb could not squeeze it. Bobby Newcomb came off a fake of the option and ran right down the field working on Noel. The ball is just maybe an inch or two long, but certainly should have been caught, or if Bobby Newcomb did anything, maybe lay out for that ball, give himself those extra inches to come up with that reception. Second and 10. Frost keeps, and he's run down from behind. Jared Hayden, the backup linebacker, showing his speed. Frost can run, and Hayden gain ground coming from behind. Well, the Tennessee defense, all 11 players on the field can run. Hayden is the right side linebacker. He comes underneath to block number 48 and then races, lays it out to get Scott Frost by the ankles. Another third down and 10. Tennessee has the speed defensively to counter this offense. Frost throwing on the run and it is incomplete. It's short hop. Can he cheat him? with Gerald Griffin in coverage. So now a decision for Tom Osborne. It would be a long field goal, better than 50 yards, into the win. And as a result, he'll put the punting unit on. Jesse Cush. And it is Terry Fair back deep for Philip Fulmer. But despite his problems catching punts tonight and in the SEC championship game, he's back there. Might not have to worry about that one. It's a little long. Landed in the middle of the end zone, a touchback. 36-yard punt with a net of just 16. Tennessee gets the ball back down by 11 in a moment. The new Dodge wanted to take the sport utility concept to a higher level. Enter the new Durango. It's best in class power, cargo space, and seating for up to eight raise the bar considerably. As to its strongest in class frame and its stable, longer, wider stance. Dodge Durango, a higher form of sport utility from top to bottom. Durango, new ground for the new Dodge. How fast do I really have to be going before I get a ticket? The law is the law. What is it, uh, five, ten miles over? <laughs> huh. Deli style legs. Ooh. <laughs> well, it's a guessing game out there, Mike. No, let me show you something. 72? Yep. Let me see that. 90. Hey, you're fast. Put crunch in your lunch. New Lay's Deli style. Go where you wanna go Find the road you've never taken this is the tire that changed driving forever. The all-season Goodyear AquaTread with the advanced deep groove aqua channel that sweeps water away for serious traction in the wet, especially in braking. Goodyear AquaTread. Serious freedom. Goodyear, Goodyear. This is the 
great American race. Four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. The Daytona 500 is on CBS. Monday on CBS, kick off the new year with a night of great television. The fun starts with Cosby, then it's the show critics are raving about. Everybody loves Raymond, followed by Bob Newhart and Judd Hirsch and George and Leo. Then say hello to the new Monday comedy, Style and Substance, starring Terry Donahue. No, actually starring Gene Smart. Yeah. Finally, television's most important new drama, Brooklyn South, returns with an episode you cannot miss all Monday night right here on CBS. Tonight, it's the FedEx Orange Bowl on CBS. Final game for Peyton Manning. As quarterback at the University of Tennessee, Lewis up the middle. That's five. Steve Warren, a backup defensive tackle with help from Jay Foreman on the stop for Nebraska. Tennessee, when you get five yards on first and ten against the Nebraska defense, it means your offensive line is starting to control the line of scrimmage. And it's not an easy defense to control. They have great pass rushers, a lot of mobility and athleticism, but Tennessee can move the ball. They're moving against the fifth best defense in the nation in total defense. Manning in the flat, and it's incomplete. Low ball, looking for Andy McCullough. I think the other good news for Tennessee, you'd never know Peyton Manning had a bad knee. The way he has thrown the ball tonight, the way he's been taking his drops. Here's what we were talking about, about the Nebraska defense, the black shirts, fifth in total defense, third against the run, 12th in scoring. I think when you compare them to Michigan, most would say Michigan has the better defense, but many would make the argument Nebraska has a much better offense. Nebraska averaged 47 points per game. Michigan never scored more than 38 in a single game. Manning under pressure, has a man in the flat and went through the hands of Lewis. A little bit high. Warren was putting the heat on Manning. And this time it is three downs and a punt for the Volunteers. Well, Steve Warren, the nose guard, came up the middle of the Tennessee offensive line this time, working against Trey Teague, number 70. It's one of the first times tonight that Manning hasn't been able to set his feet and throw properly. Chris Hogue having a career night. Running with the wind this time. He's picked two beauties against the wind, and here's another cannon shot. Newcomb back to the 20. And he stopped at the 31-yard line. A 55-yard punt by Hogue and an 11-yard return. Chris Hogue, the senior from Memphis, an early star for the ball. So Nick Derby CQ is working for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm doing just fine, Cold Turkey. Oh, well, that's great. Oh, yeah. Hey, Jack. Yeah. Take a break. Oh, nice one. Come on, you know we quit for New Year's. Oh, wait. I'm coming. Jack, no. Just one cigarette. No. Why are you so calm? Because I got help. CQ, a 24-hour stream of medicine that's always with you, even when you first wake up. Helps calm the cravings, my friend. All right. Nicoderm CQ, the power to calm, the power to comfort, the power to help you quit. Reggie! Did you eat your chunky soup? How did you get down here? <laughs> Ma? Did you eat your chunky soup? Yeah, Ma. Chunky beef with country vegetables. With more beef than any other soup. Mmm, lean beef, potatoes, vegetables. Chucky always hits the spot. Where'd you get that outfit? Can't talk, gotta go. Just want to make sure you're eating good. That's my mom. Oh, yeah? Which one? Campbell's Chunky Soup. It's loaded with beef. Computers, they're like a tutor. They help you learn. Guess what I want to look up today? Spiders. Do you like spiders? We looked in ancient Egypt and their cities. I play chess. Cool, I found a shark. That's gotta hurt. He's cool and he's smart. Now it's time to check the results from the CBS Sports Line All-Time Greats poll. The fans chose college football's all-time greatest team, and the results were overwhelming. The 1995 Nebraska team, which dismantled Florida in the Fiesta Bowl, received 40% of the votes among 16 choices. Amon Green slipped down as he tried to cut up field. Al Wilson was coming quickly for Tennessee. And Green's down with a loss of two back to the 29. 
where Al Wilson playing the inside linebacker position, he forced the sweep like you want your linebacker to force it. He ran right downhill at it, and Amon Green just flat ducked to keep from getting deheaded by him. Remember what we told you about Nebraska. Not only leading the nation in rushing this season, but they averaged 60 yards per game more than any other team in the nation in rushing. I mean, a tough time tonight against this very quick Tennessee defense. Frost on the run. The receiver upended. Newcomb draws the flag. He collided with Torrey Noel. And the officials threw the flag of the 45-yard line. Well, it's a good call by the official. One thing you can't, one thing you can't do when you play pass defense is put your hands on someone. Torrey Noel working against Bobby Newcomb right in the slot. When Newcomb breaks outside, Noel takes him by the shirt and tried to hold him. Mm -hmm. Scott Frost saw it. He won the, he, he saw it. Once he saw the flag, he was okay. Phillip didn't see it. I think maybe Full, Phil Fulmer has an argument that it could have been defensive holding. Frost, I think, still had the ball when the contact was made. Newcomb took a couple steps and then fell down. Over the five-yard penalty instead of the walk-off out to the spot of the 44. Green up the middle. Now a flag thrown where you would expect offensive holding. Guarantee this is going back another 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Holding is the call. Interesting, the results of the all-time greats poll. The 95 Nebraska team. We asked Tom Osborne some of the highlights of his career. Memorable games or seasons. He said 78 when he beat Oklahoma for the first time. will be first down. That was the knock on him early in his career. He couldn't win the big one. He finally beat Oklahoma. He mentioned other teams along the way. But the 95 team, he said, the 95 team I enjoyed on the field. Right. And he said it was probably his best team. But he did make the distinction on the field. Those off the field problems were a distraction, and obviously they still weigh. He clearly made that distinction in the conversation with him. And you do as a coach. It affects you. Shovel pass to Green. Green trying to turn the corner. He does. I'm on Green back into Tennessee territory. First down and much more. All the way to the 36 of the ball. Darwin Walker and Raynock Thompson brought down Green after a gain of 29. This is a little shovel pass that Nebraska runs. It's almost like an inverted option play. Instead of the back being on the upfield of the quarterback, it's underneath. And the quarterback, Frost, just shovels it to Amon Green. He gets a great block by Bobby Newcomb, number 12, the wide receiver. And Amon Green is a very powerful back, and he'll punish you rather than run out of bounds. He'll run right through you. How about Darwin Walker downfield again to catch up with Green? Sean, one thing about Amon Green, he averages 172 yards when he's playing against ranked teams, when he generally averages about 156 yards a game, so the guy gets up for big, important games. Raynock Thompson left earlier in the game with a sprained ankle and returned, but looks a bit more serious this time around, and he has been a major factor on defense to this point for Tennessee. First and ten. Nebraska at the Tennessee 36. Green touch back. Green delivering a ball, and he got knocked down by Leonard Little. Terry Fair had the first hit low. And Green just smiled at Little, was barking a bit in the face of Amon after the hit. Watch the out watch the out Outland trophy winner. Some hitting going on down there, Sean. And number 67, Aaron Taylor, the Outland Trophy winner, the left guard, made a great block to open up that cutback lane for Green. Second and short. Two yards to go for Nebraska first down. Green to the 26. It will be close. Bill Duff and Anthony Hampton combining on the stop. Hampton wears number 85. He came in to replace Thompson, who left two plays ago. Sean, if you're playing defense right now at Tennessee, you've got to be talking about, listen, fellas, 
let's make sure we only give up a field goal here. Let's not go in there 21 to 3 at halftime. If we go in at 17 3, we're two touchdowns down with Peyton Manning, some of our receivers, we can get right back into this game. Time out for a measurement. It is a first down. Our overhead shots are courtesy of the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes. It was 1960 when the Goodyear Blimps first began live sports coverage right here in South Florida at the Orange Bowl. Back in those days, the game was played at the Orange Bowl Stadium. Moved a little bit north. This beautiful new facility, Pro Player Stadium. Jay Sims now in as the eye back for the Huskers. Frost pitches to Sims. And he's out of bounds. Perhaps a gain of one for the oldest player in the game tonight. Jay Sims, 26 years old. He spent a couple of years working after high school before he came to the University of Nebraska as a walk-on. He's now on scholarship. Graduated in December with a degree in communications. John, in the second quarter here, the Nebraska offensive line is beginning to assert itself. It's starting to come off the ball better than they did earlier in the game. They have better field position, playing with more confidence. Sims still the eye back, the give to Makovica. Short game, Al Wilson wrapped him up. Makovica, Green, and Frost, the starting backfield, have combined this season for 3,657 yards rushing and 50 touchdowns. Well, and when you run behind this big offensive line, number 67, the left guard right there, Aaron Taylor, he just took the nose guard, knocked him five yards off the ball with the center, and they create a little void in that defense. But Tennessee's quick enough to fill it up with some of the defender. And it's still Sims, the eye back. They hand it off to Wiggins, and he is close to a first down. Seven Wiggins had just one rush all season prior to tonight. He's handled it on a couple of occasions tonight, including the 10-yard run for the second Nebraska touchdown. I think Nebraska will go for this. They run 68 running plays per game on average. Out back to the Orange Bowl in a moment. Actually, the timeout now is for the measurement, and they are about a foot short. One minute left in the first half. 14 to 3, Nebraska. We'll see what Tom Osborne does. John, you're the best running team in America. Yeah, you average 68 rushes per game. You're going to go ahead and run this and not even think twice about it, whether you make it or not. Almost a guaranteed field goal for Brown is made 16 in a row, but the first down is almost an automatic, as Terry suggests. They're in the prowess on the ground by Nebraska, and was Frost on the keeper. First and 10 at the 14-yard line, and the time is becoming a factor. 55 seconds left. Look at the push by this big offensive line. They just move the line of scrimmage. They'll get their pads underneath. Frost easily makes the first down behind Aaron Taylor, the left guard. Now this formation, all the backs lined up in the eye. This is a stack eye. And it's Frost. He ran into trouble and put it on the ground. And it is still free. And Tennessee has recovered. First turnover of the night by Nebraska, and a big one. Jonathan Brown came up with the ball after Terry Fair and Anthony Hampton combined to level Scott Frost and knock the ball loose. Well, Scott Frost on the option just gets stripped. It's just a great play by Terry Fay. Finally, a turnover goes in favor of Coach Fulmer. He's more than a little pumped up. The new Dodge Durango is like no sport utility you've ever seen. 
Say, for instance, you live in a neighborhood with a rhino problem. In a Durango, you could outrun him with the most powerful engine offered in the class. Or you could move him with its best-in-class towing capacity. Or if push really came to shove, Durango's superior horn would prevail. Durango, new ground for the new Dodge. And let's start with the brewmaster for just a moment. The brewmaster is the chef. And that is the key brewmaster role, to understand the blending of his or her ingredients. Not only he or she tastes the beer every day, there's another person who tastes the beer every day, and that is me. The ability to have hands-on brewmasters working with the finest ingredients gives you Budweiser. Green Bay is a small town. When someone leaves here, it means something. It means the entire community has been diminished. It means an acquaintance, a neighbor, a friend has left your life forever. Most importantly, it means there's now some extra seats available. For Sunday's game. Well, it's awfully tough to get tickets from the Super Bowl champs. It's absolutely impossible with American Express. So bring your Visa card. Go Packer, the official card of the NFL. Hi, Jim Nance here at our anchor position at the FedEx Orange Bowl. Coming up on the college football today, Ford Division Halftime Report. Greg and Lou will join me for their first half analysis. And then it's the FedEx Orange Bowl Spectacular Halftime Show. Colors of the Tropics featuring John Sakata. That's at halftime. Now back to the game. And that is a spectacular, annually the best halftime show of all the bowl games. Lewis up through a big hole. Look at him power his way across the 40. And now Tennessee will use a timeout, a running play to see if they could get something to get some breathing room and then perhaps take a chance. And that's what they'll do now. One timeout left for the Volunteers, 26 seconds left in the half. They're out at the 42. When you're backed up like Tennessee was, whatever you do, you don't want to turn the ball over. It's a great lead back block by the fullback, Sean Bryson and Jamal Lewis, showing why he is such a strong runner as a freshman tailback. This guy has powerful legs. He drags Nebraska tacklers with him. And he hasn't had a bad first half except for that one fumble that occurred to him early in the game. If he can get on track, it'll open up Tennessee's game in the second half. He was compared with Jamal Lewis coming out of high school to Herschel Walker, both from Georgia. Jamal's from Atlanta. I think this Bill season... Lewis, uh, the second highest freshman rushing total in the history of the Southeastern Conference. Only Herschel Walker rushed for more yards in his freshman season in the SEC. I think Tennessee may take a shot down the field with 26 seconds left in the half here. Why not? Now that they're at the 42. Manning hit as he throws. That might be a compelling argument. Why not? Grant Wistrom finally got to Peyton Manning. No problems with the knees. Manning gets back up with 23 seconds left in the half, second and 10. Well, and it's surprising because Tennessee's line has done a reasonable job tonight, giving Peyton Manning plenty of time. But on this particular play, Grant Wistrom coming on an inside stunt puts tremendous pressure on Peyton. And like you say, you'll worry about that knee as the game goes on. Three straight incompletions thrown by Manning. Second and 10. Peter got through, but the pass is caught by Marcus Nash. Nash hit hard, but he held on at the 40. And Tennessee looking to the sideline to see if the last timeout will be used. Tony Ortiz made that hard hit on Nash. They have one timeout left. And I don't think Peyton wanted it called. I, I, but it was. You can see him hollering at his teammates. Yeah, you really needed to save that timeout for your field goal team, Sean. Peyton Manning easily could have gotten up down the ball. He had more downs than time left. He had four downs because it was a first down. He could have used the down, saved the timeout for the field goal team. Peyton Manning under real pressure there by Jason now, Peter, number 55. He drove Manning a long way back. After that ball had been thrown to get him on the ground, Scott Frost told us last season he had the bursa sack injury to the knee. It got puffy just as Manning's did. Frost had his drained 19 times. 
He said in games it didn't bother him until he was hit and that knee got driven down into the ground and all of a sudden it would puff back up. I wonder if Scott has said that to his uh, defensive teammates. <laughs> he made sure. a real effort to drive Peyton down into the ground that time. But you know the Nebraska players talk freely about wanting Peyton Manning to play in this game. They felt like their only chance for a national championship was to beat Tennessee with Peyton Manning, not without him. 15 seconds left and no timeouts. When they go over the middle, they'd have to get up very quickly to spike. Get out of bounds. Oh, he stayed in bounds and lunges for a first down. The one break for Tennessee could be that it's close to a first down. They should at least stop the clock for a measurement here. The officials conferring and the half ends. Oh, I think that's a very bad piece of officiating there. They otherwise had a good half, but that was right at the 30-yard line. And very close to a first down. But well, it took the referee, Terry McCauley, a long time to get in position to see. He tried to stop the clock just as the half end, waving his arms over his head. Well, the key is Jermaine Copeland, Sean, has to get the ball mm -hmm. out of bounds. The, the yardage is nowhere near is as important as the time. Get the ball out of bounds so your coaches and players can have one more shot at a field goal or at the touchdown. No question about that. Let's go to Michelle Tafoya. All right, with Tom Osborne, well, turnovers have certainly been key. Three by the balls have led to 14 points for you, but one there before the half really changed the momentum a bit. Yeah, that was a big play because it looked like we, we could really get up on them pretty good there. But, uh, you know, it's been a while since each team's played. It's been three, four weeks, and sometimes you see that. But uh, hopefully we can take better care of it in the second half. What's been the difference between your offense being able to drive and not being able to drive? Well, I think we threw the ball a few times there and got them off our backs, and that helped a little bit. So we're going to have to mix it up. Coach, good luck. Okay, thanks, Michelle. Peyton Manning frustrated late in the half. They could not get the spike to stop the clock. At the end of the first half, the score, Nebraska 14 and Tennessee 3. Yesterday, it was just an idea, a notion, a whim. A few hours ago, it was a yearning, a dream. And then, as if by magic, overnight it all came to be. Wishes crossed the sea, ideas took flight, and the yearnings and cravings in all four corners of the earth were satisfied. It wasn't always this way, but with FedEx, it's the way the world works. The Olympic Winter Games return to CBS. Share a moment with the world. Listen up. I have been to the edge and back, and I will tell you what I've learned. What I have learned is you don't need outer crust. Introducing the Edge Pizza from Pizza Hut, a new pizza with no outer crust, so the toppings go right to the edge. I have been to the edge and back! Join me. 16 pieces of pure pulchritudinous toppings. Have you been to the edge? Pizza Hut salutes Coach Tom Osborne for his years of service. Best wishes from Nebraska Pizza Hut restaurants and delivery units. You gotta surround yourself with talented people, stay focused, and work hard. Norwest salutes Tom Osborne's 25 years of winning with Tom's Loan Challenge. Take the challenge by applying for any new Norwest loan of $5,000 or more. If you qualify, you'll get a free commemorative jacket or flag. It's nice to know Norwest is as proud as I am to be part of Nebraska. Nebraska can make all the winners. Now you tell me that you got the only nonstop to L.A. You didn't ask? And now to D.C. Milwaukee, Kansas City. I thought you knew about Midwest Express. Now stop to Newark. I haven't really already booked my flight. Did I mention the great connections? Oh, yeah. Look at those wide leather seats. A tough break. This is food. I'll buy you an ice cream. Totally unnecessary. Midwest Express. Serving 31 cities from Omaha. For competitive coach or discounted fares, the best care in the air. John Anderson, only on Channel 3. The College Football Today Ford Division Halftime Report is sponsored by Ford Division. And welcome to the College Football Today Ford Division Halftime Report. Our score at halftime is Nebraska leading this one 
14 to 3. Jim Nance, along with the birthday boy, Craig Jays. Happy birthday. Thank you very gotcha. much. Good to be with you. The coach, Lou Holtz. A rather bizarre ending to the first half. I thought Nebraska might go in for the back-breaking touchdown, then the turnover. Then I thought Copeland might have gotten out of bounds to give him a chan chance to move with an eight. What did you think well, here, Lou? You just have to make a decision. You know, it's easy for us to sit here and say, hey, he could have gotten out of bounds. But they had run out of timeout, and here he cut back in. He did get the first down, and consequently they lost an opportunity to score. What were some of your thoughts on the first half? Well, it's a tight game. You're going to halftime, and you're happy to regardless of which side you're on. Number one, Tennessee's offense and defensive line have played well. They've held Nebraska to 69 yards off it. That's surprising. On the other hand, Nebraska say, we can run the ball better, but we got to be pleased with the way our secondary's played and how well Scott Frost has thrown the ball. Yeah, and I, and I tell you what, when you talk about you can play a little bit better, I guarantee you right now Nebraska's in there trying to figure out what's going on running the football because the 69 yards is not what they usually are getting on the ground. But for Tennessee, these guys have done a great job. You got to understand if you're a tailback at Nebraska, you want to have the cutback ability, but the backside blocking of Nebraska hasn't been there in the first half. Backside, they get in the back of the offensive guard and tackles hip pocket. But here's your running lane back inside here. If that guy's not there, the runner has the ability to cut back. That's why Nebraska is so successful when they do run the ball well. Craig, you were one of the elite few. You were one of the voters in the AP poll. What has Nebraska shown you here in the first half? Enough? No, not enough. Not enough to put them at number one right now. So I'm going to watch the second half. The good thing for Nebraska right now is a, a good Tennessee team showed up and playing this football game. But they are ahead 14 to 3. Tennessee's made some mistakes. They can play much better, but they have to be encouraged. But I want to tell you, Nebraska wears on you. Trust me. They are big, oh, yeah. they're strong, they're physical, and they ain't going to go away. And, and I use ain't for an emphasis, not because of the English <laughs> as language. As you said, they That's only right. have 69 yards rushing. They average yes. 400 a game. That's that right. could really mount in the second half. Coming up, the Orange Bowl spectacular halftime show, Colors of the Tropics, featuring John Cicada, when we return to Miami after this. You don't need binoculars to see why Escort is so popular. It's a value so enticing, it's like getting cake with extra icing. You can get power, lots of power, power galore, to whisk down the windows and unlock the doors, adjust the side mirrors, but wait, there is more. Opt for a remote, AC, a smooth automatic, and a CD player for the music fanatic. And if that's not enough, you can get an anti-theft system to protect this good stuff. The buck starts here for Escort Thrills, somewhat higher, loaded to the gills. Critics call Tomorrow Never Dies the best Bond film ever. A rousing movie that roars from start to finish with a throttle wide open, says Gene Shalit. Cecil and Ebert give it two thumbs up. Tomorrow Never Dies. Rated PG-13. Now playing. Special K and make up for the way you ate over the holidays. Kellogg's Special K. Lose the holiday fat. Every 10 seconds or so, a stop sign goes up somewhere in America. And every 30 seconds, a traffic light goes up. It's as hard on your car as it is on you. It's stop and go. Stop and go. Stop and go drive. Use Pennzoil. Formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, hands oil. The University of Nebraska ranks number one in the nation for graduating academic All Americans in football, women's volleyball, in fact, all sports put together. And our honors program attracts some of the country's highest scoring freshmen in fields like physics, computer science, biology, chemistry, and math. So you have an interesting known value for in. There is no place like Nebraska. It's full court comedy when Team Cosby takes on the women of the WNBA. Now let's see what you got. You got nothing. All new Cosby CBS Monday. Get ready for the Ray Bowl. Verón lines up for the kick. It's into the wind. It's a bit of a drizzle, too. Verón's been battling a hangnail all season all long. All right, all right. Are you ever off? <laughs> it's Catch the comedy of Everybody Loves Raymond, CBS Monday. On behalf of all the employees of Federal Express around the globe who deliver the world on time, welcome to the 1998 FedEx Orange Bowl. FedEx has revolutionized the way the world works through leadership, teamwork, and a commitment to quality. That same spirit of excellence has led Tennessee and Nebraska to tonight's championship game. As FedEx celebrates 25 years of service, 
So does Nebraska head coach Tom Osborne, whose retirement following tonight's game completes one of the most impressive coaching careers of all time. To the players, coaches, and fans of Nebraska and Tennessee, congratulations and best of luck with the rest of the game. Ladies and gentlemen, Bacardi and the Orange Bowl Committee are proud to present the colors of the tropics and special guest star, Miami's own John Cicada.
Football today for Division Halftime Report will continue in a moment. Our competition can't explain why they keep playing follow the leader. But then again, they've been doing it for so long, maybe it's just become habit forming. Ford Taurus. Now that explains everything. Have you driven a Ford lately? Life's a trip, and it takes money to get where you're going. That's what mutual funds are for. At Janus, making money means looking for brakes nobody else saw coming, jumping on, and riding them in. No matter what the market's doing, there are great companies to invest in. Janice finds them. So you can get there. Janice No Load Mutual Funds. Life is about choices. You ask the questions and you listen to the answers. And then you listen to your heart. Four years ago, I chose the University of Tennessee. I wanted a place where I could grow, a place where my best could get better. Last spring, I made another choice. I chose to stay in school because staying was strongest in my heart. Life is about choices. I believe I chose well. 
On the field, sometimes a player tries to mess with me, make me angry. If I let myself be drawn in, it could cost us the game. It's the same on the street, but the risk is greater. If someone tries to draw you into a fight, don't feed into it. Stay in control, talk it out, or walk away. You'll get respect and live to tell about it. So squash the anger. Squash it. Squash it. This message provided by the NCAA. Here in Miami at the FedEx Orange Bowl, Nebraska leads at halftime 14 to 3. And as far as the quarterbacks go in the first half, Peyton Manning, 13 of 19, 96 yards. He was picked off once. Scott Frost was 7 of 10. He's thrown for more yards, uh, Lou. He's thrown for 109 in the first half. Tell me about the first half performance by the quarterbacks. Well, with Scott Frost, he's running play action passes coming off the running game. The running game isn't working as well, but he's doing the things he's done all year. He's given good leadership. He did have one turnover, but he is executing the play action pass well. Yeah, I thought Peyton Manning, I haven't seen him play in person in a while. I'm very impressed with his poise in the pocket. I thought his control of the offense was outstanding. He doesn't have a lot of yards throwing the football just because his guys are getting tackled as soon as they catch the ball. If those receivers will make one break, and go distance, then have some bigger yards. All right, guys, there was a bowl final this afternoon, the Peach Bowl, and for the 14th straight year, the game was decided by seven points or less. Auburn was down 17 to six, entering the final quarter, outscored them 15 to nothing in the final quarter, and the SEC is now five and zero oh in the postseason. And earlier tonight, live on our College Football Today pregame show, the most rewarding pass play of the season, a 10-yard toss, Terry Fletcher, collecting one million dollars. I wanted to work with him and I offered my advice, but he said I didn't throw the ball well enough at Notre Absolute, Dame. Absolutely. He told me, keep Holtz away from me. I don't want I'm him a around passing me. quarterback. I've changed. I saw you teaching him how to, to pitch it through running the no, option. No, not at all. In just 35 days, the Winter Olympics get underway in Nagano, Japan. Stories will unfold. Dreams will be realized against the beauty of Nagano. Many stars will certainly shine. It is a place of mystery and exotic beauty. And a fitting backdrop to the artistry of ladies figure skating, where Michelle Kwan hopes to gracefully ascend to the gold medal stand, but will have to top fellow American and reigning world champion Tara Lipinski. There's one sure way to stir the tranquility of the Nagano landscape. Alberto Tomba, the Italian icon, makes his fourth Olympic appearance. The USA's Peekaboo Street, one silver in Lillehammer. She'll be on the slopes of Hakuba seeking gold. Canadian Elvis Stoiko will try to jump his way out of a talented field in the men's figure skating competition. The drama, the daring, the desire, and the delights of Nagano, Japan. On display, come February. Be sure to join CBS for live coverage of the opening ceremony from Nagano, Japan, Friday, February 6th at 8 Eastern time. All right, let's talk about the second half. I know you've been roaming the sideline a little bit, talking to some of the players, in fact. What have right. you been hearing? Leonard Little came up to me. This guy, I can't say what he said on national television, but he was very upset with his team. He realizes they're doing a great job of shutting down Nebraska. He said, man, we're giving these guys a football game. They're number two in the country. We're better than them. I guarantee you they'll come out with great enthusiasm. Well, as a coach, you look at your seniors in the eye and you say, 30 minutes to play in a lifetime to remember it. I love you. Let's go play our style of football. All right, 30 minutes to go in the careers, the college career of Peyton Manning and the coaching career of Tom Osborne. Second half, the FedEx Orange Bowl is next. Nebraska leads it 14-3. to It's coming up after this message and a word from your local station. The College Football Today Ford Division Halftime Report has been sponsored by Ford Division. Every four years, the mountains come alive and we experience something magical. The world's greatest athletes produce memories that last a lifetime.
And soon a new generation of Olympians will shatter records and scale new heights in pursuit of their dreams. The Olympic Winter Games return to CBS. Meet America's Queen of Style. Where do you keep your melon baller? I don't have one. I guess this is what it would be like if I was forced to cook in a Turkish prison. Style and Substance, series premiere CBS Monday. For college football action, the address is CBS. Welcome home. If you're a corn grower, you've probably heard about Regent. The new low-dose insecticide in one-pass application system that simplifies handling and completely does away with dust. And this, this is what's really amazing. A single at-plant application of Regent controls corn rootworm together with European corn borer. Prior to Regent, the only way to do that was to do this. Regent. From now on, this is how it's done. Anybody got a towel? What makes a house a home? There's no one answer. Home real estate knows homes are as different as the people who live in them. To some, it's a three-bedroom ranch. To others, it's a classic brick tutor. But it's really special moments. First steps, family traditions, memories to last a lifetime. And to Husker fans, it's 42 consecutive wins in the big house in Lincoln. Woohoo! Go Huskers! Looking to buy, sell, build, or relocate? Talk to home real estate. But wait until after the game. We'll understand. Haven't I seen you somewhere before? Yes, that's why I don't go there anymore. In the spirit of great comebacks, McDonald's presents the McRib Sandwich. It's back for a limited time and just as good as you remember. Get it in an extra value meal with a large order of fries and a medium Coke for $3.29. Say the word and we'll supersize it for free. Did somebody say McDonald's? Come back in the morning for a McDonald's new Western Omelette McMuffin extra value meal. With hash browns and small coffee for only $1.99. Only at McDonald's. Chief Meteorologist Craig Copleen, only on Channel 3. Ready for the start of the second half. Number two, Nebraska with an 11-point lead over number three, Tennessee. And Nebraska will get the ball first in the second half. Joe Walker among the men back deep for the Cornhuskers. Kevin Wiggins standing alongside. Here's Jeff Hall with the kickoff. And a good boot with the wind. And it'll be down to the back of the end zone by Wiggins, Sean McDonough, and Terry Donahue. Obviously, the three turnovers, Terry, very costly to Tennessee in the first half. But the good news for them, Nebraska had just 69 yards rushing, and Peyton Manning was not sacked. Well, the Tennessee offensive line has certainly played better than anticipated. Uh, Tennessee's throwing the ball very quickly, though, and they only have 100 yards in total passing yardage. But the shocking thing is Tennessee has rushed for as many yards, more yards. They've rushed for 80. Nebraska only 69. They're the number one rushing team in America. Nebraska on the ground on the first play of the second half, and Amon Green went out across the 25. Sean, during the last two years that I've watched Tennessee, I've never seen them play as good on defense as they're playing tonight. They are really doing an excellent job against this Nebraska offensive football team. Fewest yards rushing Nebraska has had in one game this season is 335. No opponent has held them under 335. It was Texas A&M that held them, quote unquote, to 335 in the Big 12 championship. Cross the late pitch, but right on target. And Amon Green is out of bounds with a first down just across the 30-yard line. Chased out by Gerald Griffin. Here's a look at the first half stats. Three turnovers very costly to Tennessee. It led directly to the 14 Nebraska points. Well, and this is critical right there. And remember, Scott Frost has carried the ball eight times in the first half for a point four yard average. He's under a yard per carry, which is just a tremendous job by that defense. On first and ten, Green cuts back and lunges forward off the hit of Corey Gaines. The quarterback comparison, both with an impressive percentage, but as Terry mentioned a moment ago, the yardage totals aren't very high. No, they really aren't. I think Tennessee in this half will try to put the ball down the field a little further now that they believe they can protect. They proved that in the first half, that they can protect Peyton Manning. He's on the target tonight. He's, he's on the money. He looks good to me. Uh, five or six hours a day in the training room for Peyton Manning have certainly paid off. His knee has held up well. Makavica rumbling into the secondary. Terry Fair trying to collar him, and finally he did at the 41-yard line of Tennessee. 24-yard gain for Joel Makavica, the junior from Brainerd, Nebraska. Joel Makavica reminds 
the Nebraska people of Rathburn, the great, the great fullback who played at Nebraska, then the 49ers. It's just a little role play to the fullback. He finds the seam behind the big offensive line, breaks a tackle, spins out, and then drags Tennessee for the first down. This is a walk-on, a former walk-on, one of the famous Nebraska walk-ons. From a football family, his brother Jeff was Nebraska's starting fullback in 1995. Frost keeps. Raynock Thompson, who's been in and out of the game for the sprained ankle, wrapped up Frost. Scott advanced the ball to the 37-yard line. A gain of four. We mentioned McAvicka from a football family. Not only did his brother Jeff play at Nebraska, but their dad, John, was an NAIA All-American at Kearney State in the late 60s and was inducted into the Nebraska College Football Hall of Fame in the fall of 96. 6.5 yards per rush. Best among all fullbacks in the nation. Boy, and certainly Nebraska's best blocking fullback. He does so many things for Nebraska. Nice block by Billy Legate, who took over from McAvicka at fullback. He cleared a path for Ramon Green. And Corey Gaines and Gerald Griffin had to take him down to the secondary. First down, Nebraska. The Huskers impressively on the move to begin the second half. Watch Billy Legate, the fullback, number 40, Sean. You mentioned his block. He's right here. He's going to isolate on the linebacker for Tennessee. This is why tailbacks can cut flat back. He really makes a tremendous block, which opens that hole. Two minutes into the second half. 14 to 3, Nebraska. One long drive in the first half, a 78-yard touchdown drive. They're marching here. That play goes to the 20 for Amon Green. Leonard Little and Corey Gaines combining to put the stop on Green. It seems to me like Tom Osborne and his coaches went in at halftime and said, hey, fellas, we've never had 69 yards rushing at halftime against anybody. We're going to go back out there and control the line of scrimmage and start to establish a running game. Already... More rushing yards on this drive than they had in either of the first two quarters of the football game. Second down and seven. Out of the shotgun, they love quarterback draw out of the shotgun. And Frost is very close to a first down. Al Wilson and Leonard Little on the stop. Philip Fulmer seen there on the sidelines. Got to be concerned. You know, you go in at halftime, you're in the ball game, you know your team's made some turnovers, some mistakes that has really hurt you in the ball game. You come out, you want to get off to a good start in the second half, and here Nebraska takes the opening kickoff and is really mounting a powerful drive. And I say power because they've kept it on the ground and they're knocking them off the ball right now, something they were unable to do in the first half. It is a first down. And historically, that's been the case. This Nebraska attack wears out the defense. After a while, it's harder and harder to stand up to the pounding of this relentless rushing attack. From the 13, first and 10. Newcomb. Bobby's down at the 5. He lunged ahead to move the ball toward the 4. He came into Nebraska as a quarterback, an outstanding prospect out of Albuquerque, recruited by most of the top programs in the nation. They moved into wingback this season, but Frank Solich will be the new head coach after this game, says he will get a look at Newcomb at quarterback to replace Frost in the spring. Well, and you can certainly understand that, Sean. He's one of the fastest guys on Nebraska's team. Tom Osborne with a little counterplay there to Bobby Newcomb to take advantage of the fast flow of Tennessee's defense. Green following Joel McAvicka's block. Green has the first down. And it'll be first and goal for the Huskers at the two. And this is the last game for Tom Osborne. After 25 years as head coach, there's Frank Solich. 19 years as an assistant to Osborne, former outstanding running back at Nebraska back in the mid-60s. And Solich will take over. Frank Solich actually knew before the season began that this would be Tom Osborne's last year. So Tom told me this was going to be it. But the two of them kept it a secret. 11th play of the drive, and it is stopped at the goal line. Leonard Little put the pop on Amon Green. Tom Osborne has a number of long-time assistants, but no lack of 
Jeff Harmony on the staff. The rest of the staff members knew six years ago when Osborne made Solich the assistant head coach that that really was Tom's way of designating Solich as the man he'd like to see succeed him. Well, and Tom said the timing for him to retire was perfect because he could help influence who his successor would be. The university president and athletic director agreed with the decision. Frost up and over and in for a touchdown. Impressive opening drive, never mind the passes or the play action fakes. Nebraska goes back to its bread and butter. And they made that look easy. Boy, that offensive line has come out in the second half and reestablished the line of scrimmage. Scott Frost in there by at least a yard, a yard and a half behind the big left guard, Aaron Taylor, the, the center, number 59, Josh Heskew. Frost might have been shaken up. He pointed to his left calf. Darwin Walker's going off, grabbing at the back of his neck. Sean, have you noticed how many Tennessee players have left the game already? One of the difficult things when you play Nebraska, they are so physical and so strong and so deep, they begin to just wear you out. Chris Brown on for the extra point. And it is good. 80-yard drive by Nebraska to begin the second half. Do you think you're getting the best shave? Take the Sensor Excel Challenge. We bet you can't find a closer, safer shave than Sensor Excel. No other razor has Sensor Excel soft micro bends for extra protection and self-adjusting blades for extra closeness. Take the Sensor Excel Challenge. Once you experience the safest way to the closest shave, we bet you won't go back. Gillette Sensor XL. Hi, welcome to Saturn. I think I hit a rock. You all right? Yeah, it's pretty big. You know, I don't see any body damage. Yeah, I think about it because it was rolling. It may have been a prairie dog. All right. We'll take a look at the car. Everything checked out with the car. Really? That's weird. Hey, how are you today? <laughs> Pretty good. Is your family? Your yes. car is fine. Really? At Saturn, all our service centers are linked up to a nationwide network of computers that provide us with all kinds of important information. <laughs> it is the greatest western of all time. And on Saturday, the legend rides again. I hear you fellas are headed for a fight. We're bringing back the adventure. Looking for guns to protect an Indian village. The drama. Step aside, lady. We don't hang men around here for no reason. And the heroes in a new television series that's destined to make history again. Double and nothing. The Magnificent Seven. Two-hour series premiere CBS Saturday contains violent scenes. An impressive opening drive begin the second half by Nebraska. And the lead is 21 to 3 for the Cornhuskers. Tennessee about to get the ball for the first time. In the second half, Cedric Wilson took Chris Brown's kickoff at the goal line. Nice moves to get across the 20. And now he powers out to the 27. Nice return by Wilson. Let's get an update on the condition of Scott Frost. Here's Michelle Tafoya. All right, Sean. Well, Scott is uh, suffering cramps in both calves, but more in the left than the right. But he told me he's fine. Quarterback coach Turner Gill came over concerned, asking if they needed ice to rub those calves down. But the training staff said they didn't even need that. Back to you. On that drive, 12 plays, 80 yards, 74 of them on the ground. And the one pass, which the official score deemed the pass, was that shovel pass. They had 74 yards rushing on the opening drive of the half after 69 yards rushing the entire first half. Jamal Lewis out to the 29. 
A gain of two for the freshman. Sean, in visiting with Philip Fulmer this week prior to the game, he said one of the things that we have to do to win this game, we've got to answer when Nebraska scores. Nebraska's really tough when they get ahead by a couple touchdowns because they control the ball on you because they're a ground-oriented game, and so they consequently eat up the clock. Phillip says we've got to come back and answer. This is an important drive. On second and eight, and they show patience with the run, but it yields nothing that time. Mike Rucker and Jason Peter at the bottom of the pile for Nebraska. And it'll be third down at eight. Nebraska's gone to their nickel package, put their fifth defensive back in the game, expecting pass. Three wide receivers, no tight end for Tennessee. Manning running out of time. He's sacked by Mike Rucker. The first sack of Manning tonight. Mike Rucker, the left defensive end, number 84. He runs a little inside stunt move. He's the one that comes underneath, slips on a little crack in the Tennessee line there to sack Peyton Manning. Peyton just never had time to get that arm cocked and get the ball down the field. Now Chris Hogue with his worst punt of the night. But he did get a good bounce. Hogue averaged 61 yards per punt on three punts. In the first half, that one wound up going 43. There is a flag down at the 41-yard line. And it's for an illegal block in the back against Nebraska. Illegal block in the back. On the receiving team during the kick. Close scrimmage kick enforcement. 10 yards from the end of the kick. First down. Sean, I really think the Nebraska offense is one of the toughest in the country to stop. Back in a moment. It doesn't matter if you work for a big company or a startup. Whether you work for yourself or to help others. Fidelity has a way to help you prepare for the day when you won't need to work at all. Whether you're changing jobs. Or happy where you are. Retired. Or just starting out. More people trust their retirement plans to Fidelity than any other company. It's your retirement. It's our job to help you make the most of it. So Nick and Derby CQ is working for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm doing just fine, cold turkey. Oh, well, that's great. Oh, yeah. Hey, Jack. Yeah. Take a break. Oh, nice one. Come on, you know we quit for New Year's. Oh, wait. I'm coming. Jack, no. Just one cigarette. No. Why are you so calm? Because I got help. CQ, a 24-hour stream of medicine that's always with you, even when you first wake up. Helps calm the cravings, my friend. All right. Nicoderm CQ, the power to calm, the power to comfort, the power to help you quit. <laughs> to impress the judges, odor and perspiration must obey. Thus, right guard, clear stick or clear jail. Powerful protection that glides on clear. Blue 22! Hit, hit. Right guard. Anything less will be uncivilized. I can put that spoon down anytime I want. Kellogg's Frosted Flakes, too irresistible for adults. You just don't get as much milk with a fork, that's all. Frosted Flakes have the taste adults have grown to love. They're great! This pilot wasn't the only one who died after this crash. So did one of his two mechanics. He shot and killed himself after the Air Force charged him with negligent homicide. 60 Minutes, Sunday. We invite you to click on to CBS Sports Line where you'll find a wrap of tonight's game and news on all the college bowl action, the latest scores, stats, highlights, exclusive columns, the latest breaking news and sports. Check out the most in-depth Olympic site on the web. Get in on the action at cbs.sportsline.com. Nebraska on offense for the second time in the second half. They stay on the ground. It's Amon Green with running room again. Out to the 35. Terry, obviously, just before the break, you didn't have a chance to finish your thought about the Nebraska offense. Well, Sean, I was making the point, it's such a tough offense to stop because they run one back, two back, three back offense. They have multiple formations, an option game, a power game with their tailback, a trap game with their fullback, a mobile quarterback, and all of a sudden they just stress you on defense until you come apart. And you couple all that with some 
quality play action passing. It's just hard to defend it. Green up the middle, and he ran into Raynock Thompson. Might be having the best game of his career tonight. We've seen him several times, and can't remember Thompson being as much of a factor as he has been in this one. Well, some question Tennessee is a number three team. The players all talk about it. They've developed a reputation for not winning the big one, in large part because they haven't been able to defeat Florida during the Peyton Manning era and before that, actually. But I think we're seeing tonight, this is a very good Tennessee team, a lot of good athletes who can really run on defense. No question. They played the Nebraska offense as well in that first half as any defense I've ever seen play against the Nebraska offense. If their own offense hadn't turned it over, I'm not sure Nebraska would have scored in the first half. Frost picked it at the last second look out I'm on green with one man to beat and he could not beat him Terry Fair made the touchdown saving tackle at the 21 yard line of Tennessee a 43 yard pickup for green Scott Frost is the master, the magician, with running the option play. He comes down the line of scrimmage here. He gets the ball pitched. Sometimes he never even looks. This time he does. He lays it off perfectly. Makovica leading the way. And Amon Green, the speedster, gets a crack in the defense and then just turns it downfield. He now has 113 yards rushing. Makovica weaving his way to the right. The gain to the 17, four-yard pickup. Ron Green and Leonard Little made the tackle. So that's 12 straight games now with 100 yards rushing or more for Amon Green. And I think you have to ask yourself, what is the difference in this second half as compared to the first half? Why can Nebraska run the ball all of a sudden now in the second half where they couldn't in the first half? And I think it has to do with that intensity of the offensive line. They seem to have a little skip in their step, if you will, in this second half, where in the first half they didn't seem to. And Tennessee is not penetrating quite as much as they were able to in the first half. Green up the middle. A lot of tired-looking arm tackles from the defensive front now for Tennessee. Corey Noel had to come up from the secondary to help Corey Terry, the defensive end. And it's close to a first down. Terry McCauley, the referee, says it is a first down just outside the 10. So they could get another first down very close to the goal line. And the double whammy for the Tennessee defense is not only is Nebraska moving and scoring points, but they chew up the clock while they do it. Well, that's the way they play. They love to run the ball, and they're going to get 80 plays a game, and 68 or 70 of them are going to be runs. Frost keeps. Frost touchdown! He might still be cramping up a little bit. You saw him trying to stretch as he went into the end zone. Scott Frost was certainly silenced in the first half, but has responded in the second half. This is a designed quarterback keep. He follows the tailback, Amon Green. He's the only guy that's supposed to have the ball on this play. He's a great runner. They want him to carry it into the end zone. Frost had a Nebraska record 19 rushing touchdowns during the regular season. That's the school record for quarterbacks. And he is two tonight. Both count of the stats and the bowl games do not factor in. That run went 11. It's 28-3. The Cornhuskers starting to make a statement. The nest is empty. Your work is done. So powerful. It's time to kick back and have some fun. So agile. You've got the car now. DeVille with the North Star system. For who you are now, you're making whoopin. DeVille, for the time of your life. Oh, look at you. We're back at Erickson Stadium where we're down to the final seconds of the game and it's still time. The kick's high. And and mobile phone. 
Cubs. Catch the excitement. You know, Mother and I are real proud of you going off to the Winter Olympics in Japan. That's what happens when you're America's favorite. But... Well, I know you won't be coming back. But you're gonna make one heck of a French fry. Who feeds the world's greatest athletes? Did somebody say McDonald's? We love you! CBS Sports presentation of the FedEx Orange Bowl is sponsored by Fast Reliable FedEx. It's the way the world works. McDonald's. Cadillac. And by Fidelity Investments. Sean McDonough with Terry Donahue, Michelle Tafoy, and Ed Cunningham. Delighted to have you with us for the FedEx Orange Bowl from Miami, Nebraska has taken control, leading by 25. Still five minutes left in the third quarter. Cedric Wilson ran into traffic at the 27-yard line. Once again, folks, we remind you that the Chevrolet Scholarship Program is in effect tonight, and later in tonight's game, we will be giving you the Chevrolet Players of the Game. First and ten. Tennessee needs to do something, and they need to do it quickly. The pass caught by Marcus Nash, the senior from Tulsa, Oklahoma. With 76 catches coming into tonight, but he's had a quiet night in this one. Well, he really has, Sean. Tennessee's been unable to get the ball very effectively to Marcus Nash. One of the adjustments Tennessee has just made, they went to the shotgun that time. They're not, they've not been in the shotgun very often, but the pressure is starting to mount uh, on Peyton Manning, and they're trying to get him off the line a little bit. From the 32, second and six. A lob looking for Nash. He has it. And he's across midfield. Erwin Sweeney made the tackle. They had one-on-one -on -one coverage. And Nash has a 20-yard gain in this fourth reception of the night. Well, this is a great job. Marcus Nash getting off the bump and run coverage of Erwin Sweeney, the, the freshman, number 16. And Peyton Manning lays this ball up beautifully. Nash goes up. Tremendous concentration. Come. Peyton Manning here under rush. They got him on that knee a little bit. Jay Foreman hit him after the ball was gone. Jamal Lewis off right tackle, found the hole. He's down at the 41-yard line. Quality gain of seven on first down for Lewis. There's Jay Foreman, the junior from Eden Prairie, Minnesota. Who made the stop. He's had an up-and-down career at Nebraska. Was a starter as a redshirt freshman in 95. And last year, he backed up John Hess. Now he's back in the starting lineup as a junior. Second on the team with those 61 tackles. Three and a half minutes remaining. Third quarter. Manning throws. Caught again by Nash. No, incomplete now, say the officials. And Nash was wide open. With the throw a bit errant. Well, I think this is what Tennessee has to try and do is get the ball upfield more. I know early in the game they wanted to hit the short passes, but they need to drive those defensive backs off. Marcus Nash, that ball just went right through his hands. Peyton Manning has been plagued all season long with drop passes by his wide receivers. I take back what I said about that being Aaron throw. Nash slipped, and that might have hurt his chances of catching it. Manning throws short of Jermaine Copeland. Now it's fourth down and four and down by 25. I don't think Philip Fulmer has any choice here, Terry, other than to go for it. Yeah, Grant Wistrom, the great defensive lineman, the Lombardi Trophy winner, he has been quiet in the first half, but he's starting to turn it up, and he's a guy that just gives you great second effort all the time. He's always working at getting to the quarterback. Big play here for Tennessee as they cling the hopes of a comeback. Fourth and four, blitz, caught, first down. 
He had the forward progress beyond the marker as Eric Warfield put the collar on Jermaine Copeland. But it is a first down just inside the 37-yard line. But Jermaine Copeland just ran right down the field, turned around and stopped, and Peyton Manning threw the ball right at him. It's a great throw. He hits him right between the numbers. You can watch him in the slot. He just turned around. The ball's there on time. Copeland gets the first down. Clock down to three minutes and change remaining in the third quarter. Lewis close to another first down. He had one man to beat and he was gone. Instead, it's a gain of nine. And it'll be second and one at the 28-yard line of Nebraska. Boy, Sean, that was a nice cut by Jamal Lewis, the freshman tailback. He made a couple Cornhuskers miss there. He is a powerful runner. We're looking at a guy I think will be the next Heisman Trophy candidate at the University of Tennessee as he gets a little more experience, a little more maturity. He is 67 yards rushing tonight on 13 carries. He gets the hand up again. First through the hole. Ran into his own man, and that might have prevented a touchdown. Instead, he's down at the five-yard line. Tackled by Eric Johnson, a reserve linebacker. 23 yards on the rush for Lewis, and the volunteers are on the move. But Jamal Lewis on the isolation play finds a crack in the Nebraska defense. He will go ahead and cut this ball back, and he's going to run in to Jermaine Copeland. <laughs> Number six is right in the way. He makes the tackle or, or at least prevents the touchdown for sure. Hold him down long enough for Johnson to make the stop. First and goal at the five. Manning looking in the end zone. Running out of time. Throws. Touchdown! Here the Price with the reception for the Tennessee score. Here's they will go for two. You saw Manning holding up the two fingers and the sideline held up two, looking back at the offense. Peyton Manning is a quarterback who can throw on the run as well as he works out of the pocket. Tennessee does a good job. They get him away from the pressure of Nebraska by sprinting him out, buying him time enough to find the open receiver. It's amazing how much better Peyton Manning's knee is in just a couple of days. We watched him practice that play a couple of days ago, and he really hobbled as he rolled to his right tonight. No sign of any hit. Sean, it's amazing. I didn't think he was healthy for the ball game, but he clearly is. Out of the shotgun, the try for two. He throws incomplete. Looking again for Peerless Price, Erwin Sweeney had the coverage. So it's 28 to 9 with a minute 58 remaining in the third quarter. The FedEx Orange Bowl from Miami. It's the storm of the century. Are we all gonna die? And the opportunity. We just lost the money! Of a lifetime. But you're the sheriff! And the what? Morgan Freeman, Christian Slater. Hard Rain, rated R. Starts Friday, January 16th. My grandson's a cute kid, but one tough businessman. Hey, buddy, I must have fixed my car. Up from pricing, what do you think this is, mister? That new GM Goodwin Service Plus? What a kid. Got upfront pricing, plus lifetime guarantee on parts and labor, plus courtesy transportation. New GM Goodrich Service Plus. The little guy was right. The plus means better. <laughs> Call for the select GM dealer near you. Every family dreams of making it to the Olympic Games. Fortunately, you don't have to go through all this to get there. Just look for specially marked Minute Maid packages and watch the Olympic Games on CBS to see if you've won your family trips to the Winter and Summer Olympic Games for life. Minute Maid gives you the taste of eating a fresh, ripe orange and probably your best shot of going to the Olympic Games for life. The madness is coming. Wittenberg, all the long way. Oh! Oh! They won it! The Lakers puts it up. Only on CBS. 
back in Miami at Pro Player Stadium. The second year, the home of the FedEx Orange Bowl. And Smokey's here for the first time since 1968. That's the last time the balls were in this game. That's their fourth appearance in the Orange Bowl overall. They're one and two coming into this one. Good kickoff by Jeff Hall with the wind, and Shevin Wiggins had to down it. And we want to thank Captain Larry Chambers and the entire crew of the Goodyear Stars and Stripes. If you want to learn more about the Goodyear blimp, check it out on the internet www.goodyear.com. Click on at the controls. Now it is official. Everyone has a website. Tennessee scoring drive, nine plays, 72 yards. Jamal Lewis, the main man. And they scored relatively quickly. I thought at this point, Terry, they might even try an onside kick. I know there's a more than a quarter to go, but the way Nebraska is holding on the ball and eating up the clock, they need to play more big plays to the volunteers. Well, there's no question about it, but Sean, you're, you're scared to death to onside kick because if you don't get it, you're giving Nebraska such a short field to operate in two, and it's hard enough trying to stop them when they have to go 80 yards. D'Angelo Lloyd, the injured player. He's a true freshman from Charlotte. John Chavis, the defensive coordinator, tells us he is an outstanding product, a prospect. He has great speed off the edge. Fortunately, not as much speed to the sideline as a result of the injury. Tomorrow, the legend rides again here on CBS, the Magnificent Seven, the greatest Western of all time. Now a series, and don't miss the exciting two-hour premiere tomorrow right here on CBS. Frost hands off. I'm on green. Terry Fair in pursuit at the 40. And Fair took him down at the 32-yard line. 47 more for green. Watch Aaron Taylor, number 67, the left guard. He'll come down and crush the Tennessee nose guard. That creates a huge opening in the defense that allows Amon Green to get through it. The Nebraska offensive line has really come to play in the second half. The veteran group will lose six of their top seven offensive linemen to graduation, so that'll be the first major challenge for Frank Solich as he takes over as head coach. Joel Makavica bang down to the 25. That's a gain of eight. Nebraska had 69 yards rushing in the first half. They now have 271 for the game. And, and the last two runs, Sean, have come right behind the center. Josh Heskew, number 59, and Aaron Taylor, 67, the left guard, along with Fred Pollock, 73. They run again to the left. And Green is close to another first down. He appears to have it at the 22-yard line, under a minute remaining third quarter. Now you start to wonder, if it stays this way, if Nebraska builds on the lead, what is happening to minds of holsters in the AP poll and in the coaches' poll? I think Tennessee has proven, despite the score, it's worthy of a very high ranking. They're certainly one of the best teams in the nation. And Nebraska is starting to take firm control. Something Michigan never did yesterday. Touchdown, Amon Green. Flagged down at the three-yard line. And it is a touchdown, says Terry McCauley. 22 yards on the run by Green. This play is successful because Scott Frost is a master, the master, at running the option. But what a block by Joel Makabeka, number 45, the fullback. He'll be way out in the corner. Frost comes down, pitches. Watch 45, the lead blocker. He gets the Tennessee man down that allows that crease to open up for Amon Green. Chris Brown adds another extra point. Agavica playing courageously with a very sore hamstring, but he told us a couple of days ago 
there would be nothing that would keep him out of this game. Well, and he just won't come out of a football game. They say if they do get him out, he'll rest a play or two, and he'll walk right back onto the field. And I think you have to credit the wide receivers of Nebraska. They're doing a great job downfield. Number 14, Lance Brown. There's just blocks all over the field that allows Amon Green to hit those creases. Twenty-nine seconds remaining in the third quarter. There's Aaron Taylor. The outstanding left guard in his final game in Nebraska. Sean, what you have to do now if you're Tennessee, Phil Fulmer's got the toughest job on his hands. He's got to get his team over here and he's got to say, hey, listen, fellas, we've got to keep competing. We're playing against a great football team. We've got to show our stuff now in the fourth quarter. We've worked hard. We've had a great season. You look back, Tennessee's been in sudden death ever since they lost the Florida game. Every week's been sudden death for them. Now they've got to sit in there and be competitive and just not get run out of here. Sudden death because they knew after the one loss to Florida, if they wanted to win the SEC championship, which they said is their main goal, and be in the alliance, which has eluded them in recent years, they needed to win out. So every game had that sense of urgency, and Coach Fulmer's team did run the table to earn him a contract extension. Announced a couple of days ago through the year 2003 with a hefty pay raise. He'll make about $750,000 per year over the course of that contract. Well, it's amazing what's happened to contracts in college football. So that as if you might ponder going back. <laughs> no, no, no. Darden out to the 30-yard line. 22-yard return. Well, Philip Fulmer doesn't get much attention around the country. And believe it or not, he does have some critics in the state of Tennessee. But all he's done is become the winningest coach of all time by percentage among those with a minimum of five years coaching. Phillip's in his sixth. And Tom Osborne is number two. I think Philip Fulmer is a very underrated, underappreciated at times coach at the University of Tennessee and primarily because of the Florida series. That's been the That's series right. that he's just not been able to get over the hump of. Just a couple of wins against the Gators. He would be a fully beloved figure in the state of Tennessee. Lewis tackled from behind by Jason Peter. Terrific play by Peter when it looked like Lewis was ready to break away. You wonder if the balls are going to go without a huddle now. They won't have time, it seems, to get another playoff in the third quarter. They do not. The third quarter dominated by Nebraska. The Point Huskers trying to make a statement for the national championship. End of three, 35-9 Nebraska. We'll return to the Bennett Orange Bowl after this message and a word from your local station. Nothing goes together quite like the great taste of Tostitos tortilla chips. And Tostitos salsa. <laughs> Tostitos, the perfect chip for the perfect salsa. Now's a good time. Special K and make up for the way you ate over the holidays. Kellogg's Special K. Lose the holiday fat. Think you're getting the best shave? Take the Sensor XL Challenge. No other razor has Sensor XL's microfins for extra protection. It's the safest way to the closest shave. Take the Sensor XL Challenge. We bet you won't go back. The Olympic Winter Games return to CBS. Share a moment with the world. definition of a good investment may differ from others. At First National Bank of Omaha, we know the best investments aren't those made for the people of Nebraska, but those made in them.
the first time ever, Nebraska Furniture Mart is giving three two-year warranties on all appliances and electronics priced $2.99 or more. And you know what that means. Plus, pay nothing down and make no payments till July on furniture, flooring, appliances, and electronics. And you know what that means. This 30-inch GE self-cleaning range is now sale priced at $299. For GE quality and a free two-year warranty, there's only one place to be. And you know where that is. Haven't I seen you somewhere before? Yes, that's why I don't go there anymore. In the spirit of great comebacks, McDonald's presents the McRib Sandwich. It's back for a limited time and just as good as you remember. Get it in an extra value meal with a large order of fries and a medium Coke for $3.29. Say the word and we'll supersize it for free. Did somebody say McDonald's? Come back in the morning for a McDonald's new Western Omelette McMuffin extra value meal. With hash browns and small coffee for only $1.99. Only at McDonald's. Loretta Carroll, only on Channel 3. Well, back in Miami and an artist at work. Tom Osborne and Peyton Manning, each in his final game at his respective university. Manning throws very short out to the 34-yard line, perhaps the 35, a gain of two. Well, it used to be... People would talk in college football about if you rely on the run, you can't score quickly. That's one of the weaknesses. Well, we saw 21 points in a blizzard of rushing yards. Unbelievable performance in that third quarter by Nebraska. No question about it. What's interesting is why has it happened all of a sudden? And I think one of the reasons Tennessee's not tackling as well this half as they did in the first half. Nebraska 227 yards rushing in the third quarter. Jamal Lewis chopped down short of a first down, about a yard short. Brandon Harrison, junior from Gainesville, Texas. Backup quarterback made the tackle. He's in his first year at Nebraska, a junior college transfer. On a maze, down 35 to 9. 14 minutes left. One yard to go, they're punting. Bobby Newcomb waiting for the punt from Chris Hogue. Well, <laughs> they're offside and then some. Grant Wistrom, very anxious, coming around right end. Question is, was he drawn off? Ball start. Yes, he was. Five yards, fourth down. Well, Wistrom said it would be just awful. He couldn't imagine what it would be like if Nebraska did not win Tom Osborne's last game. And his teammates and Grant himself delivering a big performance tonight. So now it's fourth and six, and Newcomb goes back to the 22-yard line with Shevin Wiggins waiting for the punt from Chris Hogg. Another nose-up spiral of beauty again. Shevin Wiggins from the 20, straight up the middle and down to the 28-yard line. 48 yards on the punt by Hogg. Frustration continues for Peyton Manning and Tennessee. Saber is built to keep you safe and secure. A comforting thought, especially for those who aren't even in the car. Stand by me. Hey, stranger, where you been? I don't smoke anymore. Sorry. I mean, great. How'd you do it? Nicoderm CQ. CQ? Isn't that the patch with the, uh, three steps? Mm -hmm. I'm doing the steps. Nicoderm CQ has three steps, so you gradually step down your dose the way doctors and pharmacists prefer. Steps, Dad. The way to go. Nicoderm CQ. The power to calm, the power to comfort, the power to help you quit. Every player has a weakness. Tonight, Mr. Grant Hill's weakness takes center court. There's only one place to go for the irresistible taste of America's favorite fries.
Did somebody say McDonald's? Now come to McDonald's and vote for your favorite NBA All-Star. Oh, they never have the movie I want. So I end up watching when Born Animals Attack Part 4. Wait a minute, wait a minute. They actually have it. More copies of new releases than ever before! Believe it! What's going on around here, huh? Go home happy! The first theory Jerry Fletcher ever got right may be the last one he'll live to tell. If you hurt Alice, I'll kill you. Jerry! Conspiracy Theory, a Richard Donner film rated R from Warner Home Video. Rented tonight at Blockbuster Video. CBS Sports presentation of the FedEx Orange Bowl is sponsored by Fast Reliable FedEx. It's the way the world works. Buick and your local dealers. Visa. And by Nicoderm CQ. Well, they're starting to sense it. They're in the Nebraska section. And in the Tennessee seating areas as well. You make that observation because a lot of the volunteer fans have left. Jay Sims in at eye back. Back to the line of scrimmage and that's it. Here's Michelle. Well, guys, Mike Osborne, the oldest of Coach Tom Osborne's three kids, is down here on the sidelines with a handheld video camera documenting his father's last game. He told me right now he's just really focused on the game, but if it keeps going like it's going, he's bound to get nostalgic, and he's sure his dad is too, guys. And as was mentioned before the game, the biggest reason Tom Osborne wanted to step aside now was his family. He admits that his wife Nancy more or less raised their children by herself. He was putting in 17-hour days coaching football. Sheldon Jackson tackled by Corey Gaines. A rare pass here in the second half called by Coach Osborne. And it's another first down for Nebraska. Sean, most coaches' wives raise the families. Coaches are gone 12, 15, 18-hour days at times. And the wives are called upon to do that. And certainly Tom is no exception when it comes to that. Well, Mike is hoping he can turn his dad into... A golfer, Tom Osborne, prefers fishing in his rare free moments. Frost, the keeper, now to the 45. What a turnaround it's been for Scott Frost at Nebraska. He took over for Tommy Frazier, one of the most popular players and successful players in Nebraska history. And they were coming off with back-to-back -back national titles when the team struggled early last year and had lost at Arizona State. Much of the criticism from the Nebraska fans directed at Frost. He was booed, and he bristled at that, spoke out against it. Now he has been embraced, but you get the sense talking to him, he still remembers the boos, too. Well, there's no question. Scott Frost made a poor decision out of high school when he chose Stanford because he, he didn't fit in the Stanford offense. Stanford's a great school, but he didn't fit there. He wanted to play for Bill Walsh, but he didn't have the kind of throwing arm you needed. He made a great decision when he decided to come back home and get into this offense because he's a dominant player in it. He was the backup to Steve Stenstrom for two years at Stanford. Two losing seasons. He wanted to go back where he knew he would play on a winning team and be a key member. Frost. Close to another first down at the Tennessee 37-yard line. Nice blocking by Jeff Lake. The wide receivers really are glorified blockers in this offense. Boy, they do a tremendous job on the perimeter with those blocks. Scott Frost running the option to perfection. He loves to keep the ball and hit the crease in the defense. The big red machine right now is starting to roll. What was interesting about Frost's decision to go to Stanford, too, is that he has a lengthy family history at the University of Nebraska. Both parents were athletes at the State University. His dad, Larry, was a football player. His mother, Carol, a track athlete. Mother Carol won the discus in the Pan Am Games in 67, went on to the 68 Olympics. Now, Scott's a great student as well, and, you know, he talked about wanting to get the education at Stanford and wanting to just kind of get away from Nebraska, try something new. Interesting about Carol Frost, she remains involved in sports in football. There's Larry Frost and Carol. Larry Frost is the head coach at the high school which Scott Frost attended in Wood River, Nebraska. And Carol Frost is an assistant coach. She coaches the wide receivers and the defensive ends. And the other day, when most of the mothers of the Nebraska players went to the Seaquarium here in Miami, Mrs. Frost said she'd rather stay in the hotel and watch the NFL playoff games. And that's what she did. Frost 
On the carry. Close to a first down to the 28. Deion Grant made the tackle. Well, you can see Scott Frost, when he has the ball in his hands, he's following Amon Green, the tailback here. This is a design keep. Amon Green blocks the linebacker, and there's a hole in the defense for Frost. And he's like having another tailback in the backfield. You're talking about a guy that weighs 220 pounds. He's strong, tough. He's got it all, except he's not a great thrower. Has an awkward motion, which undoubtedly Bill Walsh would like to have worked with had Scott stay there had Bill Walsh stayed at Stanford for that matter but he is effective despite the throwing motion no question he's thrown for over a thousand yards mostly with play action type passing he's going to play in a couple of the postseason senior all-star games and while he would like to play some quarterback to prove that he is one of the best quarterbacks in the country he realizes that he probably should play defense because if he has a future in the NFL, and many think he does, it is as a defensive back. He reminds me of Nolan Cromwell, the great option quarterback from Kansas who had a wonderful pro career. That's who he looks like. On fourth and one, Frost. The pitch to Green, and it's a loose ball. Leonard Little ran by it. Now it's picked up, and you cannot advance that pitch. But Darwin Walker recovered and didn't really matter because it was fourth down anyway. Tennessee was going to get the ball, and they have it at about the 32. Terry Fair, number 13, the defensive back from Tennessee, does a great job. He makes the quarterback pitch this ball. He's, he makes, he stretches it, he stretches it, then all of a sudden the ball's pitched. The lead back, Amon Green, had gotten ahead of him a little bit, and Frost didn't get it done. And the coaches, Frost, upset about an opportunity gone awry. accept anything less than a perfect quad twisting triple. I will not accept anything less than my personal best. I will not accept anything less than 80 miles per hour. I will not accept anything less than 1 minute 17 seconds. I will not accept any cod but Visa. At the 1998 Olympic Winter Games, only the best is accepted. Visa, worldwide partner of the Nagano Games. It's everywhere you want to be. Notice that a year goes by quicker these days, which means the weeks go by quicker. <laughs> and the days, the minutes. The new supercharged Regal GS has more standard safety features than any car in its class, plus loads of room, so you can pack even more into your supercharged day. Hey, when life is fast, life is good! The new Regal GS by Buick. Official car of the supercharged family. Ego. Okay. Thanks. Having successfully cloned himself, Randolph no longer had a problem letting go of his ego waffle. No matter what, one of him always got it. Hey, let go of my ego. Hey, let go of my ego. Which one, however, became an issue? Crisp, delicious ego waffles. Too good to let go. Get the story on your favorite players and teams fast. Exclusive columns by top writers. Detailed stats and interviews on the net. CBS.Sportsline.com Sean McDonough, Terry Donahue, Michelle Defoy, and Ed Cunningham back at the FedEx Orange Bowl in Miami. Nebraska takes over. 9-14 remaining. Manning pass incomplete. Here's Ed Cunningham, a Hall of Famer, better known these days as Peyton's dad. <laughs> We're here with Archie Manning. Archie, I know it's not how you want it to turn out, but can you talk about the emotions you're feeling right now? Well, you know, I hate to see them lose. Nebraska's a great team and all, but um, in a way, I hate to see it come to an end for, for Peyton and all his buddies that are seniors because it's been a great ride for them. I'm sure they'd like for tonight to be better, but this is a great team, and it's, it's been a great experience for them. It's been a great experience for, for the Manning family. We've had a wonderful time. Take a short break for the play. As a light rain begins to fall, Manning pass to Lewis. And Jamal thrown for a loss back to Ed. As a parent, he made a huge decision last year to, to turn down a lot of money and come back. What was it like as a parent to see him make that decision? Well, we were proud of him. It, it had to be his decision, and we were going to support him if he had come out. 
but it, it, in his heart it's what he wanted to do and we were proud the way he did all the research and his due diligence and that's what he wanted to do I think it it's it said a lot I made it, I think it had an impact on some others and you know I'm glad it worked out for him I'm glad he was able to stay healthy this year and, and they won a championship and um, he's I'm glad he stayed he, he is too we're proud of him and Archie thank you so much enjoy the rest of the ball game pass incomplete here comes the punting unit well, believe it or not, there is another Manning coming along. Peyton's younger brother, Eli, is a high school quarterback, a junior in New Orleans. Some say at that stage of his development, he's better as a junior in high school than Peyton Manning was. And if that's the case, it's a frightening prospect. But Eli already very highly recruited. No question about that, Sean. But if he is, he's something special. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure he is. Because, but Peyton Manning, he represents everything you like about college football. Everything. I can't imagine having a a more complete player and person than, than this guy is. You can't carry yourself as a college athlete with any more class or dignity, grace than Peyton Manning has. 39-yard punt. Back in a moment. The first monuments built for the Pharaohs were impressive, but unpredictable. Eventually, they designed a wider base for better balance, proving that wider is better. The writing's on the wall. The White Track Grand Prix Sports Sedan. Its unique White Track design sets the wheels wider for better balance and monumental control. The inscriptions still read, Ne feu se cure en quête ne vent. The White Track Grand Prix. Driving excitement by Pontiac. Wider is better. In 1984, two computer scientists envisioned the impossible. A seamless network of computer networks. They invented the router, and Cisco Systems was born. Out of Cisco came internetworking, and now directing millions of messages a day. Their equipment makes the internet possible. Cisco will be there as web users soar to 200 million by the year 2000. Where do you learn about companies so integrated into the future? NASDAQ, shaping the new world of investing. Из-за него мы на краю экономической пропасти. Да благодаря ему у нас свобода. Из-за него мы на краю политического хаоса. Благодаря ему мы теперь свободны. И можем дойти до края этой пиццы. The Edge Pizza from Pizza Hut with no outer crust, so the toppings go all the way to the edge. За Горбачева! За Горбачева! За Горбачева! Almost everyone's been to the edge. Have you? Saturday, meet the original America's team. Time's up. The Magnificent Seven, two-hour series premiere CBS Saturday. Time for the game summary. All of a sudden, Nebraska has 327 rushing yards. They had 69 at the half. That's still their lowest total of the season. With eight more, they'll match their lowest total. And Amon Green has a chance at the Orange Bowl record for rushing yards in a game. 205 is the record. They give it to Amon Green. And he's to the 35 for a gain of one. Monday on CBS, kick off the new year with a night of great television. Fun starts with Cosby, as it always does. Then it's the show critics are raving about. Everybody loves Raymond. Followed by Bob Newhart and Judd Hirsch and George and Leo. Then say hello to the new Monday comedy, Style and Substance. Finally, the most important new drama on television, Brooklyn South. All Monday night on CBS. Newcomb takes the pitch. He can fly. He's still flying. Flag down to the secondary. Newcomb inside the 25. And down to the 16. An important flag, perhaps, for Nebraska and for Michigan. Because you wonder, Terry, if people look at comparative scores, if 35 to 9 isn't enough to sway some, would 42 to 9 be enough to sway some? And I think that's why the Frost family, for example, was so agitated in their reaction to that failed fourth down. They know every point could be crucial. No question about it. The, that turnover that Scott Frost had on that option play, now this big play called back again, it probably will influence some voters one way or another. Eric Anderson, number 70, the big right tackle, he hustles down the field after trying to make his block, and on the pitch play, Newcomb, Bobby Newcomb, comes down the sideline, and Anderson, yep. right in the back there, pushing in the back, gets called and brings that play back. Good call. It was a good call. They, they saw it right. They've done a very good job tonight, these officials. 
from the Atlantic Coast Conference. Eric Anderson, number seven on, on Deion Grant, the defensive back for Tennessee. And it's it's the officials right there on the spot. And you hate to bring a play back like that, but that's what that's what happens. Walked off from the spot at second down and six. Huskers at their own 38. Cross the pitch to Green, running room of the corner. He's into Tennessee territory. Down at the 47-yard line. You know what's interesting, too, Sean? The Nebraska offense, you could only run this style of offense in certain atmospheres. There's a lot of places around the country you can't run this offense. The fans don't like it. It's not wide open enough in, in some people's mind because it's so run-oriented and people want to throw the ball. But this offense is perfect for Lincoln, Nebraska. They love it. All they do is win, set a five-year record for the best record in the history of college football with it. Magavica dancing through traffic. Look at Frost hustling downfield to throw a block. Torrey Noel made the tackle with a 37. First down, Nebraska. The physicalness of the Nebraska offense has just worn Tennessee down in the second half. Tennessee played tremendous defense in the first half, but now that powerful offensive line and that relentless attack by the Big Red is just wearing them down, and they've had a lot of injuries as well on defense. A lot of players have left the game. Jay Sims back in at eye back. Here he goes. Almost went the distance. Deion Grant made the tackle. 14 for Sims. He is the eye back. Amon Green is one yard short of the Orange Bowl rushing record with 204 yards tonight. Well, I think it's safe to say if Amon Green gets back into the game, he'll get that Orange Bowl record the way these holes are beginning to really open up against the Tennessee defense. The true freshman, Burrell Buckhalter, is in it. I back now. And Frost might be changing the play. The five on the play clock. Here's Buckhalter. Fresh legs riding down inside the 15-yard line. Unprecedented run of success for this senior class, the recruiting class of 1993 for Nebraska, the 48-2 record, the best ever. Two national titles, perhaps a third. Three conference titles and a perfect record at home. Other than that, they didn't do much. Sean, the offense is overpowering. It might be easier to stop the Big Red Army of China than the Big Red Army of Lincoln, Nebraska. Green needs a yard to tie the record. That looks like a gain of two. Jonathan Brown made the stop. That is a two-yard gain officially for Green, and he now has the Orange Bowl record for rushing yards in a game, 206 on 29 carries, breaking the mark set by Roland Sales of Arkansas against Oklahoma in the 1978 Orange Bowl. Vicka inside the 10 fumble and it's still free and you wonder not to overly dramatize the point if that could be <laughs> a national championship saving recovery for the Cornhuskers if every point matters and votes are being swayed based on comparative scores and the like then this is big uh, you watch the power and the precision of the Nebraska offense and it's it's unmatched in the country no one has an offensive team as powerful as this one they just don't there Michigan certainly has a top ranked defense the best defense in the country Frost scores another touchdown his third of the night Scott Frost certainly has stepped it up a notch here in the second half. It's the fake to the fullback, follow the tailback. It's a design keeper. They've run it about eight times tonight. That's what Scott Frost has responded with in the second half. Chris Brown added the extra point. 42-9 Nebraska. Salutations. Don't touch that.
that dial, you're going to want to hear this. As I speak, a team from MCI is arriving. Why is MCI here? For openers, we have a staff of 10 just to handle telecom bills. We have MIS people who haven't had a day off since Roosevelt was in office. Employees who are totally unreachable outside these doors. Oh. And of course, we have this lovely PA system. What will the MCI team do differently? To begin with, there will be one team, not many. They'll provide answers in the form of technologies like intranet, extranet, video, and internet conferencing. Now turn your gaze to the squawk box nearest you and ponder this. When the MCI solutions arrive, you will never have to listen to me again. Wouldn't you rather have something under the hood than on it? This is the supercharged Bonneville. <laughs> one of the world's most powerful sports sedans. Inside and out. It's time for traditional luxury. Was <laughs> collected from dust. Luxury with attitude. The Bonneville by Pontiac. Tonight on Dave, Kevin Klein, Kevin Sorbo, Kevin Brennan. Three Kevins, no waiting. Oh, by the way, I don't know what that means. <laughs> Tonight. Three touchdowns tonight for Scott Frost. 42 to 9 for Nebraska. The question becomes, is it enough? They'll get the Cornhuskers a piece, at the very least, of the national championship. Tom Osborne, 1 2. Been a part of the program for four in his 36 years at Nebraska. Started in 1962 as an assistant to Bob Devaney. Here's Brown to kick off. It's Cedric Wilson back deep. Good kick with the wind. Wilson gets a touchback. And it looks like Peyton Manning's career at Tennessee is over. As T. Martin has the helmet on, he's ready to run onto the field. Well, I think this is certainly understandable. Peyton Manning has done absolutely everything he could in his power for the University of Tennessee. This is a good opportunity for T. Martin. Also, you, you make sure Peyton Manning comes out of this game healthy. I think this is the right decision. Why not give Manning one more play and let him run off to an ovation that he has deserved? Well, either way, but not a lot of Tennessee fans left here, John. <laughs> Handoff up the middle. Travis Stevens, a true freshman, taking the handoff. Manning ends his career holding every passing record at the University of Tennessee. The SEC Player of the Year this year. And he ranks number one all-time in the SEC in completion percentage. And completions. And in lowest interception ratio. And you know he hates ending his career like this. He's such a fierce competitor. Martin over the middle to Sean Bryson. Well, the point was made at the top of the telecast. He might have cost himself some money because he didn't come out last year. I think he could care less about that. He's going to make more Plenty. money in all likelihood <laughs> than he'll ever need. That's right. And he came back because he wanted to be a senior in college and experience the entirety of what that entails as he, a student, as an athlete. You know, Sean, you're right. He came back for all the right reasons. Things didn't work out exactly, probably, as he would have wished. But that's life, and, he, and you learn something there, too. That's all part of the experience, and he talked about the experience. That's why he came back. He wanted to continue with his college education and with that experience. Let's turn our attention to the larger issue now. Who is number one, the best team in the nation? This situation, again, cries out for a playoff because it's obviously difficult to choose either team. Whichever team is not the national championship is going to feel that it is short change with good reason. But here's the statistical comparison. Our 
crew, I don't think, was overly generous in awarding Nebraska a victory in this game. Nice throw by Martin. And Andy McCullough is running free in the secondary. You know, much was made that Michigan played the tougher schedule, but I think as we look at the bowl game results, Terry, the Big Ten might have been exposed for not being as strong as people said it was all season long. The Big Ten really struggled in bowl games, two and five, including Michigan's victory. And uh, their out-of-conference games, Baylor and Notre Dame and Colorado, Beginning of the year, that looks tough, but Notre Dame had a disappointing year. Colorado had a very disappointing year. Baylor was not a very good team. Where Nebraska out of the league, went out and played a very good Washington team in Seattle, as you know, one of the toughest places in the nation to play, and won easily. Well, I, th I think if you're one of the AP 70 writers who are going to vote on this decision, or one of the 62 coaches who vote in the coaches poll, you've got to really sit down and think about this, because... It would be, a, you know, in many ways, to me, a tragedy if, if, if Brian Greasy and Charles Woodson, you know, you look at Greasy, the road of a walk-on to MVP in the Rose Bowl, Woodson, the Heisman Trophy winner, if they don't get a share of the national championship, there's something wrong. They did everything they were asked to do. But at the same time, Scott Frost and Joel Makaveka and those guys, they did everything they were asked to do. Yes, they did. Martin lost his helmet. And he is sacked, and there is a flag thrown in the secondary. It was the second sack of a Tennessee quarterback tonight. 2.04 remaining. Nebraska leads 42-9. And the officials confer about the penalty. <laughs> Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Peyton Manning of Tennessee and Amon Green of Nebraska. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. Could also be Amon Green's last game. He told us the other day he's not certain he'll come back for his senior year. Penalty against Nebraska. Well, I think if these two teams play, Michigan and Nebraska, Nebraska would be the favorite. Remember, we listened to a radio program here in South Florida today, and who cares what the odds makers say, but they called out, and the odds makers said Nebraska would be the favorite in the game by about a touchdown. That doesn't matter. But I think both teams are great on defense. You have to say Nebraska has an edge on offense. Well, that might be. But, Sean, I have my own personal beliefs, and, and I really think that the national championship should be shared by these two teams. That's just what I believe. Right I, remem I remember in 90, uh, Colorado, Georgia Tech, they shared it. I agree with you, by the way. Not, 91. I'm just saying, I know you for do. those who awarded the thing to Michigan after they won yesterday, that really short changes this Nebraska team. That's just and, not. Uh, I agree with you. They both deserve it. One, if it isn't a split, somebody is going to be deservedly very upset. I remember in 91, Miami, Washington. Uh, I had a vote in the coaches' poll in 90 and 91, and I voted both teams in the first place. And you know, you, I, I just think you better weigh it because, boy, a national championship is such a special thing to players and coaches. It means so much. Team Martin can really run. He's inside the five with a minute two remaining, an 11-yard gain. Well, it's up to the voters now. Each team stated its case over the last two days. And unfortunately, that super alliance which comes in next year may not solve the problem. This year, you could have had three undefeated teams, all with a great claim for number one, if Florida State had won at Florida. Then what do you do in your super <laughs> alliance? That's you got a game with two teams, three who could make a claim. Back in a moment. drive family sedans, four by fours, and small city cars. We carry groceries, we carry lumber, we carry life. And we all want to feel safe doing it. Making a lot of different cars and trucks makes us, well, the car company. Making them all deliver the things that matter most makes us GM. The company you count on wherever life takes you. General Motors, people in motion. You know, Mother and I are real proud of you going off to the Winter Olympics in Japan. That's what happens when you're America's favorite. But... Well, I know you won't be coming back. But you're gonna make one heck of a French fry. Who feeds the world's greatest athletes? 
Did somebody say McDonald's? We love you! It doesn't matter if you work for a big company or a startup. Whether you work for yourself or to help others. Fidelity has a way to help you prepare for the day when you won't need to work at all. Whether you're changing jobs. Or happy where you are. Retired. Or just starting out. More people trust their retirement plans to Fidelity than any other company. It's your retirement. It's our job to help you make the most of it. Brooklyn South. Just fired! The season's most talked about new drama. Sniper! Hovers! See how it all began. Brooklyn South, the first episode, CBS Monday. A minute and two seconds remaining in this college football season. Oscar Illustrated has proclaimed Nebraska number one. First and goal from the three. T. Martin into the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. Andy McCullough. Well, the air apparent to Peyton Manning. Drives the volunteers down the field. And final act for Grant Westrom and Jason Peter at Nebraska, it seems, will be to give Tom Osborne a bath. Well, you, you got to be impressed with T. Martin coming in off the bench. He took that team right on down to the score and throws across his body there and finds an open receiver in, in the end zone. Well, they're all set. I'm, I'm telling you, that is cold when you get that little shower there, but you love every second of it. Now the try for two. Martin was four for four on that drive. He swings it out, and there's the two-point conversion for Travis Stevens, the true freshman from Clarksville, Tennessee. 42-17, Nebraska. This morning, a quiet man in Wales decided to stir imaginations around the world. Soon, classrooms became kingdoms. Dinosaurs roamed the earth. And all it took was the wave of a wand, the twinkle of an eye, and suddenly he could open minds, take dreams farther, and create more excitement than ever before. He wasn't always so powerful, but with FedEx, it's the way the world works. And now, our FedEx delivery of the game. FedEx delivery of the game from Maman Green. You saw him celebrating his second touchdown of the night, a 22-yarder. He has delivered a record-setting performance tonight. Only the real good players on the team, Sean, dare carry that bucket, you know. You look there, Jason Peter, Wistrom, those are the kind of guys that carry that bucket to get the old head coach. Like they're trying to give him some sort of a championship cap, and Tom said, that's okay, I like the one I'm on. And you wouldn't expect him to change. So little has changed about the man and his program over the last 36 years. And they still run the same offense and defenses that Bob Devaney put in with help from Tom Osborne. They have the same numbering system. I mean, it's as if nothing has changed in that 36-year Fan. The one thing that certainly has not changed is winning. They've had 36 straight winning seasons. Well, I look at Tom Osborne, 25 years head coach, 25 straight bowls. I mean, it's incredible the job that he has done. As college football fans well know, he's not an emotional man, but you sense looking at the face that the emotions are now stirring the realization that in 58 seconds he'll walk off the sideline for the last time. And Nebraska will be the land of Oz no longer. Onside kick, recovered, but he was out of bounds, it seemed, from here. Yep, flag comes out. Andy McCullough fielded it, but he was on the Nebraska sideline. Wistrom and Peter inching closer. On the kicking team, penalties decline. First down. And the legacy of Tom Osborne. Here we go. There, ooh. Another bath added to that legacy. 
And a hug from Jason Peter. And you can say what you want about the decisions he's made relative to some players over the years, but by and large, the vast majority of Nebraska players have been outstanding in the classroom, outstanding in the community. They have had some problems off the field. Some have questioned Osmond's decisions in that realm, but you can't deny that he does care unbelievably about his players, and they return that affection. No question about it, and there's not a program in America that hasn't had some form of problems. Mm -hmm. Nebraska uh, isn't uh, any different than anybody else when it comes to that. Clearly one of the great coaches of all time. And he's 20 seconds away from the career-ending victory. Only fitting that it would end with a victory and perhaps a national championship for Tom Osborne. He leaves us with 255 wins. And not a happy ending for Peyton Manning as he heads toward the NFL. Tom Osborne heads for a fishing pole. Let's check in with Armin Kateyan. Peyton, obviously, first three turnovers in the first half, tough to overcome to get the ball away to Nebraska. Yeah, that killed us. So you can't turn the ball over against a great team like Nebraska and expect to win. And uh, that really hurt us. We were hoping to play the state free football. We didn't do it. That hurt us. The wind, the pressure from the defense? Not really. really just hurt ourselves most of the game. They're a great defense. And you know, if you give them anything easy, their offense is going to make you pay. But we, you know, we really hurt ourselves all night. One professional question. Indianapolis has the first pick. Does that matter to you? I really don't know at this point. You know, it's my last college game, but now that it's over, I'll kind of make the next move and want to see what happens. Class act, Peyton. Sean, back to you. Thank you, Armin. Nebraska, a winner. 42 to 17, the final. As the Cornhuskers close out the ninth undefeated and untied season in the history of Nebraska football. Stay with us for the College Football Today Ford Division postgame show coming up right after this word from your local station. that Monday night football is over, men everywhere are being reunited with their families. Doug Revin, meet your lovely wife! I have a baby? Mom! Dad! You're still alive! <laughs> Red! You're not a puppy anymore! And even better, they're being reunited with TV's best Monday night comedy lineup. Tell them, Johnny. How do you feel about Cosby? Everybody loves Raymond, George, and Leo, and the all-new style and substance. It's good! Welcome home. For college football action, the address is CBS. Welcome home. If you're anticipating the most incredible deals of the year, shoot into your local Ford dealers year-end clearance, where you'll bring up low lease rates and low financing on America's best-selling truck. Get into a new Ranger for only $169 a month. Score on Explore with $49 for 48 months or $59 for 60. Get a Ford F-Series for just $219 a month and check out America's best-selling Ford Expedition. But don't wait. This year in clearance and you will get a replay for another year. Year-end clearance. Shoot into your local Ford dealer now. What makes a house a home? There's no one answer. Home real estate knows homes are as different as the people who live in them. To some, it's a three-bedroom ranch. To others, it's a classic brick tutor. But it's really special moments. First steps, family traditions, memories to last a lifetime. And to Husker fans, it's 42 consecutive wins in the big house in Lincoln. Woohoo! Go Huskers! Looking to buy, sell, build, or relocate? Talk to home real estate. But wait until after the game. We'll understand. People's Court. Weekdays on Channel 3. The Nebraska fans chanting, we're number one, following the victory in the FedEx Orange Bowl over Tennessee tonight. Time again for the FedEx delivery of the game. And here it is, Amon Green, second of his two touchdowns, 22 yards. 
Part of his record-setting performance tonight. Now let's check in down on the field with Jim Nance. All right, thank you very much, Sean. So in the second half, Nebraska tonight piles up 340 rushing yards in the second half alone. Craig and Lou, you forecast that, Lou, for the second half. They would start mounting that big yardage. The big question, though, now, who's number one? Coach? Well, well I think it is difficult not to give it to the University of Michigan. They did everything they need to do, went undefeated. But how do you look at Nebraska and say, hey, you put on an awesome performance all year, I can't vote you number one. I think they both ought to share it. I really and truly do until we have a playoff system because they both did everything you needed to do, which was go undefeated. Well, I, I can't straddle the fence. I've got to have a vote well, on this thing. And I've thought long and hard about it here in the second half. And I've really talked to a lot of people that I trust their opinions. And I think everybody's just like me. This is unfortunate that we've been placed in this position here. Both of these football teams, Michigan and Nebraska, deserve to be national champions. So I've taken it down to this. Who would I vote for, number one, or who would I vote for on a game like this, Nebraska or Michigan? I think Nebraska and their option would win the football game and their defense would win it for them. I'm going to vote Nebraska number one in the country. I hate to do it because Michigan's done everything they, they should have done to win the national championship, but we got to vote, and I've done it. Why couldn't all the voters get together tonight, the chairman of one of the polls, say, hey, guys, give me your half vote to each team and go ahead and announce some co champs Why couldn't they do that? Because they won't do it because they say they have to vote. They select one. But Michigan did everything you could possibly do, but so did Nebraska. Now, it doesn't matter to the coach. It doesn't matter to the fans. It does matter to the players because years from now to say I was part of national championship and there's no way that I think you can say no to either one. And, and I'm being honest the way yeah, I feel. And I think it's going to be unfortunate because it's going to come out of vote. And there's going to be controversy, which is going to continue to fuel, to fuel all the, the spark and the desire for a national playoff on the field. Well, Coach Osborne goes out with his fourth straight bowl victory. He is a man who never changed in 25 years, a phlegmatic, unflappable figure on the sidelines, off the sidelines as well, a man of deep faith and at times blinding loyalty. But at all times, a man devoted to his team, to his state, and to the pursuit of excellence in football. He's leaving in his absolute prime, winning precisely 60 games in his last five seasons, an unheard of 12 wins per campaign. So congratulations, Coach. Regardless of what the pollsters tell you, you went out on top in your silver anniversary season, leaving nothing but golden memories. It's time for the presentation. Let's take it back to the field and to Michelle Tafoya. Michelle? We are chanting T.O. in the crowd for none other than Tom Osborne, who has just coached his very last game. But without further ado, let's turn it over to Leslie Pantene, president of the Orange Bowl, to present the Orange Bowl trophy. On behalf of the Orange Bowl Committee and all the people in Miami, congratulations to the Nebraska Cornhuskers and especially, especially to Dr. Tom Osborne. Thank you. Thank you very much. Commissioner of the Big 12 Conference, Steve Hatchell, to present the Alliance Trophy. Steve? Thank you, Michelle. On behalf of all of the conferences and teams in the Bowl Alliance, we'd like to present this trophy to you, Tom, for not only an outstanding season, but to a great career. We want to congratulate the University of Tennessee for a wonderful football season and to the Southeast Conference for all of the great things they did in football this year. And in presenting this, Tom, I think the best part is, is that maybe tomorrow there'll be another trophy you can get as well. Coach, congratulations. A decisive win, to say the least, and given that and all of the other circumstances, what are your thoughts tonight on the national championship picture? Well, I'm, I'm very proud of our team. I think we did all we could. We, uh, we won 13, and that's all we played. And so I'm very proud of these guys. I thought they played a great game. is the last game for you in 25 years at Nebraska. You've coached your last game. How much of that has sunk in so far? 
Well, that's a, it's a kind of a bittersweet moment. Uh, very proud of the players. Have great appreciation for our coaching staff. Uh, most of what's happened has been due to their efforts and the players. We have great fans. I want to thank them for being here. So it's a, it's a great night for Nebraska. Coach, congratulations. Thanks, Michelle. I'm joined now by Scott Frost, the quarterback of tonight's winning Nebraska Huskers. What a game. Just describe the feeling at this point and also your thoughts on the national championship picture. Well, it feels great. I'm so proud of this team and I'm just so proud to have had a chance to play for Coach Osborne. And I just want to say this about the national championship. You know, if if, if all the pollsters honestly think, after watching the Rose Bowl and watching the Orange Bowl, that Michigan could beat Nebraska, go ahead and vote Michigan by all means. But let me finish. Let me finish. I don't think. I don't think there's anybody out there that with a clear conscience can say that Nebraska, and especially Tom Osborne, that great man, doesn't deserve a national championship for this. At least a share. Scott Frost has made his case. Nebraska seems to have made theirs. Let's send it back now to Jim Nance. Yes, indeed, Michelle. An urgent plea from Scott Frost. And there was a lot of frost in the end zones tonight here. Three touchdowns by the quarterback, but I'm on green. 206 yards on the ground, leading the way for the Huskers. Back with Phil Fulmer in just a moment. Well, if I had money, i tell you what I'd do. I'd go downtown, buy a Ford truck or two. I'm crazy about a Ford truck. Lord, I'm crazy about a Ford truck. I'm going to buy me a Ford truck and cruise it up and down the road. A Ford truck and cruise it up and down the road. For the last 50 years, there's only been one truck built Ford Tough. From the moment you draw your first breath, you are different. Unique in look and personality. Footprints and DNA. And no one understands that more than the men and women of Fidelity. Who work with 12 million investors. No two of whom are alike. How you work with us is your choice. Because it's your money. And helping you make the most of it is what makes Fidelity different. If you're anticipating the most incredible deals of the year, shoot into your local Ford dealers year-end clearance where you'll bring up low lease rates and low financing on America's best-selling truck. Get into a new Ranger for only $169 a month. Score on Explore with $4.9 for 48 months or $5.9 for 60. Get a Ford F-Series for just $2.19 a month. And check out America's best-selling Ford Expedition. But don't wait. Miss year in clearance and you will get a replay for another year. Year in clearance. Shoot into your local Ford dealer now. <laughs> soybean herbicide it's hungry for weeds just got back from vacation at Harvey's and I have some wonderful slides for you to see my room has an unbelievable view and the food was fantastic and after dinner I went up to the Platinum Players Club you know and uh, here's a showroom I do my comedy act in I really stood the audience on its head. Where are you going? I got a thousand more slides to show you here. And the legacy of Tom Osborne. Here we go. The Huskers make sure that Coach Tom Osborne goes out a winner. Nebraska finishing off a perfect season, crushing Tennessee. Hello everyone, I'm Loretta Carroll. It is the ending that Nebraska fans wanted for Tom Osborne's incredible career on the sidelines. A huge win at the Orange Bowl. John Anderson and Rich Roberts are right there in the middle of it all. And uh, Scott Frost didn't mince any words, did he, guys? 
Yeah, I don't think so. I think Scott hit it right on the nose, too. you got to give the Huskers a piece in the national championship, don't you, John? Oh, yeah, what an effort tonight. I mean, Tennessee, for most of this game, they weren't even in it. They took them out quickly. Absolutely not. Huskers really poured it on in the second half. we got some stars with us, Aaron Taylor. Aaron, what did you guys do in the second half that allowed the game to uh, blow open? Uh, what we did, we, we just approached it like we did the first half. The, the, the deal was that they just uh, got fatigued and uh, we could do whatever we wanted on them. So we, we went in the locker room and didn't change a thing. We just came out and, and did what we wanted to do from the beginning, beginning of the game. We have Scott Frost with us right now. Yeah, Scott, Scott Frost. you can move in here, Scott. What do you say to the, the pollsters out there and the fact that uh, you guys put on a show tonight? I don't see how anybody with a clear conscience can say we don't deserve a share. The title's been split before. Colorado and Georgia Tech split it. Miami and Washington split it. There's no question. We're the only 13-0 team in the country. If you do a statistical comparison, a game-by-game -game comparison, anything, we're getting penalized for one week of football where we came out, showed that we were a champion team, and came back from, from, some, from, a, from a tough situation. That week, Michigan beat Penn State, who's gotten beat bad twice in a row. People need to reevaluate. You guys would play Michigan right now, wouldn't you? We oh, play them anytime, anywhere, Ann Arbor. right now. Let's go. It doesn't matter where. Scott, what's this mean personally for you? Some tough times in Nebraska. You lead the Huskers to a perfect season this year. I tell you, I I've had so many ups and downs. This feels so great. But without these guys right here, Taylor Hoskins and the rest of my guys, I never could have done it. These guys stood by me the whole time, and I'm just so proud of them and so proud of this team. What the big Hoss is doing the second half? I tell you what, you saw what they were doing. They were blowing <laughs> holes in those guys. I mean, I, I was cramping up in history touchdowns. So I need to get my butt in better shape. Your thoughts right now about the victory? What are you thinking about right now? I'm just proud to be a part of this team, proud to be a, a player for Coach Osborne, and I just want to enjoy this with my friends. All right, Scotty. Good. Thanks a lot, man. We appreciate it. We got Grant Ritt Wistrom over here. Grant, what does this victory mean Lance, to you? Lance Brown. Lance Brown. I'll tell you what it means. We got a great shot of winning the national championship with all that Coach Osborne deserves Hang to win the national championship. He's been the most consistent coach of the last 25 years. For him to go out on anything less than a national championship would be a shame. You guys gave the voters really something to think about tonight. I think so. I mean, we beat the number two team in the country, the number seven, the number three, the number 20. We all beat the crap out of all of them. I mean, who can't vote us number one? Great way to send the coach off. Yep, number one, babe. We're going out on top. All right, Grant. Grant Wistrom, so thanks for the memories, man. It's been a lot of fun, man. We appreciate it. All thanks right. We also have Lance Brown here from Papaya La Vista. Lance, your thoughts on the victory tonight. Look what he's holding up, folks. Lance, what are your thoughts on the win? Right here. All I got to say is this says it all right here. You know, the voters and all that, it doesn't matter. We're number one. We know we're number one in Nebraska. We know we're number one. We come out and dominate the number three team in the nation, and they had, to, they had trouble struggling with, what, number seven, eight, nine? It doesn't matter. One play, and they could have lost. There was, there was about 18 plays out here that we show that we are the number one team in the nation. What's it mean to send T.O. off on a win? This was for T.O. This right here is for T.O. We knew coming into this game that this is going to be his last game. And what we try to do is we try to go out and play one of the best games we possibly could, except for a few turnovers. We did that. Did we you did. do anything differently in the second half that allowed you to get that win? Uh, they, they, they were tired. We, we were beating them up. We were beating them up downfield, you know, in the trenches everywhere. Okay. They, they didn't want to play anymore. It was obvious they didn't want to play anymore. Lance, thanks a lot, man. We appreciate it. Thanks so much for sticking around. John Glenn. We've got uh, one of the most gutsy football players you're going to find, fullback Joe McAvicka. Joe, you are hurt. You came through. What does this victory mean not only for you but the entire squad? Uh, it was something where I wasn't going to come out of the game. Uh, I mean, it's Coach Osmond's last game, a national championship game, and this is what you live for if you're in athletics, and I didn't want to come out, and, and I was real scared because it's a thing you can't play with, and I, we played through it, and this team showed a lot of heart all year, and that's what I wanted to do, and we came through and played well. Can you not get the national championship. You guys deserve it if any team does. Uh, yeah, I, I think we showed we were the most dominant team in college football and, and it showed tonight and, and uh, it'll all work out for us. Joel, congratulations on 13-0 national champs. Thanks. Thanks, you bet you. Thanks a lot, Joel McAvicka. Huh? What a win, Johnny. Huh? Unbelievable win. You know, you came out in the third quarter, they came out with the double tight ends, dared Tennessee to stop them right off the gut. Tennessee could not. If this team doesn't deserve a national championship, I haven't seen one. You know, I don't know what else they have to do. They go 13-0, and, and as Grant said, they beat a ton of teams ranked in the top 25. They dominate Tennessee tonight. It was never a game, and the Huskers, they deserve a shot of the national. They deserve a piece of the national championship. Tennessee was number three. There's right. no doubt about that. Nebraska crushed the number three team in the country. If you look at that compared to what Michigan did, Michigan played what everybody thought was a great schedule. Right. It was not a great schedule. They played a soft Penn State team, a soft Iowa team, and a very soft Ohio State team toward the end. The, Mich the, the uh, Big Ten teams were soft in the bowl games. This was something else. Great execution by the offensive line. They blew them off. Great job by Green, Scott Frost. Perfection running the offense. And, and, and you've got to feel great for that kid. He had some tough times, and he really picked himself up and showed what he's all about. Third team, all Big 12, I don't think so. This kid ran the offense. 
One of the best offenses in the country ran right at Tennessee. Tennessee had nine, ten guys in the box. Tennessee put everybody up, said Nebraska run at us. Nebraska did just that in the third quarter. Everybody kept saying, why did Nebraska have success? It wasn't Tennessee missed tackles. It was Nebraska's sheer determination going right at the heart of the Volunteers' middle. Unbelievable performance by the big, beefy guys up front. At one time, the Huskers last year, you know, they had a loss out in Arizona State. They also had the loss to, uh, to Texas in the Big 12 title game. But since then, they haven't lost. Scott's led them to 14 consecutive wins, won a couple of bowl games, 13-0 this year. He's done it all. He really has had a fine career at Nebraska, and I hope folks appreciate what he's done. If anybody has overcome the adversity, it's that young man. He really has got a lot of flack, not only from the media, but from the fans. He's come through 13-0. If you think about that week after week of keeping your mental edge, keeping sharp, keeping on top of your game, except for the Missouri game where they didn't play well, especially in the second half, this team did everything that was asked of it. And if you look back since 1992, right. this team is 60 and three. Unreal, unreal. 60 and three. And not too many teams in college football history have gone 13 and 0. That's a fact too. We got some highlights from the ball game. Let's take a look at some of the action tonight here at the Orange Bowl. The Huskers back again for the second consecutive year. T.O. playing or coaching, of course, his final game, and Peyton Manning, of course, playing his final one for the Volunteers. Early in the first half, first quarter action, one of the stars, early hog with a big punt. What a kick! What did he? Boom, this sucker, 78 yards down at the Husker two-yard line. That rolls inside the five, and it looks like it Yes, sir. Sean McDonough called it down at the two-yard line. 78 yards. The Huskers went three and out and punted. Peyton Manning tried to get the Volunteers going, hit McCullough for 18 yards. Later in a drive on a first down after they converted on third down. Jamal Lewis. Lewis hit hard. Hit by Ralph Brown, awfully hard hit by Ralph Brown. Rucker recovers, Huskers take over on their own 22-yard line. Play action takes And that leads to this. Frost throws. Sheldon Jackson for 26 yards out on third down. Frost. Frost later finds Newcomb on first down for 22 yards. That put it on the 13-yard line. Many adjustments. Up and over and in for a touchdown. A few plays later, Amon Green gets the touchdown. Huskers went 78 yards, eight that plays, led 7 0. Turnover's a big key in the first half for Nebraska. Manny back throws, picked off by Eric Warfield. And look at Warfield go. At the 30. 28 yard return for the Huskers, Eric Warfield. by Sean Bryson. The drive turned into nothing. His father, Bill, was a defensive back on their side. Nebraska had to punt. Jesse Cush back to punt. Jesse. Terry Fair back to oh, another except the uh, punt. It's fumbled and Lance Brown. We just had him on. Lance Brown recovered the uh, fumble. Huskers took over. Cross pitches. About three Shevin plays later, Shevin Wiggins touchdown. Down. Huskers go 15 yards, three plays. Nebraska up 14 0 at 11 28 to play in the first half. It was 14 3 at halftime. Roll play to the fullback. He finds the seat. And we go to the second half now. Line, breaks a tackle, spins out, and then drags Tennyson in an half. Joel Makovica. Frost took off for 24 over, yards. Touchdown. Frost scored the touchdown. Huskers went 80 yards, 12 plays, 21 3. Nebraska 10 11 to go. Play action. hadn't turned it over. I'm not sure Nebraska would have scored in the first half. Frost More Huskers. Amon Green with one. Look at Amon Green go. 43 yards. On third down, takes it to the Tennessee 21 yard line. That sets up the Scott Frost touchdown. Nebraska with 73 yards, six plays, 28 3. Huskers, this baby's about over. Peyton Manning tries to rally Tennessee. He finds Fearless Price with a touchdown here. They went 72 yards on nine plays, 28 9, a two point conversion, no good. But the Huskers put it away on the ensuing kickoff after the touchback. Amon Green on the first play. Look at the central high grad go. Look at him go. 47 yards for Green on first down. And Pear took him down. Green went 47 yards. And then Green gets the touchdown. The Huskers went 80 yards, 14 plays, 35 to 9 after the touchdown by Green. Michigan certainly has. In the fourth quarter, Nebraska added another touchdown. Frost scores another touchdown. Scott Frost made it 42 to 9. His third of the night. Tennessee added a late score to make it 42 17. 
The celebration was on. Here we go. There Huskers ooh. get the victory. Another. And we have with us now a happy gentleman from the state of Nebraska. That's John? Right. Mr. Nebraska here, Governor Ben Nelson. Boy, well, your reaction to this great game? Well, what an outstanding game. And what a way for Tom to go out and for the team. Uh, I don't even think Bo Schembechler can vote Michigan number one over Nebraska this year. Amen, Governor. I agree with you. I was going to say, you're governor. Can you help us out in the polls? Well, I'm going to do everything I can. I, I honestly think when you look at the score of this game, number two beating number three compared to so-called number one beating number number eight and barely skipping by. And what about those last two seconds? Right. I'm just glad that that scorekeeper doesn't add up our time or you and I be twice as old as we are. That's right. That's right. Your impressions on the game, I mean, offense and defense, they were excellent tonight. Well, there's just nothing more they could have done. I, I, obviously, we would like to have had them score a couple more touchdowns in the first half, right. but uh, they took advantage of uh, every miscue that uh, uh, Tennessee gave them or that we made them give, and uh, they just did an outstanding game, both on, on, on the defensive side and the offensive side of the ball. I know it's early, but have you talked to Tennessee's governor yet? No, I haven't. I, I think he's hiding from me up yeah. there. I do have his shirt size. He got to wear a Nebraska shirt. So go. Monday I'll be sending a shirt off to him by Federal Express. And and uh oh and 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 that's going to get there, and he has to wear it a day. One last quick question. This week I saw a couple signs that said Coach Osborne for governor. How would he do? He'd do an outstanding <laughs> job. I, I do need to talk to him about property taxes, though. Okay. <laughs> All right. Governor, thank you so thank much you, for joining John. us. Thank Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy thank you. John Glenn? We are here live with Ann Wilkie, Tom Osborne's daughter. And when you think of tonight, what was going through your mind when you saw your dad last two or three seconds wind up 25 years here at Nebraska? I guess I just kind of looked at him and just thought, wow, is it really 25 years that's gone by? And um, the win is just great. And um, I just, I, there couldn't be a better game to finish out his 25 years. <laughs> Can you put into words how proud you are of him for taking the heat, for, for taking the adversity, for taking the wins, taking the losses, and never waving in this confidence of himself and of the family? Um, I, I've admired him um, so much, especially through the years um, with the Lawrence Phillips problems and um, all of the media. Um, I think he just handled himself great and just did what he knew he needed to do deep down in his heart. Just did what Tom Osborne knew he needed to do. As a family tonight, what will you guys do to celebrate? Um, probably the first thing we'll do is go up to my dad's room and give him a big hug and um, just relax and just celebrate. <laughs> On behalf of the state of Nebraska and all the fans here, the 60,000 fans down here, thank you very much for a long and great career, not only for Tom, but for the family as well. Well, thank you. You bet you. <laughs> that was Ann Wilkie, Tom Osborne's daughter. A huge night for the family. They're going to celebrate it in style, by themselves, very quietly, much like Tom Osborne. Well, absolutely. Her father has meant so much to the people of Nebraska. He could run for governor. He'd win by a landslide. Why? You couldn't run against the guy, right? They, they love the coach. He's done a marvelous job. He's brought us... So much pride he's given to people so, so much over the years. And now it's time for Tom to give back to his family. You bet. If you think about the years he's been here, the consistency, no other program in the country has mastered nine straight wins over 25 years. The bowl games going back to 1969, the streak of bowl games, beating the Alabama streak. The national championships, including this one, will be three in the 90s. Uh, five overall. It's amazing what he's done for this state. It is absolutely incredible. I mean, you look at all of them. All of them across the board, all the powerhouses, historically, John, you know, Alabama, Michigan, USC, Notre Dame, they've all, all of them have taken dips at one time or another. Florida, Tennessee, not Nebraska. Consistency, nine victories, top 10 rankings, top 25 rankings throughout the years. Just absolutely incredible what he's done. And with Tom Osborne at the helm, he also has more academic All-Americans than any other program in the country, more than Notre Dame, more than USC, more than Stanford. When you think about the success he's had in the field, also the achievements in the classroom, no other program can match this. 60 and 3 since 1992. An unbelievable stat. If you just stop and think, 60 victories compared to just three losses. John, I'm going to interrupt you for a second here. We do okay. have the coach's uh, wife, Nancy. Nancy, would you please step over here? Your thoughts, uh, Mrs. Osborne, on, uh, on uh, uh, Tom's final game tonight. 
Well, it was a wonderful ending to just a great ride. We, it couldn't have been better. I loved it. You were so so kind to, to share, Coach, uh, for all these years. What allowed you to uh, What allowed you to do that? I didn't have any choice. <laughs> <laughs> no, it. It, it just happened, you know, we didn't plan it that way, it just happened. We, we, we see Tom and he's so stoic and, and so unemotional. Did, did, was he sentimental at all before the game tonight? Did he talk to you at all about his final game as he, as he got ready to get hit the bus and come over here? No, not at all. He was very focused. I've hardly talked to him all week. He's uh -huh. just like he is every other week, uh, like before he goes into the game. And, uh, and so I knew that, you know, it was going to be a good one mm -hmm. because they were working very, very hard and um, we had a very good opponent. So uh, it just worked out perfectly. I'm very yeah. happy. Absolutely. Mrs. John? Osborne, you told us in Lincoln a couple weeks ago that you weren't going to be sad. You had a game to win. Yes. <laughs> what was this week like for you? Well, that's what it was like. I enjoyed being with all the coaches' wives uh, during the week and their families like we always have. And we did a lot of... Uh, uh, you know, going back over the years and talking about old memories and just had a really nice time. And I, I'm still kind of in denial. I don't think I quite believe that this is all happening yet, but um, it's for the best for Tom, and, and that's what we both want, you know, to have, for him to have some time where he can not work quite so hard. So well, When do you think it's going to sink in? <laughs> Maybe tomorrow morning. I don't know. It just seems kind of unreal right now. So, so uh, T Tom says he has some time on his hands now that he's going to be retired. What, uh, what do you think he's going to be doing with that extra time? Well, I think he's looking for something to put his, uh, you know, energies and his abilities into. I don't think he's going to retire. I think he's just going to change occupations. And uh, I'm sure we'll have some time to do some, uh, you know, traveling and things together uh, in between the two things. And we don't know what it is, but I think something will come along. So that's what we're looking forward to at this time. You're going to have him around the house a lot more. A little bit. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with him, but I'll have him a little bit. Do you fish, by the way? No. <laughs> <laughs> I read books. <laughs> we know Tom spent so much time on, on uh, fishing. Um, through the difficult times, uh, uh, Nancy, what, what got Tom through those uh, very difficult periods? Well, I really think that he would say, first of all, his faith, and um, uh, secondly, just uh, being prepared uh, for things that the best he possibly mm -hmm. could be. And, uh, you know, being able to, to look at it uh, objectively and not get sucked into, you know, this is the end of the world if bad things right. happen. So I've, got have, to ask you, I've got to ask you one quick can question. This will be the last this one. Will be yeah. the last <laughs> one. We'll let you go. We've had fans all this week be very emotional about Tom's leaving. How does that touch you when you see people? They're happy that he's going because he's got his, you know, he's going to have time with you and the rest of the family, but they're really sad to see him go. I mean, how does that touch you? Well, it's been very touching uh, uh, and kind of overwhelming. I think the, the reaction to it. Uh, kind of surprised us both. It's, it's nice to know people care about you like that, and I think they really have, and that's been wonderful. Thank you for thank sharing you. with us. On behalf us. of the people of Nebraska, Nancy, thanks so much uh, for sharing time with us. Thank you. Alrighty. Thank you. Appreciate it. Enjoy. Nancy Osborne, we have Mike Osborne, Mike's son, or Tom's son. Mike, uh, your thoughts on Dad's final game? Well, I've known it was coming for a while, uh -huh. and I, like he was pretty focused on the actual game until the last five minutes or so, and then got a little nostalgic, but it was a great way to go out. What did you think in just the last couple seconds? You watched the clock going down, and you know it's an end of an era here. I don't know. It, it was a great feeling because it's such a great win, and um, he's looking forward to moving on to other things, and it's time for him to do that, and you can't ask for a better way to go out. Mike, um, what was it like growing up the son of a legend in Nebraska? Well, a lot of people ask me that, and I don't know anything different, uh -huh. so I can't really compare it to anything. But I'd say is like the, the child of any person who's really busy on the road a lot. You don't see him as much as you'd like to, but I, I'm very proud of the time he's been able to spend with other young men mm -hmm. and make an impact that way, an impact in a lot of lives. And if I had to miss a couple bedtime stories here and there, that's fine. Um, I'm just really proud of him. Let me ask you all week. Uh, mm -hmm. We've heard fans just get very emotional about, um, you know, the coach leaving and that. And how does that touch you when you hear that, you know, people are crying and they see the coach and this is his last game? I mean, how does that make you feel? Well, that's very nice that people care that much about him. And uh, But he's not dead. He'll still be around. <laughs> you can still see him every now and then. And uh, it's really a good time for him to do this, and I'm happy for him. You know, your father, will, I, your father won't pick out one particular thing and say, I'm most proud of this or most proud of that. What about you? Is there one particular thing you're proud of most that your father and his teams have accomplished in the last 25 years? Oh, there's so much. It's, it's hard to say. On the field, 
unparalleled excellence. Off the field, unparalleled excellence. A lot of times uh, it goes by the media, all the academic All-Americans and, uh, and the focus on that. But he's really gone beyond that, and he tries to create in them a spiritual side, too. And I think you see that maybe not right after they're gone, mm -hmm. but sometimes 10 and 15 years later. And I think that's great. A great ride, hasn't it? Yeah, it sure has. But yeah. it wouldn't hurt to get one more national title with the voters tomorrow. Yeah, if they have any intelligence, they'll do the right thing. There you go, there Mike. You go. Thanks so much. We appreciate it. Thanks uh, for sharing Pop for all those years. Boy, what a wonderful family Tom has had. And you see the backbone, his wife, his, his son, and also Ann. He has another daughter, Susie. And it's just just an incredible ride, a fine family. So it's, it's been a great ride. We have Ron Brown with us now. Hey, big man. Hey, nice win, huh? How you feeling right now, huh? Great. Super. We're just really proud of the players. I mean, man, those guys really played with tremendous focus, intensity, and uh, what, what could you ask for more? What did you guys do in the second half differently that really allowed you to take control of the game and open it up? Well, I'll tell you what happened uh, offensively in, in the first half. We could see, particularly in the first quarter, their defensive backs really uh, very close to the line of scrimmage, right. sniffing around there. We had to open things up a little bit with some play-action passes. We got into that double wing set. Uh, not only did we hit some passes, but we were able to run some options with uh, Shevin and, uh, and Bobby. Uh, so that really helped loosen things up. And then, of, of course, we were able to start to pound them. The kids just physically wore them out. Uh -huh. Our defense obviously did a great job getting the ball back for us, not letting long, sustained drives. And uh, we wore their defense out, just a lot of physical play. Ron, it looked, uh, I'm sorry, Rich, no, go ahead, John. It looked like they were looking for your outside game, the option game, and you were just pounding up the middle the whole night. I mean, it seems like you guys really surprised them tonight. We heard them with some options early on. And uh, anytime you get the ball to, to the perimeter early on, I think that's going to loosen things up in the middle. We're able to run what we call 43-47 dive, uh, uh, particularly out of a slot set back toward the tight end. And, and uh, Amon was able to, with his speed, break some things down the field. The kids really did a tremendous job blocking, and uh, it was relentless. Any emotion tonight out of Coach, uh, you know, before you guys came over here in the locker room or you, at, at any time at all? Well, I, I knew and we all knew that he was sad about this thing, and uh, we knew that it was a very difficult thing for him. Um, and there will be probably some se second thoughts for him as time goes on. He'll, he'll, he'll debate with the, the facts versus feelings thing, but I really believe he's doing a good thing for him. I, I know that he's really thought prayed it through and I, I'm looking forward to the next chapter of his life I think uh, the Lord's got a great plan for his life continuing on and uh, he's done his job as a head football coach but he's a great man he's more than just a coach Ron you've got voters out there tonight scratching their heads hopefully erasing those ballots if they've already filled them out any messages I mean yeah there's, no, look good. there's nothing to scratch your heads about I mean it's pretty obvious Amen. I would think I mean uh, yet, uh, you know, I, I can't, um, Lord willing, will win the national championship. It's up to the Lord God and, and how he inspires those uh, poll writers. But I think the kids really played uh, at, at the best football that, that we could imagine them playing. And I don't know that anybody played any better in America and, all year. And, you know, coaches talk, folks, about uh, the machine just moving on. You plug in another guy, you plug in a Frank Solich. And this is one of the guys right here that allows the machine to move on. Good and quality people like Ron Brown. Just a small cog in it. I thank the Lord for the opportunity to be here. You're doing a great job, Ron. We appreciate it, all right? All right. Thank hey, nice you win, Coach, huh? All right. Congrats Thanks so much. Happy New Year. You Happy too, New Coach. Year. We appreciate it. Well, wow, the coach is right. You know, I mean, it's a no-brainer. you got right. to give Nebraska right. half this thing. Right. 13-0. and 0. Full victories. Na wins over the teams ranked in the top ten. They beat Washington convincingly at home. Unbelievable. Right. you got to give a half to you got to give it to them. And, uh, I mean, no excuses. This team, honestly, Scott Frost summed it up. They get Michigan on this field tonight. Even yeah. Michigan with a day rest, a week rest, a month rest. Don't beat Nebraska them. is going to roll. Yeah, let's, let's, just t let's just go to Ann Arbor, go to Lincoln somewhere, <laughs> play the game. Hey, let's go to Omaha right now. Lots happening down here, but some things happening in Omaha as well, so let's go up to Omaha. Okay, guys. Hey, I noticed Grant Wistrom, Jason Peter didn't take a chance on dumping that water. They couldn't wait for the game to end, could they? No, uh-uh. All righty, Rich. We'll check back with you in a little bit. As Rich okay. said, there's a big party going on in Miami, but there's also one right here. We take you out live now to 72nd and Dodge. That's the spot when the Huskers win big, and Mary Williams is out there. Mary? You know what, Loretta, the fans started showing up here, I would say, about the beginning of the fourth quarter. That's when they figure the Huskers had things wrapped up. You can hear them. They are pretty wired tonight. Let's take a look around. Can you see? We've got a good-sized crowd here. I would guess 
anywhere from five to seven hundred and growing, and I mean growing at a rapid pace. Police have shut off the intersection. There is no way to get to this intersection except on foot. And as I said, they are still arriving here. I don't know where they're parking, but they're here. Now, the crowd has gotten a little rough at times. They are throwing beer in the crowd, and we have seen glass bottles as well. We are seeing fireworks go off. If you take a look up at this point, whoo, we've got things coming our direction too. If you take a look up, there's a gentleman up on the marquee right now, and he's kind of egging the crowd on. There were at one at one time there were about 600, or excuse me, six people up there, and they were leading the crowd in Go Big Red. Uh, police have tr police have tried to keep uh, tabs on this crowd, but I got to tell you, I can see a lot of officers, but they are far outnumbered at this point. A big party going on here, mostly young people, but there are a lot of people coming out now. Families, uh, young kids, dogs wearing the Go Big Red colors. They want, at this point, the Huskers to be the national champs. We'll see what happens. But again, take a look at the crowd. Can you... We've got some very, very big fireworks going off right now. The police helicopter is overhead. I, I gotta tell you, I don't know how police are going to keep uh, tabs on this crowd, because it, it is growing rapidly. And like I said, things are getting a little bit out of hand with some of the people here. Okay. We're gonna back to you. Mary, it's looking a little bit like New York City on New Year's Eve or something like that. Um, I think we'll be back to you in the next few minutes. Uh, so far, though, everything under control. So far, everything under control. Again, this seems to be the place to be. Just a few people getting uh, a little uh, rowdy at this point. I think they've picked a national champion, wouldn't you say? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> there is another gathering going on right now. Fans all over the state, of course, glued to the game. Now, if you were with our pregame show, Channel 3's Jennifer Wint Windrum was live at one of the biggest gatherings, Nebraska fans at the convention center at Harvey's Casino. She's been with these folks for hours now, so she knows them pretty well. And uh, uh, judging from what I see out there, they haven't lost any energy. Yes, I do, and I hope you're finished talking. I can't really hear you now, but we're having our own 72nd Dodge party here. It's pretty crazy, as you can see. These people have not had enough of us out here. Let's take a listen here. No one here is going to dispute that whatsoever. I can't tell you though, when Lou Holtz was on, there were several booths, and when Craig James came on, everybody cheered, and that was about it. But you know, even if we don't get the national championship, people say we deserve to win, but they'll always be number one in their hearts anyway. And I'm going to talk to a couple people here, and, and obviously, we want to talk to a couple people here, and, and obviously, everyone here thinks that we should be number one. Can you tell me why? Because we deserve it for Tom Osborne. Okay. I noticed there were a lot of emotions here as well. I saw some tears in the crowd earlier. What's your feeling here? Oh, we're just real happy that Nebraska did so well tonight. Yeah. Were you emotional here when, you know, at the end? There was a lot of cheering, yes, and a lot of standing up on chairs. <laughs> there, there was. There was a standing ovation here. And as I said, I don't know if you can hear me, when Lou Holtz came on, what did everybody do? <laughs> but when Craig James came on... <laughs> I don't think I have to explain that one to you. All right, Jim, we're just going to put you in touch with all those voters on the polls, I think. Okay, <laughs> we'll I check, think our votes matter. We'll check back with you a little bit later. Nebraska's obviously of like mind tonight, and uh, we're going to take you back to Miami where there's plenty going on, guys. Uh, Loretta, we've got one vote that's already in. This one's from Husker Illustrated. Little there you go. Here, but there it is. We're number one. This will be the new cover of the magazine. A great salute to Coach Tom Osborne. It says at the bottom, thanks for 25 years, Coach. I don't know if you can sum it up any better than that. We're number Absolutely. one, right? That's right. I, I would think so. Again, what can you do? You're 13-0. and 0. You've won every game you've, you've had to play. You won a Big 12 championship. You've you got to be uh, ranked number one. And they booed Lou Holtz. Oh, gee, I wonder why. <laughs> what was Lou saying before the game? Uh, he, he was, was talking picking about for Tennessee, yeah, right? right? He was picking right. Tennessee. And, of course, Craig James said the Huskers are going to win. And Craig, Craig's a smart guy in the bunch. <laughs> hey, we heard a little bit of T.O. At the end of the ball game, the uh, the press conference at CBS. Have, we have some more stuff uh, from the coach, a little post game stuff. So let's go to that videotape now and hear some uh, post game comments from Coach Osborne. Special. We uh, kept doing the things we've been doing. We saw a few things uh, as the second quarter unraveled. I think early in the game, uh, Tennessee did a great job. They really crowded the line of scrimmage. They took some of the things away from us. Uh, we hit three or four passes. Scott threw okay. the ball exceptionally well. Uh, out of that stuff? Made some great throws. 
and that kind of got them off our backs and then we began to get a few things working and I guess uh, the style of offense we play it's a little bit of a shell game you know they take one thing away we go to another thing and pretty soon I think we just got them off balance and then we wore them down a little bit and uh, it's a physical style of football it's just knocking people down and eventually that takes a toll and I think as the game went along it looked like that uh, became a real factor in the ball game. Anything else, uh, Paul? I know you tried to make this just another game. Any point today, whether it was before the game or during the game, did it really hit you that it is different? Well, I'm, I'm very aware of it. Uh, you know, this has been a very difficult week. Uh, I would have much preferred to have gone away in the spring. Uh, I think an, an ideal scenario for me would have been to uh, go through recruiting, go through spring ball, and then uh, disappear in May. And uh, but I, I, you know, uh, the uh, attention has been nice, but it's something I'd really rather not have. And uh, and it's been difficult to keep everybody focused on the game. But I think the players did a great job of that. I didn't think it was fair to the recruits if I recruited a bunch of players and then knew, knowing I was going to leave, and so I didn't want to do that. But anyway. Uh... And we're back here at Pro Player Stadium with us, uh, John Glenn, once again, and Coach Solich. Coach, a uh, great win. Well, thank you. Yeah, we, we think it's a great one. We'll take it. Nice one to go out. A nice one for Coach to go out on and, for, of course, for you to come in on. Yeah, there, there's no question it's a, a great win uh, for Coach Osborne and the team, and I know they wanted to perform like this. Uh, on, in his last game, and, and so we're real pleased with uh, with how how it all came out. John, Frank, what are your thoughts on this team, and also you taking over? Uh, a milestone the baton has been passed to you. What are your thoughts right now as the next and new head coach, University of Nebraska? Well, we need to uh, get to work on next year. I, I know that. Um, I'm excited about it. I'm really looking forward to it. We've got a great nucleus of players coming back. They've got a tremendous work ethic. They're in a program that they uh, they believe in one another, and and we've got a great coaching staff and. I think when you add that up, um, we'll be fine, and, and we're really looking forward to um, to next season and uh, to, to really get things rolling and continue to roll for Nebraska. Has this sunk in yet? I mean, this is something big. This isn't just another day for you. Well, it is uh, it is big, uh, but yet, um, you know, I, I've watched Coach Osborne perform for certainly the 19 years that I've been in the program, and, and I think I've learned a great deal from him. He's a tremendous man. Um, uh, We've got, like I said, uh, a lot of good players in the system, great coaches, and so we're looking forward to continuing to move the, the program uh, in the same direction that it's been going. One of those great players just passed by a bond. <laughs> well, what's his future for, do you think? Well, I don't know. You know, uh, we're trying to get as much information as we can from the NFL people uh, so that Amon will be able to make a good decision, and, and he's been patient with that and, and is certainly um, looking forward to getting that information, and then he'll just make the decision based on that. And, Certainly would love to have him back. He's uh, just a great back. He's very unselfish and a tremendous talent and been a real joy to work with. Um, I'd love to work with him another year. But, uh, but, but if it works out um, the way it could work out for him in terms of uh, where he, he may possibly get drafted, if it's very high, then, then I would understand uh, his decision to go if that's what his decision would be. Frank, that was typical Nebraska. Vintage Husker in the second half. Is that what you guys expected, that you would just wear him down again in the third quarter? Well, we'd hoped that that was going to be the case. You know, they, they played very uh, strong uh, early, and they were very physical early. We did find a couple sets that really hurt them, and we were able to move the ball continuously and keep our offense on the field, their defense on the field, uh, through uh, using just a couple sets, and then that really wore them down. And I, I think it got to the point where uh, they were physically tired to, uh, to where they, they were not able to really stop much at, towards the end of the game. So uh, the game plan in that regard worked uh, like we had hoped it would. The, the set, the double tight end, the double wings in the backfield, and you're running the counter off that. It doesn't seem like they could stop it. Well, it's been a set that we've used sparingly throughout the season, and um, it just happened that uh, we added a few more plays to it for the bowl game, and, and they seemed to work well. And um, that, that set was very good, and also a wide set with one tight end and two wides uh, in, in the opposite direction uh, seemed to work very well. We saw a few plays that other teams uh, had used against them that, that ran fairly well, uh, that they had run fairly well, and so we thought we'd have a chance with those two. And as it turned out, uh, as the game went on, we, we moved the ball very well. We'll let you get back to the national media. Frank, okay. Frank thanks for stopping by. Thank you. Thanks so much, Coach. We appreciate it. Thank Congratulations. You, All right. All right. Good luck next year, Frank. Appreciate it. Okay. All right, let's bring in uh, number 30. There you MVP. go. MVP. Sweet, baby. Come on. How you doing? Central <laughs> High grad. Yeah. We're proud of you. Yeah. 
Uh, what those big hosses do in front of you in front of you tonight? Huh? They clear some paths for you or what? Oh, yeah, they they open up the chuck wagon. I mean, them big hosses up front, they did their job. They did what they were recruited for to come here in Nebraska. Open up some big holes for the eye backs and the fullbacks and the quarterbacks, and that's what they did all game long. You're holding this trophy. Hold that thing up. And yeah, let's this, see that. What huh? does this mean to you? Oh, that means a great deal. You know, I didn't. I say the offense as a whole didn't get a lot of respect, and myself didn't get a lot of respect, and this this is. This tears that all the way. I mean, I got a little respect in this game, and our offense, we just rolled. I got to give my credit to my line. They, we rolled all game long, more majority in the second half. When you look at this team, is there anything else you guys could do? I really don't know. We can run the ball. We can pass the ball. We got a great defense, so I say there's not much flawless, flawless there. Are you, Come on. are you number one? Um, I'm not going to answer that. That's something, that's something out of our <laughs> Come control. Come on, Amon, huh? That's something out of our control. I mean, we did what we can control, and that was beat Tennessee tonight. Come on, what about your future now? Are you going to be back running the ball for the Huskers next year, or are you thinking about the NFL? What's the deal? The deal is I'm going to give it a couple of days to think about it, and I'll let you all know Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever, and then everybody in the country will know. What do you think? Uh, what's going to be the de deciding factor, do you believe? Um... I really don't know. I'm going to look at it like I did in college when I was getting recruited in high school and my decision in college, you know, how I feel about it, how my, how my family feels about it, and how the coaches feel about it. I can know? guarantee you that the 20,000, 30,000 fans here voice their approval. They want you back next year. Uh, I think so because, I mean, I did a great job. I mean, my line, I can't say I. I don't know why I said that. My team <laughs> and I did a great team out here, did a great game out here, and just give it, we, I say, get it all to our fans. Right? Come on, thanks a lot. We've certainly appreciated watching you grow from your years at Central High School now here at Nebraska. And if you do leave us, uh, we wish you all the luck in the world, but hopefully you'll be back with us. We appreciate it. Thanks, Amon man. Green, MVP for the Huskers. What a great game he had. We have Chad Kelsey. Come on in here, Chad. Get in there, Chad. Right. Nice game, big guy. <laughs> Good job, Chad. You guys dominated, huh? It went well. I mean, uh, we thought coming in the game that we could really beat up on them a little bit. Uh, didn't think they'd seen anybody as physical as us, so, I mean, game plan went well. What were your thoughts about Peyton Manning facing uh, the Heisman Trophy runner-up? I mean, he's a great quarterback. I mean, probably most most credentials coming at you that we've seen all year. So uh, getting to go against a quarterback like that is something that, I mean, everybody on our D-line was looking forward to. And then to get in and get a couple shots yeah. on that, I mean, that's nice, too. Can you describe what the feeling was like when you jumped on top of these guys, especially in the third quarter? You pinned your ears back. What was the feeling like in that D-line? I mean, it was great. I mean, it makes you think back to the Florida game a little bit. I mean, <laughs> when, when uh, I mean the offense is just rolling. Everything they're doing is just yard after yard. And then when we started shutting them down and getting after them a little bit, it was something that, I mean, it really felt good. Were they talking? Could you tell they were getting tired? Yeah, I mean, every, I mean, they're at the end of the second quarter. I mean, that surprised me. I mean, the, you could already tell that they were getting tired at the end of the second. I mean, and then in the third and fourth, I mean, they were dragging really hard. So uh, um, they started talking a little bit. They were getting discouraged. So, I mean, we just kept coming after him, and things ended up well. Here you are, a, a Nebraska boy. You grow up and you play for Tom Osborne, and you send him off with a victory. What's that mean for, uh, for Chet Kelf? everything. I mean, uh, you come in to play for a coach like Tom Osborne. Um, I mean, everybody, you got all the hype, the Michigan hype for this game, who should be number one. But I mean, undoubtedly, everybody on this team was playing for Coach Osborne, and, and the number one goal is to send him out a winner, right. regardless of, of what happens in the national championship polls. So, uh, I mean, to send him out a winner, I mean, growing up and watching him coach, I mean, it's going to be a change not to be able to uh, say that he's the head coach anymore. What about Frank Solich taking over the range? You're back next year. You've got eight or nine starters on defense. You're going to have six or seven on offense. Is, is Tempe too much to ask? I don't think so. I mean, that, that's going to be the goal. I mean, we just got done uh, playing the Orange Bowl this year, and I know there's already guys in there talking about, well, we got to get ready and do the same thing next year. So uh, I don't think we'll miss a step, and I know I'm really looking forward to uh, playing under Coach Solich. Would you like that uh, Michigan-Nebraska matchup in Tempe next year? Of course. I mean, uh, <laughs> it's a shame that it couldn't happen this year with the two undefeated teams, but, I mean, the way the system set up, I mean, it just didn't happen. But, uh, I mean, we're confident that, and we feel that we are the best team in the nation, and hopefully that will carry through with some of the voters. Well, hopefully the voters are going to vote uh, correctly and, and allow the Huskers to wake up at least with a, a piece of the national yes, championship. Sir. Chad, thanks a lot. We appreciate all right. it. All right. Thanks, Chad. Yeah. Good season. Russia, Chad, Kelsey, another big factor in the Huskers championship season. Let's go back up to the Big O and see what's going up there. All right, Rich, can't believe it. We're already talking about another championship. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back to you in a few minutes. Okay. And we still have plenty more people ahead. You haven't heard from everyone. We'll be right back. This winter, get ready for the ride of your life. It's Popeye's Blues Brothers 2000 Movie Sweepstakes. Win a Bluesmobile, a Mardi Gras vacation, or a trip to Universal Studios Hollywood. Also starring Popeye's Chicken. Three pieces for only $1.99. Or 11 for only $7.99. 
see why critics are calling this the most powerful chicken of the year. That's three pieces for $1.99 or 11 for $7.99. This sweepstakes has not yet been rated. You gotta surround yourself with talented people, stay focused, and work hard. Norwest salutes Tom Osborne's 25 years of winning with Tom's Loan Challenge. Take the challenge by applying for any new Norwest loan of $5,000 or more. If you qualify, you'll get a free commemorative jacket or flag. It's nice to know Norwest is as proud as I am to be part of Nebraska. Nebraska can make all the winners. For the first time ever, Nebraska Furniture Mart is giving free two-year warranties on all appliances and electronics priced $2.99 or more. And you know what that means. Plus, pay nothing down and make no payments till July on furniture, flooring, appliances, and electronics. And you know what that means. This 30-inch GE self-cleaning range is now sale priced at $299. For GE quality and a free two-year warranty, there's only one place to be. And you know where that is. Well, we spent lots of time in Miami. Now we want to go back out to 72nd and Dodge. Started out there at about 9 o'clock. There were about 200 people. Plenty more out there now. Mary? Hey, Loretta, you know what? The game may be over in Miami, but the party is just beginning here. It is an open invitation. Come one, come all, and they are still coming. I tell you what, if the lights are out at your neighbor's house, they're probably here. And I tell you what, the Huskers are in charge. Take a look at this crowd. They have been screaming non-stop, go Big Red, since about 10, 10.30 this evening. There are a lot of people in the crowd, obviously wearing red, some wearing nothing at all. There's one gentleman running around here in his Husker underwear. Um, earlier this evening, we had some trouble in the crowd with people throwing things, glass bottles, beer bottles, and as you can hear right now, they are uh, banging on the crossroads marquee, but other than that, not a lot of trouble out here tonight. We're seeing some fireworks set off. As you can imagine, they've taken over the street, so there's no coming down 72nd and Dodge. you got to find another way home tonight or stop by the party. I think that's what they're planning on. Loretta? <laughs> Mary, it's not midnight yet. It looks like this crowd is going to be hanging out there for some time. I tell you what, this crowd is fired up. And you know, the funny thing is, Fuddruckers, I don't know if you can see Fuddruckers across the street. They set up a beer garden tonight. Not a lot of people showed up at the beer garden. Uh, they're all here in the street. I think they'd rather party in the street. And again, quite a crowd. They have seen, for the most part, believe it or not, settle down a little bit. <laughs> That's hard to believe, I know. They are all carrying signs, not all, but a lot of them carrying signs saying, we are the national champs. One guy brought by a sign just a few minutes ago that says, do you believe in miracles? We'll see you tomorrow morning. Okay, Mary. Gosh, makes me wonder what the crowd will be like tomorrow at the Devaney Center <laughs> in Lincoln. I can only imagine. Could be something to see. Yes. Okay, we'll check back. Now we're going to go back to Miami. We hear Coach Osborne talking all the time about the tremendous coaching staff and the trainers and all the people who have made this happen. Rich and John are with some of those folks right now. That's Thanks right. a lot, uh, Loretta. I'm sorry, John. No, Team no. psychologist Jack Stark with us. They're partying in Omaha. <laughs> Jack, Jack, did you? Uh, uh, well, how did you tell the kids to get ready for this one? Well, we knew that there was going to be a problem if Michigan had won last night, and we watched. We stayed in the locker room and watched the game, and we had great elation. We thought they were going to maybe pull it out, mm -hmm. and then there was real disappointment. And it's the best word I think was disappointment, frustration. So I knew that that could happen. So we prepared a tape, and we, we went, got on the bus, went right back to uh, the hotel, and immediately went into a team meeting. And in the team meeting, coach talked about still there's hope. And then we showed a tape, a 10-minute tape. And the tape was a refocus tape, a tape to focus on what are we playing for. And it was dedicated to each of the assistant mm -hmm. coaches. And then there was a, a segment that was very emotional on dedicating the season and, and this game for Coach Osmond. And it worked, <laughs> obviously. It was, it was, uh, it really got him going, and I'm glad we didn't play last night. It gave us a whole day to think about it, so that, that really pulled everybody together. Doctor, this hasn't been just an emotional night. It's been an emotional 10 days for these guys. Wherever they go, they get asked the question from us guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's Coach's last game. How did you get them to handle this? I mean, they were very professional this week, and they yeah. thought about football. Um, I was most amazed at Coach Osborne's ability to block out. He's always been a person that could really focus down and would deflect that for the team. And they've always, re they've always been ones who take on his personality. Mm -hmm. And they did it with this, and they were able to block that out. But um, the pregame tape just tonight before we left, and the emotion in the locker room was way high. 
I mean, they wanted to win this one for their coach. They love the coach. And if you look at every game that we dedicated a, a game to this coach, you go back and look. Oklahoma this year, mm -hmm. uh, we dedicated it. And when we had trouble a couple of years ago at Arizona State, after the Michigan State game, when we had one of our players get in trouble, every time they played for the coach, they blow a team out. And that's how much he means to these players. We hear a lot, too, about hype. You know, we heard the hype about it was Coach Osborne's last game. It was Peyton Manning's last game. It looked more like Tennessee was the fidgety team early on. Um, yeah, we, we knew we would, they would have some resistance, but we knew that we would wear them down, which has always been our style, the physicalness of, of our whole program. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes it can take a toll on us. I talked to the team earlier this year about the ninth week is the week that we're most vulnerable, I think, because we get kind of wore down. Once we get that, get our second win, where we can pretty, do pretty well. You saw what happened. These coaches, nobody can out-coach them. The second half they came out, we made a few adjustments, and boom, we just kept blowing through them. So the guys were very emotional. Um, but they kept it inside, and they turned it and used it to be able to motivate them. Jack Stark, thanks so much. We appreciate Thank it. You. See you guys. Later. Thanks, All right, sir. team psychologist Jack Stark. We've got somebody else here. Bobby, Bobby Nuka. Come on over, big guy. Albert, the here pride of Albuquerque. Bobby, we have, a, we have a question here for you. We called you a game breaker, a difference maker. What was it like out there tonight? You had the ball in your hands a couple of times. What was it like? Well, I was trying everything I could to try and get it in the end zone, especially <laughs> a couple of times when I had it down close, but it just didn't come out. When you look at this team, how dominant were you guys tonight taking on the volunteers? Um, the first half we came out, we tried to punish them, you know, wear them down a little bit and then take over in the second half, and that's what we did. Bobby, Bobby, now you told me before the game that you'll play wherever you feel the coach thinks you're needed. Now next year, be honest with us now, where do you think you should play? <laughs> what position you want to play? You want to be behind the center? Um, you know, I like to just be on the field, you know. If it's, if it's a receiver, I like to be out on the field anywhere. I see he's being diplomatic again. Very <laughs> diplomatic. <laughs> okay, let me ask you this. Where will you start out the spring? <laughs> wow, you're just jumping at the questions. <laughs> uh, I'll probably start out the spring at either quarterback or wingback. Probably quarterback. You heard it here first, though, folks. <laughs> and it seems like, Bobby, it seems like you have an extra step. John says it seems like you got an afterburn. Another gear, man. You really turn it up. Do you feel that way, too, sometimes? Um, yeah, a lot of times, especially on the reverses, I seem to be waiting a little bit and then finally trying to turn it on at the last second. And, you know, I'm just waiting for my opportunity to turn it on real well. Did you ever imagine it would be like this coming from Albuquerque, your first year here, playing basically a national title game uh, in front of all these fans, going 13-0? and Well, this is Nebraska, you know. This happens <laughs> quite a bit. And, you know, it's, it's just a great experience. And I kind of, I had a hunch that we'd be in a, you know, big-time game like this, but I didn't think it'd be... I had no imagination that it would be like this. What kind of experience does this give you being in the huddle this year? What kind of experience does that bring you next year in the huddle? Oh, that just brings me a lot of game experience. I was calling the plays to Scott Frost, and he was calling to the <laughs> offensive line. So I was basically playing quarterback at wingback. You know, I was learning all the audibles and the blocking schemes and all that kind of stuff. I was just playing different positions. We were talking a second ago. You can't get hit any harder returning a punt than you can strung out in the option. Yeah, I got got a few hits, especially against Iowa State this year. And then, you know, this game I got hit a few times and the blocking and a lot of things that you do a wing back, you get hit, you get pounded pretty good. Bobby, I'm ahead, sorry, John. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, Bobby, thanks a lot. We certainly appreciate you okay. sticking around and, and talking with us. It's been a great ride this year and hopefully see more of you next year, no matter whatever position it might be, <laughs> wing back, quarterback, wherever. Just on the field. That's right, just on the <laughs> thanks, field. Okay, Bobby, Bobby thanks a lot. Next year. We'll have more coverage. Operation Orange Bowl continues. We'll have more right after this. Well, it's almost over. Your chance to get big savings. But there's still time. It's the Chevy Make Your Money Count year-end event, where you can get low 2.9 APR financing or great cashback savings on a huge selection of Chevy cars and trucks. We call it a great deal on the 98 Chevy of your dreams. But you better hurry, because if you don't get to the Chevy Make Your Money Count year-end event by January 5th, it's like out. Make your money count today at your local Chevy dealer. Most office furniture stores don't have much variety to offer. Rowley. non Rowley. Rowley, non Rowley. And this one comes in blue. But Office Furniture USA has a huge selection, so paying less doesn't mean having less choice. You can adjust the height and halfway expense, too. <laughs> office Furniture USA. 50% off every day. Why do these events always seem to run out of cool, stylish stuff by the time you get there? Before you can say rain check, it's Lando Leftovers. Why is getting the good selection of the good stuff such a big deal? Should be a non-event. 
There's plenty of driving excitement at your Pontiac dealer. Get 2.9% APR GMAC financing or $1,250 cash back on Grand Am. That's got to be an impulse buy. Get a great value and great selection at your hometown Pontiac dealer. We've got a huge crowd celebrating a uh, championship game, winning the Orange Bowl, and apparently now some commotion out there. Mary Williams joins us live. Mary, what's going on? Tell you what, it's a little hard to hear you, Loretta, but I can tell you they're celebrating a little too much out here. I believe we have some tape we can show you. There are two uh, rescue squads out here right now. If we don't have that tape, let me tell you what happened. We have two rescue squads out here right now. Just a few minutes ago, one of them was called in to help a gentleman who was hit in the head. There we go. Who was hit in the head with a beer bottle. Now, he was not severely injured, but I've got to tell you, the crowd is, uh, again, pretty, pretty wired out here. They are throwing beer bottles, and a lot of them are glass bottles. To tell you how crazy it is, we are on top of our live truck. We had to move up here to get out of the crowd, and they are shaking our truck. It is that crazy out here. The horse patrol is just down here at the crossroads parking lot. We've got four people on horseback. We've got patrol cars all over the place. But it's kind of hard for them to move into the crowd because, as you can see, it is a very, very good-sized crowd. I can't begin to tell you how many people are out here. I would, I would say well over 1,000. Please, get down. <laughs> like I said, now they're climbing on our live truck. And it's a, it's a little crazy out here right now. Uh, and like I said, well over 1,000 people. And they're still coming. Again, I don't know where they're parking or where they're coming from, but they are still coming. We will keep you updated as uh, things, uh, like I said, get a little crazier out here. Okay, Mary, looks like police are really in no position to even try to send people home. You know, it's really a tough job. They are far outnumbered. Uh, I, think, I think it is safe to say there are more than a dozen patrol cars out here. We have the police helicopter overhead. And still, they have no real control out here. Okay, some safety concerns. We'll check back with you and see how things are going. All right, Mary, thanks very much. And now we're going to go back live to Miami and see what's happening down on the field. Guys? Yeah, thanks a lot. With us now, tight end Sheldon Jackson, number 88. Big game tonight. Did you expect to uh, have as many balls thrown to you as uh, were thrown to you tonight? No, not at all. I was surprised, as a matter of fact, in the first half when Coach Osborne put the ball in here as much as he was. Uh, but they were crowding the box. They were crowding the lounge screen, which uh, like nine, ten guys at one time. So they were daring to pretty much throw the ball. And so Coach Osborne threw the ball, and we, we made some plays with him. And you're not known as a passing team. Obviously, everybody thinks run, run, run when, it th when we talk Nebraska. That's the way Nebraska makes its bread and butter offensively. But when they throw the ball, when you, when you know you're going to be thrown, you get a little cranked up a little bit more as opposed to going out there and having to block them. Well, I can't get too cranked up because <laughs> if I get too cranked up, then the ball is not going to get caught. So uh, we, I think what we want to do today as a receiving core is to show the country that even though we don't throw the ball as much as Tennessee does, but we are still efficient when we do throw the ball. Um, like, like you said, we're going to run the ball first and foremost. We're going to establish a run. And if we don't establish a run, then we're going to try and throw. And we throw and we're successful as we were today, we're going to continue to do so until we can run, establish a running game. Okay. Sheldon, when you talk about that drive, the third drive where you came out and you threw, there were nine guys in the box. How important a statement was that to be successful on that drive and go down and put in the end zone? A very, it feels very important. I mean, like I said, we had to show everybody, show the Tennessee that, look, if you're going to try and stop the run, it's not going to last very long if you stop the run. But when you do, we can't throw the ball on you, so you got to play honest with us. I mean, we are Nebraska, and we know we're going to run the ball and get our 400 yards on you. Understand that we can throw the ball and get at least 150 and 200 yards on you as well. Did you notice a change in their defense, not only in, in their formation, but also their attitude after you did that? No, not really. I mean, they, they loosened up a little bit, but I still found myself and the other tight ends still found themselves getting open and down the middle of the field, too. So I, I don't think they really changed too much. They tried, but as, as you can tell, it wasn't successful. 13-0, and 0, what more can you guys do? Obviously, where do you think you should be ranked? Uh, number one. I take nothing against Michigan. I think Michigan's a great team. I think they, can, they play as good as they possibly can. But I think we've proven tonight against number three ranked team in the country that we should be at least have a share. If not the share, then have the whole thing because we got in Tennessee's cheeks today. Sheldon, when, when, when uh, Washington State lost yesterday, uh, was there great disappointment in, in the Husker camp? I mean, was it difficult to get refocused after that? It was a lot of disappointment because we watched the game after practice yesterday in the locker room. Uh, we were, it was obvious, a lot of guys had their heads down, a lot of guys thought that it was all over with, there was no way for us to win after championship this year. But Coach Osborne, I think, did a good job of reassuring the team that it was going to hurt Tennessee more if Michigan won the game than it would hurt us, that we still had a chance because we were undefeated to still get at least a piece of the title. And so with that in mind, we came out today and just said, look, we just play balls out. And if we do what we do, play Nebraska football like we know we can do, execute like we normally, like we normally do, 
that we should convince somebody, some voter, mm -hmm. somewhere, some coach, somewhere, that we do, we are entitled to some of this title. Hopefully some intelligent guys will vote the, the Huskers number one. What do you think, John? I hope some of the polls actually watch the game, so right. just watch the score of the game, and uh, see just how dominant we were today. Next year, you've got a brand new coach, head coach Solich. It's kind of interesting to say, head coach it is, Solich. It is. Uh, you've got a lot of starters coming back on defense. You've got eight or nine. You've got six or seven back on offense. Uh -huh. You've got a couple of freshman quarterbacks. One's going to be a sophomore coming up. Right. What's up next year? I'm hoping to have the same success, same success next year that we had this year. I mean, it's too, too early to tell. I mean, it's, it's January. Uh, we still have spring ball, winter conditioning, summer conditioning. Uh, I'll let you know next August how I feel about the whole situation. Right now, it's for you to tell. I mean, things haven't panned out. Things haven't gelled yet. So just give us some time, and I'll let you know then. Do you dare think Tempe? No, it's too early to tell. Like I said, it's too early to tell. It's There's too many great teams out there. we got a, we got a, a hell of a schedule coming up next yeah. season. So, I, I mean, it would be arrogant and ignorant on my part to say something like that. I say, well, we'll be in 10 next year. That that would not be right. And that, that would show a lack of respect for my fellow opponents in the Big 12 Conference, so I couldn't say that right now. Sheldon Jackson, thanks so much. We hey, appreciate your time. You. Great appreciate game. It. Nice year, huh? 13 and 0. All right. Nice Can't lid. Do any better than nice that. Lid. We like that, yeah. <laughs> I'd rather wear this one than this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right, you too. It. Sheldon Jackson, Husker tight end, had a marvelous game and uh, a major cog in, in the Husker offensive wheel. You bet. He talked about that schedule next year. It's going to be He's brutal. Right. It is Out in California, tough. they've got Washington at home. You've got a good Kansas State team, a good Missouri team, Texas A&M, Texas, Colorado. It's going to be a brutal schedule next year for Head Coach Solich. Okay, let's go back up to Omaha and see what's going on up there, guys. Hey, Rich John, you listen to these guys, you get the impression that they will be talking about this game for 48 hours straight, and it still won't be out of their system. Yeah, maybe even a little longer than that. You bet. All right, we'll get back to you in a little bit, and we'll be right back. Plenty more still ahead. Then we're going to a big blowout event for that low price special and leave with all this. Where the extras are always extra. Why is getting everything in one package such a big deal? It should be a non-event. Now get the complete package at your GMC dealer. With 2.9% APR GMAC financing, it could save you an average of $2,493 on Sierra. Are you okay, man? Because you got a little vein jumping out on your forehead. Get a great value on a great selection at your Great Plains GMC dealers. If you've been postponing the thrill of driving a new Dodge, we have to ask, why? Because by acting right now, you can get $1,000 cash back on the technologically advanced 98 Dodge Stratus. The fun-loving Dodge Neon comes with $1,500 cash back. Or choose low 1.9 financing, which over 60 months can save you over $2,700. But don't delay, because the thrill of driving a new Dodge may not always be so affordable. See the friendly Dodge dealer near you. Starving Artist Art Expo 98 is this Sunday. Thousands of beautiful original oil paintings on canvas by professional artists. Giant sofa size paintings as low as $19. Smaller accent paintings from $7. Absolutely no painting over $49. It's an Art Expo and sale this Sunday, 11 to 4, in Omaha at the Holiday Inn Convention Center and in Lincoln at the Villager Motor Inn. Original sofa size oil paintings from $19. This Sunday only, 11 to 4. If you're ready for the most incredible deals of the year, shoot into your local Ford dealers year-end clearance, where you'll ring up the 2,000 cash back or 1-9 financing on Taurus, 1,000 back or 2-9 financing on Escort. You'll score 1,500 cash back on Windstar. Get into a 98 Contour SE for only $229 a month. Rack up points in a new ZX2 for just $179 a month. But don't wait. This year in clearance and you won't get a replay for another year. Year-end clearance. Shoot into your local Ford dealer now. The crowd is getting bigger out at 72nd and Dodge. We've got thousands of people out there along with our own uh, Mary Williams. Everything somewhat under control out there? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I think at this point the police are hoping the crowd gets tired and goes home. Fat chance. I can tell you they're coming from all directions. We have lost count on how many people are here. Can you pan off and take a look? They're all wearing their Husker red. They're carrying flags. A lot of people have their bumper stickers saying, thanks a lot, Tom Osborne. There are some people in the crowd not wearing clothes at all. <laughs> Actually, very little. The horse patrol is here. We have uh, more than a dozen cruisers here trying to keep order. But I'll tell you what, again, I, as I've mentioned all night long, the police here are far outnumbered. They're stationed on the street corners just trying to keep an eye on things and make sure things don't get too far out of control. People are throwing beer bottles. They are throwing glass. 
and that seems to be a problem out here. We've had one old gentleman who was hit on the head a little bit ago. He is okay, suffered a minor injury. So the crowd, for the most part, all things considered, doing pretty good tonight. All, all right. right Mary, they're just trying to decide this national championship picture, I would say. <laughs> All righty, and I think we're going to go back to Miami right now and find out what's going on down there. Guys? Thanks a lot. We have Josh Heskew with us. Josh, uh, great win. Yeah, it was fun. I mean, we definitely did what we wanted to do. We came out in this ball game, and uh, we wanted to run the ball and get over 400 yards, and, and, you know, we did it. I mean, and that's something, as offensive linemen, we definitely take pride in, and we're just glad to go out winners like we did. Tony? What was the difference first half to second half? You guys came out double tight, double wing, and just ran it right down their throats. Well, we noticed they were getting tired towards the second half, you know, and, and coming out the third, you know, or... For our second quarter, but uh, third quarter when we came back out, you know, we ran a couple plays and they were tired. When we see that, that's when the animal comes out in us, and we just, we had fun, just pounding the ball at him, you know, when you're running dice for eight yards a pop, I mean, you just keep doing it, you know. Last game, stuff, yeah. last game for Coach T.O., what are your thoughts? Um, you know, sor you know sorrow, a <laughs> little sorrow, and, uh, but, you know, we're just great that he came out a winner. Hey, Josh, I don't mean to laugh, but they're, they're saying, bye-bye, Josh, we love you, you're going to miss your <laughs> ride, do. you better go. Thanks a lot, big guy, congratulations. Thank you, Josh. Great year, 13-0, yeah. and I, I you know, I believe we have some Peyton Manning tape, John. I think we want to cue that up now. The Heisman Trophy runner-up in, in his final game here, uh, going out a loser with the uh, the loss here to the Huskers. So let's hear some post-game comments from Peyton Manning. Well, I, like I've always said, I think I'll always take a, you know, maybe sometime next week or this month or this, you know, this spring, sit down and reflect on, you know, my career here. But you know, right now I'm disappointed. There's no question about it. You hate to lose no matter what the situation is. But, uh... Like I said, it can't, this can't overshadow the good things our seniors have done this year. Good thing this team. All right, uh, that was Peyton Manning. Uh, this is live TV, too, and sometimes that kind of stuff happens. That was Peyton Manning talking about his final game. Of course, Peyton, John, you, you pointed out great observation early as you were watching him warm up. He just didn't have it as he tried to, to backpedal and plan. He didn't have it at all. His, his back foot was very, very gingerly. He, he'd put his foot down, and he'd kind of hop, and you cannot throw effectively, especially deep, off of your front foot. You've got to plant and then put your weight forward. If you can't plant, you don't have the, the oomph to throw That's deep. That's right, and as you noticed in that first half, boy, he was throwing a lot of short passes. Didn't try to go upfield at all. Even the short passes were short. He was hitting outs very, very uh, low, very, very soft. And when you're doing that against a Nebraska defense that's this fast, you're not going to have much success. And we have more stuff going on in Omaha. They're partying and having a wacko time <laughs> up there. Let's go back to the Big O and see what's going on. <laughs> wacko would be the understatement. <laughs> okay. Especially out at 72nd and Dodge. We have plenty more still ahead. We'll be right back. If you could choose one gift for yourself this year, what would it be? Well, this year, get exactly what you want during the Chevy Make Your Money Count year-end event. How about a full-size Chevy pickup with 2.9 APR financing? Chevy, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Drive away a Chevy CK with 2.9 financing. There's great offers on other 98 Chevy cars and trucks. Finally, a gift you'll want to hang on to. Get 2.9 financing for a limited time at your local Chevy dealer today. Listen up. I have been to the edge and back, and I will tell you what I've learned. What I have learned is you don't need outer crust. Introducing the Edge Pizza from Pizza Hut, a new pizza with no outer crust, so the toppings go right to the edge. I have been to the edge and back. Join. 16 pieces of pure pulchritudinous toppings. Have you been to the edge? Pizza Hut salutes Coach Tom Osborne for his years of service. Best wishes from Nebraska Pizza Hut restaurants and delivery units. Morning, my name's Mandy. I'll be your waitress. Can I uh, take your order? Yeah. Do you have any specials? Yeah, we got three eggs, any style. Two strips of bacon, two sauces, three cheese omelets, big slab of Canadian bacon smothered in hollandaise sauce, scrambled egg with cheese, sausage, and a mountain of butter, corned beef hash, grits, and extra What if you didn't have to worry grits? about managing your cholesterol? Top, of course. Or there's the uh, buttermilk pancakes with syrup. If you've been postponing the thrill of driving a new Dodge, we have to ask, why? Because by acting right now, get up to $1,000 cash back on America's best-selling minivan, Dodge Caravan. Or choose this Dodge Caravan that's loaded with all these features. Get it around $17,200, it's still America's lowest-priced minivan. But don't delay, because the thrill of driving a new Dodge may not always be so affordable. See the friendly Dodge dealer near you. Operation Orange Bowl continues tonight. We're going to take you live out to 72nd and Dodge. It's the traditional spot. Now, we've had big crowds out there before, but uh, 
Mary, nothing like what we're seeing right now. This is a very big one. You know, we just found out police are figuring at this point there are 7,500 people down there. That's why we're up here. Uh, I got to tell you, if there's 7,500 people in this crowd, for the most part, they are pretty well behaved. We've seen some fireworks going off tonight. A lot of people thinking we should be the national champs here. And they have passed these out in the crowd. I don't know if you can get a shot of this. These are little bumper stickers that say, thanks, Tom. That kind of sums it all up. Loretta? Okay, Mary, and we can see those flags flying behind you. That's quite the scene. And we'll check back with you possibly a little bit later right now. It really is. We also want to tell you about the other party that will be starting tomorrow. We expect the team to come back to Lincoln on a flight scheduled to arrive shortly bo before 3 o'clock tomorrow. Now, the airport is asking that fans not come out to the terminal. The team will be going straight to the Devaney celebration. Now, we'll be there to bring it all to you live tomorrow afternoon. You can join Deb Ward, John Glenn, Mary Williams, and me for complete coverage of all the festivities. As Nebraska fans, will get a final chance to cheer on Coach Osborne and now we'll go back to Miami where there's been a lot of talk about, uh, talk about Coach Osborne and you know the coach has a way guys of kind of slipping out quietly doesn't he? That's T.O. for you you know he, that's exactly the way he is. Hey let's remind you 42-17 was the final score that was a good old whooping on the uh, volunteers wasn't it? Uh, as they used to say in the old days took him out to the shed and uh, <laughs> it taught him a big time lesson. A lot of folks down here are saying hey they're chanting ACC ACC well the big folks in the north came down here to the south and really took care of that southern myth that southern teams are better, faster. They ran into a team not only that was very, very strong, but also very, very fast. Tennessee all week kept saying, well, Nebraska's strong, but our speed is going right. to counter that. Well, Nebraska's speed on defense, this isn't an ordinary defense, and it hasn't been the past four or five years. You win with defense, Nebraska did that tonight. John? You hit it on the head there because all week we heard both teams have very good defenses. Nebraska made Tennessee look like they didn't have a very good defense tonight because they pounded them in the middle. They looked like they were looking for the option game tonight. It wasn't there. When you go up the middle, you don't need the option game all that much. Nebraska, their game plan coming in was to try to counter Tennessee's speed by doing a lot of cutbacks, by doing what they call flow blocking. The fullback goes one direction, then cuts back after the offensive line has cleared out a path. With Joel Van Makovica down the first quarter, that kind of changed Nebraska's game plan a bit. As you saw, when they had nine guys in the box, Huskers came out and threw. And when you can throw effectively, all of a sudden Tennessee backs up, and then Nebraska's game plan starts to work the second and third quarter. You could see Tennessee mm -hmm. down on one knees in timeouts. It isn't that hot here. It's not even that humid tonight. And Tennessee was wore down by the middle of the third quarter. You know, another thing I wonder about, too, is regarding Scott Frost. Great game tonight. All week, he's had to hear about Peyton Manning and how great of a quarterback. And Peyton Manning is a great quarterback. He had a bum knee going into this game. Let's give him his dues. But Scott Frost tonight took this as a mission, and he showed what he can do. He's one of those guys that if you give him a challenge, he's going to respond every single time. He's gutsy. He's got one of those attitudes. Is He's got a chip on his shoulder saying, hey, you tell me I can't do it, I'm going to do it, regardless if it's grass, if it's turf, good defense, bad defense. I can't throw. I think I saw him yeah. throw pretty <laughs> doggone well tonight. Yeah, they challenged him to throw, and obviously the, the Scott was uh, was up to the challenge. The Huskers, John, you know, we've talked about this before. They lost that Citrus Bowl to uh, to Georgia Tech back, I believe, in 1990. They were beat. And, boy, since then, this has been a very different program, hasn't it? I mean, they've gone out. They, they've certainly changed their, their attitude defensively the, with the type of athlete they've recruited. And, and we've seen it in all the success they've had since that game. The speed they have on defense is unbelievable. Kevin Steele came in here. In fact, Kevin's in the locker room congratulating all the coaches. When you've got that much speed on the outside, when you've got man-to-man -man guys in the corners that can, can stabilize the corner, you can blitz more, it allows you to do so much more defensively, put so much more pressure on the opposing team. When you do that, it allows you to really, really be aggressive and pin your ears back and go. Chad Kelsey mentioned that. When this team can go and go after a quarterback, that quarterback's going to be on his keister all night long. Peyton Manning had a lot of grass stains on his rump. 42-17, the final score again. The Huskers win, finish 13-0 in the season, and hopefully the voters out there are going to wake up and do the right thing tomorrow morning and give Nebraska a chunk of that national championship. Let's go back to the Big O and see what's going on. Loretta? All right, and we'll talk a little bit more about that national championship picture when we come back. We'll be right back. For 1998, the Lexus LS400 comes equipped with an innovative vehicle skid control system. Helping you maintain control even when the environment turns a bit hostile. Chase down a great value today at Lexus of Omaha. 
My people tell me your sales force flies first class. <laughs> Does this board think that's wise? Oh, Howard, Susan. I mean, they went on and on about those wide leather seats just two across, fancy meals. Oh, yeah, and free champagne. Now, if that isn't first class, then what is it? <laughs> Coach fare, Howard, on Midwest Express. Regular fare and discount fares, too. Yeah, well, I think our people deserve the best, don't you, Jim? Right, How about Howard. this vacation? Midwest Express, best care, great fares. been postponing the thrill of driving a new Dodge, we have to ask why? Because by acting right now, get up to a thousand dollars cash back on America's best-selling minivan, Dodge Caravan. Or choose this Dodge Caravan that's loaded with all these features. Get it around 17.2, it's still America's lowest priced minivan. But don't delay, because the thrill of driving a new Dodge may not always be so affordable. See the friendly Dodge dealer near you. Well, the Huskers got the job done tonight in Miami. Uh, my guess is, I think we even heard, they're probably on the bus and on their way to their own party, aren't they? <laughs> they're partying somewhere, I'm sure. <laughs> Wouldn't you think so, John? Oh, I would think so. I mean, uh, Miami all week has been Husker red, and uh, tonight's going to be no exception. It's incredible. With a night game like this, the fans have had a chance to party since oh, about uh, 9 o'clock this morning. They were primed for this game. This was a loud field. They've been going since New Year's Eve here. <laughs> I mean, I, we can't keep up with Husker fans down here. John, you had an interesting comment about the Tennessee fans that you, I'd like you to share with the fans. Yeah, I had the chance to go to the big tailgating party that was here today. And first of all, during the week, Tennessee fans came up to me uh, on three occasions and said, please take it easy on us Friday <laughs> night. But I just thought it was classy that a couple times today, fans came up to me and said, hey, if the Volunteers can't win tonight, we're going to be happy for Coach Osborne. And I think that's just very classy. You know, this game was, uh, you know, a 25-point game or so. Towards the end, they were still having a good time. Some of the fans left for Tennessee, but they were here through the end. And I think that was just a credit to them that, you know, they know Coach Osborne and what he's done for college football. And to make a statement like that, win or lose for their team, is a uh, credit to them. Yeah, absolutely. And Coach Osborne certainly a classy man, and uh, we lose a classy coach in, in uh, Coach Osborne as he uh, steps down after this game tonight. Now, we have uh, some more post-game. You've heard from a lot of the players. We have some more stuff, and we're going to listen, I believe, to Aaron Taylor and Scott Frost. Some more comments from those guys, so let's go to the videotape now. Oh, this, this is great feeling. I'll tell you what, we came out here and did what we wanted with the ball, and uh, we approach this game as every, every other game, and, and we got a victory for Coach Osborne, and uh, there's no better moment than, than, than this right now. Here's a, here's a really stupid question. You guys deserve a part of the national championship? I, I definitely do. We came out here and did what we wanted to on their defense, and uh, I'll tell you what, if we don't get a part, it's a disgrace to, to Coach Osborne and Nebraska. Oh, I, I don't think there's If you watch this team tonight perform, if a coach's job was on the line, would that coach rather play Michigan or Nebraska? I don't think it's even close. What was the likely halftime today? Because you came out really dominant that third quarter. Well, we knew we were wearing them down, and I, I made a bad play right at the end of the first half, and we'd have uh, been ahead more going in. But, uh, you know, we came out and played Nebraska football. That's what it's all about. How much would you be Michigan by do you think? I don't know how much we'd be Michigan by. I'm not once again, the Huskers with a 42-17 victory over Tennessee. And, and guys, I don't know what more we can say about the way they played tonight, about the way they played all season long. They looked adversity square in the face, and they were able to get the job done. Big victory down in Missouri. You were at that game, Johnny. I can remember the, the feeling when Missouri scored, and Nebraska had, what, 50-some uh, seconds to go back down the field. The audience was hushed, but there was never, ever, ever anyone leaving. Nebraska got the first down. They had the pass to the other side to Davis in the corner. Nebraska scores the touchdown to tie the game up. The place went absolutely nuts. Mm -hmm. Nebraska comes back, holds Missouri on the uh, overtime, then goes and scores. I mean, what more can you ask a team to do? People say well, that was the difference between Michigan and Nebraska being number one, Michigan number one, Nebraska number two. If you can win on the road in a hostile environment against an opponent that doesn't get much respect, that has a huge amount of enthusiasm, what more can you ask of a team? 13-0, what more can you ask of a program to do that? 60-3 since 1993 season. What more can you ask? Unbelievable program. Let me ask you guys. You guys have covered the Huskers every day through this season, even before the season started. What was it in your eyes that made this team so special? I think the, the one attribute this team was lack of respect. 
the same attribute the 1994 team used. Um, they felt they were maligned in the national media. They opened up the season with a ranked fifth or sixth going in. They felt they should have been ranked much higher than that. Um, Scott Frost uses that edge he had, that chip on his shoulder, to constantly outperform uh, his critics. And when you've got a quarterback that's gutsy, that will throw his body on the line, you've got an offensive line, which was also maligned from last year. Right. Arizona State game, everybody said, the, uh, the pipeline is done, no longer is Nebraska dominant up front. Hey, these guys took that very, very seriously. Last year in the Orange Bowl game, we talked about that a lot. They rededicated themselves. Josh Heskey started at center, then mm -hmm. Aaron Taylor back to right. guard. That was a huge key for this team. This offensive line, I think, is one of the best I've seen. It ranks up there with 83, 84, 94, 95. Now you're talking about 94, 96, 97. This group of offensive linemen may be one of the best in Husker history, and it starts there. I think one of the big keys has been just the fact that the tradition that has been reestablished by the 94 championship team, then, then the one in 95, the one out at the Fiesta Bowl. This team, this program, they expect to win. It's been, it's been handed down, and, and, and you learn winning, and, and it's been learned with these guys. These guys uh, just come out here and expect to win. Right, and if, if, you, if you have a loss, it's, it's a shock. You don't expect to right. lose. You expect to win every single week, and that helps you every single week prepare like a champion. All right, let's get back up to Omaha, see what's going on in the Big O. Loretta? Hey, Rich, you know, I see the three of you guys standing down there in the field, and it, it reminds me of the Fiesta Ball, all the build-up to the game, and then suddenly you're all standing there in an empty stadium. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it is, and it's it's all over, and uh, we were looking forward to this time, I think, so, uh, weren't we, we guys? Just, yeah. We just lost yeah, our definitely. signal from Miami. We'll get back to the guys a little bit later. You know, there are some things that you need to see more than one time, and right now we want to see Coach Osborne as he has that magic moment just minutes after the game when he was handed the Orange Bowl trophy. Let's take a look. Oh, in the crowd for none other than Tom Osborne, who has just coached his very last game. But without further ado, let's turn it over to Leslie Pantene, president of the Orange Bowl, to present the Orange Bowl trophy. On behalf of the Orange Bowl committee and all the people in Miami, congratulations to the Nebraska Cornhuskers and especially, especially to Dr. Tom Osborne. Thank you. Thank you very much. Commissioner of the Big 12 Conference, Steve Hatchell, to present the Alliance Trophy. Steve? Thank you, Michelle. On behalf of all of the conferences and teams in the Bowl Alliance, we'd like to present this trophy to you, Tom, for not only an outstanding season, but to a great career. We want to congratulate the University of Tennessee for a wonderful football season and to the Southeast Conference for all of the great things they did in football this year. And in presenting this, Tom, I think the best part is, is that maybe tomorrow there'll be another trophy you can get as well. Coach, congratulations. A decisive win, to say the least, and given that and all of the other circumstances, what are your thoughts tonight on the national championship picture? Well, I'm, I'm very proud of our team. I think we did all we could. We, uh, we won 13, and that's all we played. And so I'm very proud of these guys. I thought they played a great game. is the last game for you in 25 years at Nebraska. You've coached your last game. How much of that has sunk in so far? Well, it's, uh, it's a kind of a bittersweet moment. Uh, very proud of the players. Have great appreciation for our coaching staff. Uh, most of what's happened has been due to their efforts and the players. We have great fans. I want to thank them for being here. So it's, uh, it's a great night for Nebraska. Coach, congratulations. Thanks, Michelle. I'm joined now by Scott Frost, the quarterback of tonight's winning Nebraska Huskers. What a game. Just describe the feeling at this point and also your thoughts on the national championship picture. Well, it feels great. I'm so proud of this team and I'm just so proud to have had a chance to play for Coach Osborne. And I just want to say this about the national championship, you know, if 
if, if all the pollsters honestly think, after watching the Rose Bowl and watching the Orange Bowl, that Michigan could beat Nebraska, go ahead and vote Michigan by all means. But let me finish. Let me finish. I don't think. I don't think there's anybody out there that with a clear conscience can say that Nebraska, and especially Tom Osborne, that great man, doesn't deserve a national championship for this. At least a share. Scott Frost challenging those voters. Now, if you'd like to see this Orange Bowl victory and Coach Osborne's final win, you will be able to do it again right here on Channel 3. We will rebroadcast the game in its entirety. That is a week from Saturday, January 10th, right after Channel 3 News Nightside. That'll start at 10.35. And uh, judging from the crowds out at 72nd and Dodge, some of those people might have missed the end of the game anyway. We'll check in now with Mary Williams. They'll need to watch that game again, I think, Mary. <laughs> Loretta, it is very hard to hear you out here. I I can tell you we do have an injury to report. It seems the crowd was passing someone overhead. That person fell and injured his back. This person was taken out on a stretcher to the hospital, taken by ambulance to the hospital. We don't know the extent of his injuries. I can tell you right now that it is pretty crazy. Uh, you know what? Hey, you know what? We're having some problems here. We're going to end up on the ground with these fans if we continue to have uh, the fans jumping up on the truck. It's very crazy. I'm sitting down right now because it is not safe to stand up here. We have a ton of people. Uh, we thought some of them were going home, but apparently not. Very, very crazy situation out here. We'll throw it back to you for our own safety. Hey, Mary, a good idea. And, of course, we'll keep you posted if anything else should happen out there. But right now, we're going to let our crew take a break and get reoriented. Uh, right now, we're going to go back to Miami where they're kind of winding things down there, aren't they? Yeah, it is uh, very quiet here now. We're <laughs> Pretty soon they might turn the lights out on us, but a uh, very wild scene in Omaha, and hopefully everything's going to yes. be all right there. You know, uh, a great game here. I mean, it, we've used almost every adjective to describe this one tonight. <laughs> when you look at this team, you asked me a second ago what was one of the differences in this team. Also, you have to look at the leadership of two guys up front on the defensive line, Grant Wistrom and Jason Peter, two guys that took it upon themselves in summer conditioning to make the younger guys work, and not just work, bleed in the summer. It's the work in the summer that produces a championship team like this one here tonight. We hear from Jason Peter, one of those leaders, about this year's team. Yeah, you know, every time we were out there on the field, we knew what we were playing for. Um, Coach Osborne, the way I saw him today, I mean, he, I've never seen him more fired up on the sidelines. When he came over to the defense one time and, and he got in our faces and, and he told us what we had to do. And right then, you know, we knew that uh, this man wanted it more than anything. And uh, there was no way that we were going to let him down. And, uh, you know, we, we just offensively, we just pounded it down our throat. And, and, and defensively, you know, we shut him up pretty good. Uh, you know, I, I think we definitely made, made a pretty good statement for, for our claim for a national title. Uh, Pounded it down their throat. That's exactly what the Huskers <laughs> did in beating uh, Tennessee tonight. Let's take a look at the highlights, relive the action one more time here from Pro Player Stadium. The Huskers wrapping up a perfect season, finishing 13-0 with a victory over the Volunteers. In Tom Osborne's final game, Peyton Manning's final game as well. Early it was Tennessee with a long punt. 78 yards. What a kick this cat got. Look at that thing go. 78 yards. Down on the two-yard line. John, he got all of that one, didn't he? <laughs> okay, Tennessee trying to drive after the Huskies were stalled. Peyton Manning finds McCullough open for 18 yards. Put the ball on the 31-yard uh, line of the Huskies. This is what a few plays later, it's first down. Pitch to Lewis. Bryson leading away. Jamal Lewis fumbles. And it's picked up. Ralph Brown with a hit. Nebraska. Mike Rucker recovers. Drive over. Huskers and take over. Turnover is a big problem for Tennessee in the first half. Green, Huskers get going. We showed you Sheldon Jackson. We talked to Sheldon Jackson. He Sheldon catches this pass for 26 yards. Puts it on a Tennessee 47. Later in the drive, it's Frost going to Bobby Newton for 22 yards. Game coach. Many Put it on a 13. Up and over and in for a touchdown. He plays later. Amon Green gets the touchdown. That capped off a 78-yard, eight-play drive. Huskers took the seven-upping lead. Manning. That pass Still in the first quarter. Manning picked Warfield. off. Eric Warfield, Warfield with the INT. 
at the 30 and tackled and a 28 yard return at the 25 yard line by Sean Bryson Jesse Cush with the punt for the Huskers as that drive ended and was recovered on the punt by Lance Brown of the Huskers Jesse hangs it up high and that's it up the Huskers in position and a touchdown for on the 15 this year behind Ricky Williams a few plays later, Shevin Wiggins with a touchdown. As Nebraska went 15 touchdown. yards in three plays to make it 14 0, 11 28 to go. Tennessee added a field goal before the end of the first half with 14 3 at halftime. Just a little role play to the fullback. He finds the seam. Second half, Joel Makovic. Breaks a tackle, spins out, and then drags. Gets the call. Tennessee Look at a big boy from. Agreed with the decision. From Brainerd, right? Brainerd, 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 Scott Frost gets the touchdown. Huskers go 80 yards, 12 plays, 21 3, 10 11 to go in the third quarter. And he could not. Eight or 70 of them are going to be run. Nebraska would capitalize again. Amon Green going 43 yards. Well, first we're well, going to get the Frost touchdown. There's a Frost touchdown. 80 yards, 12 plays. Green goes 43 yards. Manning. And then Frost gets another touchdown. Looking in the end zone. Running out of time. Throws. Touchdown! Tennessee comes back. Really Manning to Price with a touchdown. It's 28 to 9. 72 yards, 9, nine plays. Nebraska then would put it away. Amon Green rumbles 47 yards. Frost hands off. Hopefully Amon's coming back. We want to keep him in Nebraska for one more year. One more season. And 47 yards for Amon. And then the touchdown as he goes 22 yards. That caps an 80-yard four-play drive. 80 yards in four plays. 35-9 Husky. Michigan certainly has a top-ranked defense. The best Nebraska defense. added another touchdown by Scott Frost to make it 42 to nine. Tennessee got one late. As T. Martin drove him down, the celebration was on. Huskies get the victory, 42 to 17. Over there, ooh. the Tennessee Volunteers. As Tom Osborne wrapped up his career with yet another victory in a perfect season, 13 and 0. We got some other important numbers. How about two? How about 255, 49 and three? That's not bad. That's not bad. <laughs> he also reestablished himself as the winningest active, now inactive coach. In college football, My, uh, Coach Fulmer had the uh, percentage by about two, two tenths of a percent. Now Coach Osborne got it back when he won tonight, but then since he retired, he's no longer active. So, right. but a, a tremendous. You look at those highlights. I mean, 80-yard drive, 80-yard drive, 75-yard drive. Wow. This is against the number three team in the country, folks. This wasn't against the 10th team or the 12th team, or the 19th. This is against the number three team in the country, basically on their home turf down here in the South, Nebraska. Right now, the Orange Bowl. This is a magic place. The last two times Nebraska's played here national championships, including this year. Let's hope the coaches get smart and vote to this Tom Osborne coach team at least to share the title tomorrow. 42 to 17. A laugher. An easy one for the Huskers. At least we can say that. <laughs> you know, I can tell you, each point. you said it was a laugher, though, but when I was over in the locker room, I saw the Tennessee Volunteers loading up on their bus. They are worn out. I mean, they don't know what hit them. I mean, it's almost like this red hurricane came through here. They are drained, really tired. I mean, they, they uh, lost a lot during this game tonight. <laughs> Back to the big O and Loretta Carroll, Mary Williams. Hopefully everything's going okay up there. Guys, okay. what's up? Hey, I got to tell you, while you guys are thoughtful and philosophical, too bad you can't see what's going on at 72nd and Dodge because it's just nuts down there. Tape gonna... it for us. Let us see it afterwards, okay? okay. We'll do that. Right now, okay. we'll check in with Mary Williams and find out how things are going out there right now. Omaha police did have a plan for crowd control out there tonight. However, I do think they got much more of a crowd than they anticipated. We'll check in now with Mary and see what's happening. Mary? Loretta, I can honestly say I wish you were here. <laughs> I tell you what, the Omaha police department, I, I, I think you're right, had no idea that there were going to be so many people out here. At last count, they figured 7,500 people. This crowd has been going strong now for at least two hours, and there are no real signs of letting up. They have been passing red trees, red Christmas trees through the crowd. They have been passing each other through the crowd. We had an injury because someone fell on the pavement. Uh, we've also had some injuries from people being hit with beer bottles. Uh, there are fireworks going off. We still have the police helicopter overhead. It is uh, quite a ruckus crowd out here this evening. Again, no real signs of letting up. We have had some people leave the party, but uh, nowhere near 7,000 people leaving. I, I would say it's a safe bet that maybe 500 or so have gone home for the night, but the rest are here to stay. Gosh, Mary, I'm amazed. I mean, not a break in sight, really. 
I'm sorry, Loretta. Not a break in sight. The crowd's not letting up at all. Not at all. They have, like I said, they've been chanting nonstop for the last two hours. Go Big Red. Thanks, Tom. War number one. I've heard it all here tonight. Okay, and we'll be hearing more tomorrow. I Thanks, think you're Mary. right. We'll be right back. Season's greetings from your military men and women overseas. Hi, I'm Jason Murray from Camp Stanley, Korea. I want to send holiday greetings to my wife and kid in McCook, Nebraska. Happy holidays. Hi, my name is Staff Sergeant Darren Pettis, stationed at First of Mine in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'd like to send a shout out to my mother, friends, and family in Omaha, Nebraska. Hello and season's greetings. These season's greetings were brought to you in part by KMTV's Mid-America Partners. Can you feel it? Don't you feel Tom it? Collins presents... Brian Boytana. The skating's incredible. Oksana Bayou. She's wonderful. Victor Petrenko. It's the best show on ice. Nancy Kerrigan. She's beautiful. Dorothy Hamill. Don't miss it. Rudy Galindo. It is terrific. The Winter Tour of Champions on Ice. Tickets on sale now at Exarbon and all Ticketmaster outlets are called 422-1212. Frankly, a lot of people I talk with are unhappy with the media these days. They're very concerned with how the news is being covered. If there's one thing that I've learned in 11 years of covering stories, it's that you can be thorough without being thoughtless. You can ask the tough questions without being tough on people. To get to the bottom of the story, you have to remember that people are the heart of the story. John Anderson, weeknights at 5, 6, and 10 on Channel 3. Well, you've seen the crowds out there at 72nd and Dodge tonight, and crazy as it all seems out there, a lot of it is a tribute to a coach, his final game in 25 years. It was back in 1962 that a young man from Hastings, Nebraska, joined Bob Devaney's coaching staff as a graduate assistant. Tom Osborne was just using the position to make a little extra cash, but he stuck around for nearly 40 years, putting together a career matched by few. I never had a day where I didn't want to go to work. Right. I never had a day where... I was dreading uh, dealing with this group of players uh, that I had or, or the coaches, and we've had a lot of fun together. Since 1962, going to work for Tom Osborne has been studying the X's and O's of college football. I was trying to get through practice. But as a young man looking for a career, football was secondary. Osborne planned on making college administrative work, research, or teaching his profession. As the time came where I had to make a decision, I just found that I was not able to pull away from football. That I, I just felt that if, if I accepted a job in, uh, in the academic world, I would miss football too much. He was surprised by those emotions, but perhaps shouldn't have been. Football was a passion for the Hastings High School graduate. That's where he started playing football and basketball. And in 1955, was the Nebraska Prep Athlete of the Year. He was a great high school athlete. He came from a nice family. Everybody respected him and his family. And I think he just got where he is and where he's been through sheer intensity and hard work and commitment. And he had a lot more of that than most of the rest of us did. He had a great family. And uh, they're the people that uh, the genes worked off on Tom somehow. I really, uh, I really loved uh, football. And uh, ever since I was a little kid, uh, it's a game that, <clears throat> that has fascinated me and can intrigue me. Fortunately, the desire to work in a game he cherished has led to one of the greatest coaching careers in college football history. The graduate assistant became a full-time coach in 1967, succeeded a legend in Bob Devaney in 1973, and then put together a career in which he became one himself. Along the way, he won 254 games, 13 league titles, 11 bowl games, and two national championships. He's coached Outland Lombardi and Heisman Trophy winners and numerous All-Americans. We are losing a great, great coach uh, and a great, great person in our profession. And it is indeed an honor to, to uh, be a part of his last game. He's had just a great career, and he, very few people can look back and know that they've accomplished as much or made as big an impact on college football as Tom Osborne has. I don't think I'll think too much about, about individual games, but I, I remember people and uh, remember um, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the emotions, uh, a lot of the affection that I had for players. And, and uh, I think that, that will be the most 
most memorable thing for me is just the um, relationship with coaches and players. Now, Coach Osborne has said all along about this last game and his decision to resign, not retire, as his wife says, that he thought it would all sink in and sink in much later. Right now, we want to check in with Mary Williams. She's at 72nd and Dodge. Kind of a crazy crowd out there. Actually, that's an understatement. We'll check in and see what's happening. Mary? And Dodge and let our crews regroup there and get back. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. She was so responsible. You know, Mary really was a pretty good singer and dancer, I think. So genuine. Well, I wouldn't go so far to say on the dancing. She never, ever tried to uh, be phony about anything. This is the famous yellow Bible. She always referred to it. She had to correct, use it to correct her papers. Her hair was, her hair always, was always in place. Always in place. Always perfect. And she was singing off key so much of the time. He just wanted her to pipe it down. Mary Williams makes the gray. Weeknights at 6, only on Channel 3. That's not true. I, I just made that up. I believe that you and me last forever All day, an hour and all night Jolly Rancher Candy, colossal fruit taste at last my uncle took Tylenol for arthritis. Hours later, Hertz back took more. The doctor said, leave is strong. Just two and I'm good all day. I was taking four Advil or eight Tylenol. A leave is all he needed. A leave. Can you feel it? Don't you feel Tom it? Collins presents Brian Boytana. The skating's incredible. Oksana Bayou. She's wonderful. Victor Petrenko. It's the best show on ice. Nancy Kerrigan. She's beautiful. Dorothy Hamill. Don't miss it. Rudy Galindo. It is terrific. The Winter Tour of Champions on Ice. Tickets on sale now at Exarbon and all Ticketmaster outlets are called 422-1212. Well, when you see the crowd out at 72nd and Dodge, makes you wonder what Lincoln will be like tomorrow when the Huskers come back as champs of the Orange Bowl. Let's check in now with Mary Williams. And now we're going to go into Miami right now and find out what's going on down there. Guys? Loretta, it'll be one long party. The party's <laughs> down here. The people are going wacko, and they're going to be keep on going goofy up in... Uh up in Lincoln once the Huskers arrive after their, their trip here from uh, from Miami. The folks from CBS continue to break down behind us and around us as everything's going to be packed up and taken away, and we're still on here and bringing you more coverage. And, John, you had a story about uh, Joel McAvicki when it passed along. Yeah, when Coach Osborne had a celebration over here when CBS was having the coverage uh, with Michelle Tafoya, uh, Joel was down by the stage looking up at Coach, had uh, misty eyes. He turns and starts walking off. I walk up to him. Here's a guy that could barely walk, folks. He could barely walk. I walked with him. It took us about five minutes to go from one corner of the end zone over to here, which is the 50-yard line. He could barely move, and he played almost every snap from the middle of the first quarter on. He re-injured his hamstring. Mm -hmm. He told me he was not going to leave the field because of Coach Osborne. He wanted to make sure he went out on top. He's a huge factor in that offense, making those blocks and the cutbacks and the fullback traps. That's a guy right there. That tells you the determination and, and love for Coach Osborne. They were not going to give up until they got the victory and they did just that. We yeah, saw, I'm sorry, Jenny, they were going to give it all tonight. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. This game was a blowout in the fourth quarter and they were still going after you know mm -hmm. Peyton Manning, the whole Tennessee team. This team wanted to look good tonight and they did it. We saw Joel early too. I, I believe after the first series he re-injured. We saw him right. uh, trying to trying to get loose along along the sidelines. Young man, a walk-on, learned a lot from his brother. We did the story earlier in the week about the relationship that, it, that he has with Jeff and and, and those two kids have, have meant a lot to the program. And the Makovic is coming down here starting, both of the kids starting a fullback for the Huskers. And, and the folks out there that have ever had their hamstring injured, no matter what you're doing oh, at home, it goes from the top of your rear end all the way down to your kneecap. Mm -hmm. You cannot fully extend your knee at all. And yet he was in the field doing just that, making blocks, making runs. Quite an impressive young man. In fact, we talked to Makovic all week long. I had conversations daily with his dad, giving him <laughs> updates from the injury report. And folks, there's two little Makovicas about this big waiting to come up in the wings. Two young guys about uh, 12 to 14. In about uh, six years, you're going to see him in the University of Nebraska. It, it's that water at the, the Makovica house, a tap or something. They keep on producing fullbacks for the Huskers. You know, if you want to be a high school recruit, go out to Brainerd, drink some water, you're going to Nebraska as an all-star fullback. The Makovicas, boy, they're certainly doing it for the Huskers, that's for sure. You, you. you know, i got to tell you, a couple weeks ago in Lincoln when I was there, Joel was talking about that. He had talked to a couple former players, and they're like, 
You guys are so lucky. We would do anything to play in this game tonight for Coach Osborne. I mean, even former players are thinking about that and just wanting to be out here tonight. A lot of former players were here. A lot of them, uh, Kevin Steele came back, the former right. linebacker coach, who's now at the Carolina Panthers. He was in the locker room hugging. I saw a very poignant moment. Coach Osborne, uh -huh. Coach Solich, and Coach Steele, three good friends, all hugging wow. in the locker room about an hour ago, congratulating each other. They're still, once you're a Husker, you're always a Husker. You're always a part of that family. And it's the family atmosphere, both from players and coaches, that make this program so special. Guys, remember when T.O. resigned and we were getting reaction from all across the country, from guys like Neil Smith, you know, some of the guys that are, that are in the NFL now. And, and boy, they didn't hesitate at all in commenting on, on, on T.O. and what he's meant to them. And, and it all comes back to, boy, he was like a father to me. You know, he was, he was a father I didn't have, or, or he was another father for me, and he's meant a lot to me. The guys even that didn't start, the third, right. fourth, ninth teamers like a, uh, somebody I know, um, <laughs> it, was a, it was a privilege to, to play for the coach. I mean, these guys are all saying it for a man. They may not have gotten the playing time. They may have thought they should deserve a start. But almost all of them, to a man, say what kind of gentleman he was. Mm -hmm. he, he wins with class. He wins with honor. He's always truthful. If you're sixth team, you get the same answer you would as a first stringer. Rules are rules. You play by his game, and his game is class. His game is winning. I thought I thought one of the best sound bites, or one of the best comments, I should say, uh, from a player after the coach announced his resignation was from Joel McAvick, who said, "You know, coach, maybe maybe you weren't." Uh, able to give all your time to your children as you would have liked during your coaching career, but you have been a father to hundreds, literally hundreds of kids in Nebraska. Right. That's quite a testament. Yeah. Scott Frost even saying he made us men first, and that also. That's right. Respect. <laughs> Those are tremendous comments from some very classy people. Back to the Big O to see what's going on, Loretta. Hey, Rich, Craig James from uh, CBS, he kind of surprised me tonight. Uh, he said on national television that he was going to vote Nebraska. Number one thought that some others would do the same and that they at least deserved a share of the national championship, and he didn't mince any words about it. You know, and that doesn't hurt either. Hopefully a lot of voters were watching the game when they hear a guy like a Craig James, a, guy, a gentleman that I believe a lot of people have a lot of respect for. Right. The guy played in the NFL. He played for the Ponies down at SMU. And, and, and I believe people have respect for that gentleman. And hopefully that's able to swing some uh, votes towards the Huskers. And even give Craig James some credit because he told us on Channel 3 this week that this would be at least a 21-point game. Yeah, he was right. He knows what he's talking about because he yeah. knew it. And also, I guess uh, a lot of times today ESPN was getting the bandwagon saying, hey, how can you deny Nebraska at least a share of the title? Michigan's a great team, so are the Huskers. How can you have one number one and the other one number two? Why not have co-champs? You had it with Washington and Colorado. You had Georgia Tech co-champs. Why not do that? Two deserving teams, two teams that could not face each other. It's not either one of their program's fault. Let's have two national championships.